Our story begins at Dunke University in Building A. In a half-empty classroom sits our hero. At this time, Lin Mu is puzzling over the solution to one of the problems that proved to be too difficult for him. There was silence in the auditorium, but suddenly, it was broken by successful footsteps. A group of young girls entered the room and immediately caught the eyes of everyone present. One of the girls was called Du Xiao Yue. The guys in the audience immediately started whispering and discussing how cute and beautiful she was, even though she was a freshman. The black-haired girl really was insanely attractive. Her silky black hair fell straight down to her face, and her violet eyes were burning through. Everyone around her was talking about how incredibly beautiful she was. No one understood why she had entered this university. At this time, the girls were discussing Lin Mu, who the black-haired girl appeared to be engaged to. Her friend noticed that he looked boring. Du Xiaoyue herself is not happy about the fact that she is engaged to him. She would rather remain a bachelor than marry such a scumbag. A moment later, a company of self-confident girls approach the protagonist who sits quietly in his seat. One of the girls walks the fastest and overtakes her friends, approaching a young boy. After a couple seconds, she slams the table, leans on it, and gets the main character's attention. The bitch looks down at the young man and asks him to sit down, because they want to take this seat, even though there are plenty of empty desks in the back. But the cocky girl is not going to back down and reiterate that this is where they want to sit. She looks down at his notebook and is surprised that he can't solve such a simple problem. Such scum should definitely be in the back of the class. The young lad doesn't know how to respond to that, so he silently raises his green eyes and looks at the bitch with irritation. The young man looks at his bride, who looks away with complete indifference. Suddenly, someone's masculine hand grabs at the hero by the shoulder. It was his classmate who also told him to move since he was asked by such beautiful girls. The protagonist is under pressure from all sides, so he has nothing to do but pack his belongings in a bag, after which he heads away, leaving the bitch behind him, who escorts him with a look. The young lad walks silently beside his sister-in-law, who in turn continues to remain silent. But a moment later, Du Xiaoyue shouts after the guy that he is a miserable coward. The girl humiliated him. Bitch can't believe someone like this loser could get into this university. He must just have connections. But as long as the black-haired girl can break off the engagement, and absolutely don't care where he goes to school. The protagonist headed outside. It was already quite dark. The young man stands on the curb and waits for the moment to cross the road. The young lad went deep into his thoughts, which took over the mind. His gaze was downcast. In his head, the young man was replaying the girl's words about him being a coward. It was clearly hardwired into the subcortex of his brain. This engagement was organized by their parents, and it's not our hero's fault. He didn't want this to happen. The black-haired kid decides to ditch all those bad thoughts and go home to check on his grandfather. Moments later, a cab pulls up to the guy and he gets into it. In his mind, he hopes that his grandfather is doing well. Some time passed and finally the protagonist arrived at the Lin family mansion, his home. It was quite beautiful here and everything looked very rich. The young lad walked to the entrance and thundered a call to his grandfather to let him know he had arrived. The young man passed his hand under the door but stopped abruptly as if listening for something. Lin Mu heard loud noises and concluded that his relatives must be arguing again. Moments later, the boy dared to cross the threshold of the house. He went inside and saw his relatives there. They were all gathered. There were two men sitting in the spacious living room and one woman standing. Everyone was focused. There was a tense atmosphere in the room. Lin Ron's aunt greeted the guy and informed him that Grandpa had gone to the hospital for a checkup and should be back very soon. Hearing this, the main character decided to head to his room so he wouldn't have to stay here with them. A sepulchral silence hung in the room. The young boy silently walked past his relatives and directed them to his room. But, unexpectedly, Lin Yitai's elder uncle rebuked our hero for having no manners at all since he didn't even salute them. Unexpectedly, Lin Yif's second uncle expressed his lack of understanding about why they should take care of Grandpa. The bearded scumbag didn't seem to care at all about his condition. He didn't have long to live anyway. A few hours passed and it was lunchtime. Grandpa had already returned home. Lin Mu told him that it was good to take good care of him, for he would have no classes for the next few days. Grandpa looked very tired and sick, but he was very happy that his grandson would take care of him. Grandpa has been in this condition since mom and dad were gone, and no one knows if he will ever get better. Suddenly, the aunt called our hero and called him to dinner, for the table was already set. The black-haired lad was greatly saddened by thoughts of his grandfather, but still had to eat nonetheless. After a while, all the relatives gathered around one large table with many dishes on it. One of the men intended to start a serious conversation with the others. They are organizing an auction soon but he has yet to be given the authority to make the decision to organize. 
He's having trouble with that. He didn't linger long and announced that he wanted to be headed to the auction department. But the bearded man immediately stepped into the grip. He offered his candidacy and called to supposedly help his relative. Suddenly, the young boy puts down his chopsticks and sets the food aside. He talks about being full and going to his room. In fact, he just doesn't want to listen to this nasty talk. The protagonist heads to his room while the men continue to argue loudly about who should take over. It seemed that the young boy was tired of putting up with all these quarrels and scandals. He went out onto the balcony to catch his breath. Lin Mu is very sorry that his parents left this world so early and left him alone. Unfortunately, the young man is shallow and is well aware that their family is quickly falling apart. Our heroes are filled with hate and despair, but he realizes how he can make an impact and change anything. Suddenly, his musings are interrupted by a bearded man who also goes out onto the balcony. The nasty man immediately realizes that the young man misses his parents again. It's written all over his face. The black-haired kid doesn't want to talk to his uncle and doesn't understand why he came and disturbed his peace. The man just thought the guy hadn't had enough dinner, so he decided to check on him. There were four of them. Four siblings, not three, and our hero's father. But only our hero's father inherited his grandfather's skills. Grandfather insisted on Lin Mu's father succeeding him, even though the family continued to go under. The scumbag changes the subject and adds that people shouldn't get something they can't handle. It can cause problems. The black-haired boy doesn't understand what his uncle is getting at and abruptly turns around to question him about it. But suddenly, a strongly masculine hand pushes the protagonist forward and the guy can't keep his balance. And then, just moments later, the defenseless kid goes straight to the ground. Nothing can save him now. Our hero screams loudly but realizes that nothing can be changed. This is a situation of complete hopelessness. A moment later, the protagonist collapsed on the pavement. He no longer moves or breathes. Blood slowly spreads puddles around his cold body. Meanwhile, the bearded man watches what he has created with his own hands for power. He doesn't seem to regret it at all, as a smirk appears on his face. He's just determined to connect you to the guy's parents. Soon, there is commotion in the mansion, as a man screams that our hero has fallen off the balcony. At this time, the doctor is in his office filling out some work on his laptop. Suddenly, a nurse bursts into the doctor's office and is very nervous. She's looking for Dr. Joe. The nurse reports that a patient who fell from the balcony has arrived at their hospital. The head doctor is looking for Dr. Joe. The girl's ready to do her job. She's going to go to the chief of medicine right now. Meanwhile, the protagonist has already been brought to the emergency room. The doctors are crowded around Lin Mu. They are all ready to fight for the young boy's life to the end. The black-haired boy is covered in blood and not moving at all. Can the doctors save the boy? After a while, Dr. Joe enters the office and immediately gets down to business and inquires about the patient's condition. The other doctors bring her up to speed right away, reporting a lot of internal bleeding on the guy. The girl is very talented at acupuncture and she has one method, but it's very risky. The doctor understands how high the risks of this procedure are, but the most important thing now is to save the patient. The girl doctor could not delay because every second counted. She began to select the right needle, and so, a moment later, the girl pointed the sharp needle toward the patient, then got down to business. And so, in a few minutes, everything was ready. There were thin but sharp needles sticking out of our hero's head. Another nurse looked at the machine and saw that, thankfully, the patient was stabilized. She used the needles to stimulate a hit or run state, but if the brain is in that state for long, it will simply die off. Upon hearing this, the doctors immediately began to start the operation, because there was not a second to lose. When the doctors looked at the machine, they saw that the patient's heart rate had risen above normal, and this was very dangerous. The head doctor immediately became nervous, because he realized that their method did not work, and the patient's life hung in the balance. The man sternly ordered the other doctors to prepare a defibrillator. The doctors immediately started resuscitation, and tried their best to start Lin Mu's heart with a 200-volt charge. From such a strong discharge, the young lad's breathless body twitched violently and bounced. The doctor monitored the numbers on the machine and was horrified when he realized it wasn't working. They decided to try a 300-volt discharge. But, unfortunately, this attempt was also unsuccessful. The black-haired boy's heart refused to beat again. The man sadly reported that the patient had lost his last signs of life. The operation was a failure. A tense and dreary atmosphere hung in the office. Now they must report this terrible news to the patient's guardians. The doctors had resigned themselves to the fact that this operation had failed. There was nothing they could bring back. A moment later, the nurse covered the young lad's cold body with a cloth, as all doctors usually do. When the finishing touches were done, the doctors headed away from the office to offer their condolences to the loved ones of the deceased. 
Suddenly, the apparatus that was showing Lin Mu's vital signs a second ago glowed brightly, and a moment later, some sort of strange black hole began to appear on our hero's covered body. This black hole is getting bigger and deeper. It feels like a water vortex or a black hole in space. Something strange began to happen in the ward. A black hole formed in the air and the wind tore the sheet off our hero. A moment later, some strange bright light appeared out of that black hole and headed towards the young boy. Suddenly, that color touched the main character's body and slowly began to penetrate inside to him. Something strange was clearly happening to the black-haired boy's body. A moment later, all the light went inside the boy. A couple seconds later, a translucent fist appeared above Lin Mu's body and grabbed a violet light. My fist clenches that color harder and harder and won't let it go. A moment later, the young lad's body simply rose into the air and began to float. How did that happen? Some so black energy began to merge with each other and slowly penetrate the guy's body. Soon, this black energy formed a ring around the young man's finger. The light continued to slowly seep in. Something strange had obviously happened that night. Our hero was still unconscious. The black-haired boy's mouth opened slightly. Is it possible that the chances of his life are not yet lost? That's how this strange night passes and the next morning comes. The hospital corridors are empty and only Dr. Joe is standing there thinking. The girl is very sleepy for she did not sleep well that night. Suddenly she hears loud screams from the nurses. It makes her instantly wake up and feel awake. She doesn't realize where the screams are coming from. The girl didn't hesitate for a second and immediately rushed over screaming to find out what had happened. When she ran into the office, she saw two nurses huddled together in fear. The nurses were in a panic. The girls were crying at what they had just seen. It made the blood in their veins stop. Dr. Joe looked around the office and was also shocked at what appeared before her. The main character was lying on the couch, but there was clearly something wrong with him. He wasn't even wearing the sheet they left behind. The doctor watched the guy carefully and realized that this patient had grown overnight. But how was that possible? Then, the doctor touched the young lad's body, trying to figure out what caused his body to react this way. But the girl gets even more shocked when she realizes that her body, which was cold even tonight, is now warm again. A moment later to test his hunch, the doctor brings his index finger to the patient's nose to check his breathing. Immediately after this action, the main character opens his bright green eyes wide and as if rising from the dead. Everyone in the office is frozen in fear and sepulchral silence. They found it hard to believe what had just happened before their eyes. The nurses start screaming insanely loudly that there is none other than a zombie in front of them. The doctor immediately reassured the nurses, saying that the patient must have experienced clinical death. The boy was clearly as surprised as he was by what was going on around him. He didn't understand what kind of people were around him and the black-haired boy was also wondering where he was now. He didn't seem to remember anything. His green eyes ran quickly around the office and downward. He seemed to have a lot of questions. As it turned out, the young man didn't even remember who he himself was. Lin Mu is in a complete stupor. Immediately after these events, the black-haired kid was sent to the ICU. The young lad was at once under the care of the doctors, for it was a very severe and strange case. Was it possible that the needles had damaged the point that was responsible for memory? And that was why Lin Mu couldn't remember anything? But could this harm have been severe enough for our hero to forget his own name and all information about himself? Dr. Joe reassured the patient and assured him that it wouldn't be long before the boy's memories would come back to him. It's time for the girl to leave on other business. If our hero needs something, he can press the button and a nurse will come to him. Now the main thing is to rest. After a moment, the doctor turned around and headed towards the exit, leaving the young man in the room all alone. And so soon the doors slammed shut and the protagonist was left alone with himself and his thoughts. The black-haired boy lies in bed and reflects on all that has happened today. Lin Mu couldn't sense any spiritual chi in the place he was in. And this body is much weaker than his past body. He used the last bit of spiritual chi to escape from creating a new body for himself. Otherwise, death would have awaited him. The young man never imagined that he, the greatest cultivator in the world, would end his life like this. The one who found himself in the body of our hero is serious about taking revenge on his offenders and destroying every last one of them. Meanwhile, loud screams can be heard in the Lin family's mansion. They can be heard all over the place. It was a bearded man who shouted. He was very angry that his nephew was alive, even though he had received news of his death earlier. But when he realized his nephew didn't remember anything, he calmed down a bit and told the doctors to take care of him. Auntie also did not understand what was going on because not long ago and did not receive the news of the death of his relative. The bearded man was furious and did not understand himself how this could have happened, for he had accepted his death. 
The woman doesn't understand what it means that the guy has lost his memory. Is he going to be a vegetable now? The man was amused that it meant the same thing to his aunt. It even brought a faint smirk to his face, but now there was the question of what they should do next. Would it be necessary to change their plans? The man told his aunt to go and check on the boy, because she is the closest thing to him, and they can't reveal themselves right now. The woman must not only check his condition, but also find out if our hero has really lost his memory. The black-haired kid is in his room watching TV like nothing ever happened. Suddenly, a young guy is distracted from watching TV by a knock on the door. He allows the guest to enter. Dr. Joe walked into his room, but she didn't seem to be by herself. Auntie had come to visit Lin Mu after all, and the doctor was trying to see if the patient would recognize his relatives. But the black-haired boy reminded him that in his condition, he couldn't remember anyone or anything. So it was useless to ask. The woman introduced herself as his aunt, and was surprised that the guy really didn't seem to remember anything. Having found out all the necessary information, the woman was about to leave, wished the young lad more rest. Then she went to the doctor, for she had a question as to why her nephew was beginning to look different as well. As it turned out, the young man's face was damaged due to the fall, so doctors performed a minor surgery. The woman thanked the doctors for their work, and asked them to take care of her nephew. At this time, she was thinking about the fact that her nephew had really forgotten absolutely everything, and it turned out to be pure truth. Thus, some time passed. The protagonist began to study books. He leafed through the pages enthusiastically. The soul that was in his body learned that there were 5,000 human race in this world, but the spiritual chi was still weak. It wasn't all bad, because thanks to this book, the black-haired boy began to understand something. Fortunately, the young lad was almost cured so the doctor gave her permission for him to be discharged from the hospital. The young man thanked the doctor profusely for something for taking care of him all these days and putting him on his feet. The doctor notices that the young lad acts like he comes from ancient times and it amuses her a little. The black-haired kid was embarrassed by this because now she knew his secret about him liking martial arts. The doctor told him to discharge and advised him to spend more time with friends and family, as this would speed up the process of getting his memory back. The protagonist, of course, listened to the doctor and headed away. He wanted to check out himself. After a while, a cab pulled up to our hero, ready to pick him up and take him home from the hospital. The car was traveling on city roads. Surprisingly, there were not many people on the highway. At this time, the guy was looking at everything outside the window and marveled at how much people were able to evolve with so little spiritual chi. After a while, a yellow car parks outside the university she attends. Lin Mu starts going through his pockets to find money to pay the cab driver. Cab service costs $50, but unfortunately the guy doesn't have that kind of money with him, and it makes him very uncomfortable. The young man tried to explain the situation about not having any money because he had just gotten out of the hospital. The cab driver is very surprised because the guy studies at a rather prestigious university and doesn't understand how this could happen. The man offers to call one of his friends to lend him money and pay him back. This is certainly a good idea, but the problem is that the main character doesn't remember anything. Accordingly, he doesn't remember his friends. The young boy does not understand how best he should act in such a situation, because he does not know anyone. Suddenly, some young girl looks in the car window. She seems to be a classmate of our hero. The young man explains the whole situation to the girl and asks her to pay for him. The student agrees without a problem as she has some money. She wonders if Lin Mu has had plastic surgery, as his face has changed somehow. The protagonist promises to tell her everything as soon as he gets out of the car. That piques the girl's interest. The guys walked for a while, and during that time he had time to tell the student all the things that had happened to him. A student listens with interest to such an amazing and creepy story from a classmate she knows. Moments later, she realizes that if the young man has lost his memory, he must not remember her. Unfortunately, the young lad really can't remember the girl and sincerely apologizes for it. The girl immediately has a question whether there is a chance that the memory will one day return to the guy. But the protagonist himself isn't sure if there's any chance of getting his memory back. On the other hand, memory loss might not be a bad option. The girl admits that sometimes she wants to forget everything too. Suddenly, three girls come to meet the guys. The same girls with inflated self-esteem who offend everyone. In the center is a black-haired girl of attractive appearance. That's our hero's fiance. When she looks up, she immediately notices the main character and how much he has changed. Logically, the girl immediately assumes that the young guy has had surgery and changed his face. The black-haired kid denies it because he doesn't know how to react. He doesn't know anyone. The student gets into their conversation and remarks that the young lad now looks quite nice. The girl thinks he did it so she would marry him and immediately says that it doesn't change the fact that he is scum. 
The guys were still standing on the street and looking at each other. Our hero couldn't remember his fiancée and her bitch friends. The young lad immediately realized that the previous owner of this body must have been engaged to this black-haired girl. Moments later, the young man offered to break the engagement since the girl was so unhappy with it. He betrayed it as if it were nothing. Hearing such words under her fiancé, the girl was furious and greatly surprised. This also surprised the other girls who were watching. Lin Mu shouted loudly about how he would never in his life want to marry such a vile and narcissistic girl like her. The black-haired girl was shocked that the guy showed his temper. It was quite bold and unlike him. It costs nothing for the young men to break the engagement. If they do, the girl will never bother him again. The student who was watching all this praised the kid for his courage. He really humiliated those bitches. After that, the guys turned around and headed away, hopefully never to be seen with that obnoxious girl again. The bitch just stared at the guy in silence. Her gaze was full of irritation and anger. How dare he treat her like that? The student was very happy for our hero because he finally got his little revenge and taught that bitch a lesson. The black-haired boy immediately realized that he had been a wimp before. Had he always been bullied like this? The student said that he used to be really bullied and it was a real shame. No one respected him. The main character was a little upset about letting the girl go so easily, knowing how badly she wanted to break off the engagement. But the student assures his friend that the girl is not worth more than that. There's no need to waste your time on her. But the black-haired kid doesn't regret what he just did one bit. The guys decide to change the subject, and the student calls to escort the young man to the right classroom and show him the way. So, after a while, the guys walk up to the right office and open the door to go in. Suddenly, as they round the corner, a sharp dart flies straight towards the girl and nearly pierces her eye. But luckily, the girl catches the dart with one deft movement of her hand and prevents what could have happened to her. A student yells at a guy playing darts in class because it's very injury dangerous and he could hit a classmate. The kid was really embarrassed about it, and he immediately started apologizing when he realized that he had pissed off Tang Bei Bei. The student added that the guy's dart skills aren't very good, so he shouldn't show off in public. Moments later, the girl made a sweeping motion of her arm with one slight movement of her hand, releasing the dart. This dart flew into the target. The girl didn't seem to make any effort at all, but it hit. The young boy silently watched what was happening in the auditorium. He had picked up on the fact that such precision of the girl was the level of measurement of the base. A student attracts the attention of her classmates because she wants to reintroduce Lin Mu in front of everyone. She explains that the guy was injured in the hospital and lost his memory, so they ask the guys to be sympathetic. They will try their best to bring back their classmates' memory. After this speech, all the students begin to applaud. The main character immediately picks up on the fact that Tang Bei Bei is a pretty good person, and she's also popular in class. Suddenly someone knocks on the door, after which they open it. A woman enters the auditorium and surveys the room with a glance. It was a pretty blue-eyed woman who looked like a teacher. She wondered if she had missed anything. Lin Mu turned to his friend and assumed that this woman who had just entered the auditorium was also their classmate. But that turned out to be not the case at all. Tang Bei Bei laughed, for it was their instructor, Song Liang Ju. The guy felt embarrassed because he mistook the woman for a classmate. The teacher did not pay attention and called the student with her. The student told her friend not to hesitate and to follow Miss Song. He obeyed and went to the teacher. The instructor led him to her office, and first thing she asked him how he was feeling after being out of the hospital for so long. The student assured the instructors that he felt great and he was confident that he was completely healthy. The woman is glad that things have gotten better for our hero, but if he suddenly has problems, he can turn to her. They finished talking, and at that moment someone knocked on the door. It was Tang Bei Bei who had come to take Lin Mu out for lunch. After that, she wanted to show him around the university. They were just about done with the instructor, and the woman let the boy go. She was grateful to the student for helping the young man, but it wasn't hard at all for the female students to help the main character, because they were classmates. Moments later, the boys left the office and headed to the dining hall for a delicious meal. Carefully, she looked at Lin Mu after her. She noticed that the guy had changed not only externally, but also spiritually. His personality had changed. The guys were walking along the road, and the black-haired boy remembered how the girl had deftly thrown a dart earlier. She must be practicing somewhere, but the girl assured him that it was just nothing compared to her home workouts. To be honest, the young lad wouldn't have minded practicing, as he had been lying idle in the hospital for a very long time. The student touched our hero's shoulders and arms and confirmed that the guy's body was indeed stronger than before. It was as if he had practiced long and hard. Could a fall from the balcony really be so beneficial? It's not worth it, because the young man almost died, 
and the body he got in the aftermath is the only upside. Those words really got the student thinking. Naturally, it wasn't worth it. The young boy was surprised and asked the girl not to take it so literally. Tang Bei Bei was just curious about what the kid planned to do next. Obviously, but the young man had no plans, for he couldn't even remember anything from the past. Moments later, the girl had a rather interesting question. Would a guy ever want to live his life differently? This spontaneous question took our hero by surprise. The guy was stunned and didn't understand what he was talking about. She explained that in the past, Lin Mu had been the kind of weakling who was constantly bullied and disrespected. But the current him has changed not only externally, but also internally. His personality has changed dramatically. She thinks this guy was given this chance by God to turn his life around. And if this is the case, the young man should take advantage of this opportunity 100%. The black-haired boy didn't quite understand what the student was saying, so he directly asked what he needed to do. Seeing the student's interest, the girl smiled behind her. She seemed to be enjoying it very much. Her eyes were full of excitement as she started talking about the dragon their protectors. The young lad didn't understand what dragon protectors were being talked about, but he was instantly interested in the topic. But before continuing the story of their protector's dragon, the student has to talk about the world of martial arts. The girl starts her story from afar and asks if the kid believes that some people can kill with simple leaves. Though it sounds dubious, the main character immediately believes it and wonders if such people exist in their day. The student agrees, but says such special gifted people are very hard to find. Legends told that some masters were able to reach the Xi'an Tian dimension. One day, her grandfather managed to get pretty close to it. But unfortunately, an inner demon managed to overpower Grandpa and caused him to lose all of his cultivation. Fortunately, Grandpa survived. The young man immediately began to console the student, because the main thing is that her grandfather remained alive, and this is more important than anything else. There are many talented people in the Tang sect, and B.I. Bei believes that someone will be able to reach the Xi'an Tian dimension and glorify their sect. The main character was greatly surprised when he heard about this sect. He thought it was located in Sichuan. The girl assumed he was thinking of a cult from one martial arts novel. It wasn't. The sector exists beyond the novels. They are masters of poisons and hidden weapons. At the very peak, they had many Xi'an Tian experts. The black-haired kid is curious to know all about it and wonders how strong they were. Her grandfather had told her that all of their techniques were created by Xi'an Tian experts. Most likely, Xi'an experts are equal in strength to the foundation measurement level and this greatly surprises the young man. And dragon protectors were created by the government for special occasions. That's why some sects send their disciples to the team to break through faster. Tang Bei Bei is the coach of one of the teams. But is our hero allowed to join the team if he is not a cult member? There are no inhibitions here. His potential, combined with good training, will allow him to become much stronger. These words make the young man think. It seems to be quite an interesting and favorable offer. After a moment, our hero accepts the offer for he wants to live a different life. He will cling to every opportunity. Thus, a few hours passed, and a dark night came over the city. The city looked very bright and fairy tale like at this time of day. The guys were heading to the Tang Long Corporation. It was a multi-story building with windows lit up with different colors. The student led the young boy behind her. The young man thought that the base of the Dragon Defenders was right in the center of the city. It really was, because as an important agency for the government, not just can't be located somewhere in the mountains, for example. And if there is a sudden urgency, agency workers can quickly respond and help. The black-haired boy thought about it for a while and came to the conclusion that it was indeed the right decision. Soon the boys went inside the building and walked down the hallway present in front of the elevator. A moment later, the elevator arrived and its doors opened with a small clang. The boys wondered if the whole building was their base. It's so huge. The young girl did not answer in any way but only smiled enigmatically and took out some kind of map from her pocket. After that, she held the card up to the sensor and swiped it. A few seconds after that, something appeared on the screen. The girl explained that the Tenglong Corporation was just a disguise. At the same time, she pressed something on the screen. The young lady told the protagonist to just wait and do nothing. Soon they would be on the spot. Suddenly, the elevator began to ride down and this slightly startled Lin Mu, for he immediately backed up against the wall. A moment later, the elevator arrived at its destination and stopped with a quiet chime, alerting the people in the elevator. Soon, the elevator doors slowly opened and the student led the black-haired boy behind her. The boys were finally in the center of the Dragon Defender's base. It was just a white room filled with different technologies. There were a lot of people here, busy working. Immediately afterward, the girl led her friend into another office. 
on the floor of which some man was sitting. After a moment, the man opened his eyes, which were glowing with a bright yellow light. His gaze was very menacing and frightening. The man approached the young girl and asked what she was doing here so late at night. The young man noticed the glow of spiritual chi in this man. It seemed to have broken through the foundation dimension. But even so, the man was still a long way away from Xiantian's dimension. The girl informs Uncle Yan that she has brought him a new martial arts genius. The old man thought it was a joke, and the young man in front of him was Tang Bei Bei's boyfriend. Besides, it was too late for him to learn martial arts. But the young girl immediately objected and told the man to personally check on the guest. The man soon gives in to the girl's pleas and believes her, deciding to test the young lad. The old man approaches his guest and examines him carefully, probing his body thoroughly. He is greatly surprised because our hero has a really strong body, although he does not master martial arts. The girl explains that Lin Mu is an ordinary guy, but after the fall his body has become many times stronger than before. After this story, the man immediately had questions about how this could have happened. But the main character himself did not know the answer to this question, because even in the hospital no one could not find out the reason. Since Tang Bei Bei brought him here, he must know about the dragon protectors, and the man suggests he join them. But before joining the team, a guy has to pass a test, and if he does join, it won't be so easy to get away from them. But the young man has already been warned about it by the girl. She has explained all the rules to him, and he agrees to it. The man begins to prepare for the test, so that our hero will surely be able to pass it. He handed Lin Mu a book that contained a breath-holding technique. Immediately after reading it, he should burn it. You have to follow the instructions in the book, and when the guy has mastered the technique, he can come to the man. The young lad takes the book and sincerely thanks the man for the chance he has been given. They talk, the female student volunteers to take the participant to the test. The man lets them go. And so, as soon as the guys leave the office, the old man laughs loudly. Well, what caused such laughter? Turns out he's glad that B.I. Bae brought this guy in. The Dunhai branch is about to get a new expert. Night still continues to rain in the streets. The full moon illuminates the sky. Our guys, meanwhile, head for the dormitory, with lights still on in the windows. The protagonist immediately set about learning. He carefully reads the information from every page of the book. The young man doesn't understand why Liu Shou Yang's spiritual qi is so strange. Perhaps it is because of the weakness of this world? Suddenly, something begins to appear on our hero's index finger. Something that looks like a ring. A moment later, a strange ring does appear on his finger, with black energy hovering around it. It's very interesting when he can get his hands on the items from the vault of this ring since it's the only thing he has left from the past world. The sun will rise. A young boy will go looking for information about this world in the library. He needs to know everything. So the next day came, and our hero went straight to the library to learn new information. The young boy sat at the table and read the books carefully, trying not to miss any small details. Suddenly, the main character was distracted from his studies by a loud scream, and he turned around to see where it was coming from. When he averts his gaze, he notices the same girl at the next table and some blonde guy next to her. The girl had an altercation with some guy who was apparently hitting on her again. This blonde man was rich, so he thought they were perfect for each other, especially since they were both heirs to their families. The black-haired girl was very angry at this scoundrel, who clearly thought a lot of himself and allowed himself such insolent behavior. The girl didn't want to waste time on this scumbag, so she silently headed away from him. The scoundrel thought that the girl was only rejecting him, because she was engaged to that loser from the Lin family. The brunette just ignores him, hoping that he will get off, but the insolent continues to insult our hero and self-assert himself at his expense. Suddenly, the girl stops abruptly when she notices someone. She stopped when she saw our hero reading the book intently. He looked very focused. The blonde slasher also notices the protagonist and decides not to waste the opportunity to humiliate Lin Mu, but the black-haired kid doesn't respond in any way to the barbs from this rich scumbag and just ignores him. Such disrespect caused the blonde man to become extremely aggressive. How dare someone like him treat him so disrespectfully? The scumbag moves closer to the protagonist and looms over him, about to continue the humiliation. The young lad looks up and asks who this stranger is, for he has lost his memory and remembers nothing at all. The blonde man heard the news that he is engaged to Xiao Yue, so he tells him to break the engagement as soon as possible. But the young man calmly says that they have already cancelled the engagement and the girl's affairs do not bother him anymore. Hearing such information, the kid turned to the young girl behind him and asked if it was true. There was a girl behind me who made puppy dog eyes and said the above was a lie. A moment later, this blonde scumbag knocked the book our hero was reading right out of his hands. The book fell to the floor with a clatter, 
There was a dead silence in the air. The guy, of course, believed the girl and thought that our hero was deceiving him. So he wanted to teach him a lesson. The black-haired boy didn't respond to the stupid words that came from that scoundrel. Moments later, the protagonist grabs this badass by the scruff of the neck and prepares to teach him a lesson. The black-haired guy's gaze is full of hatred for such disrespect, but the blonde doesn't take him seriously. That's why in just a couple of seconds, the young man gathers all his strength into a fist and prepares to fight. A moment later, the creep is on the floor. A young boy throws him over his shoulder. The blonde coughs in pain and doesn't understand how this loser had the nerve to do such a thing. But as it turns out, that's not all because the main character comes closer to him and steps on his body. The protagonist stepped on the belly of this scumbag, who was writhing in pain on the floor. He got what he deserved. After a moment, the young boy turns around and looks at the girl still standing there. The young men don't understand why the girl clings so tightly to this engagement. Does she really need it so badly? The black-haired girl doesn't want it, but those two old men need it. It's got to be done right. The young boy sighed heavily and grabbed his head. He had no idea it would be so annoying. He then turns to the badass and tells him not to go near him anymore because technically she's his fiance. The blonde man squirms in pain but tries to get out of it with his reputation, reminding him that he's rich. The protagonist doesn't care at all about his financial situation and status, and he kicks it. This leg kick causes the scumbag to scream loudly in pain and promises he won't bother them again. The black-haired boy taught the bastard a lesson. He ordered him to disappear. The humiliated guy gets up off the floor and quickly heads away, trying to get away from the embarrassment as soon as possible. The guy is very depressed after being publicly humiliated, but he's not going to let it go and he's going to get revenge. Everyone around them looked at the blonde man who was walking away from the library in shame. This immediately attracted the attention of everyone around him. Suddenly, a library worker came to such noise and clamor, reminding the place to be quiet. The black-haired kid quickly makes an excuse and reports that one of the students accidentally bumped into a table. Then, the young man is volunteered to put all the fallen furniture back in its place. A black-haired girl approaches our hero and notices that he has changed a lot. She doesn't recognize him, but in this there are only pluses, because now our hero will have much less problems. The girl warned him that he needed to be careful from now on, because Wang Dong likes to take revenge. The young boy was amused by this and smirked slightly, then thanked the girl for the warning. When the young man was cleaning the library, he noticed the very book that the scoundrel had earlier knocked out of his hands. The protagonist noticed a phrase on one of the pages of the book. Someone has to finish what they started in case the enemies return. Since our hero had already learned this technique, he wanted to find Uncle Yan and get some new assignment. At this time, there was a real buffoonery and scandal going on in the Wang family home. The boss was shouting loudly and throwing things at his subordinates, saying that they were the most useless employees. They had all previously talked about how weak Lin Mu was. But then why did he dare to cross Wang Dong today and even break his arm? All the subordinates only shamefully lowered their eyes to the floor. They swore that they had reported what they had seen. Lin Mu used to be completely different. The mustachioed man seemed interested in those words and wanted to know more details. One of the subordinates explained that after the incident, Lin Mu had lost his memory and was not the same as before. Now he rarely even comes home. Upon hearing this, the man ordered the servants to bring the protagonist to him no matter what. All the subordinates obediently agreed with their boss's words and were ready to carry out the order. The mustachioed man with the beastly grin was determined to teach our hero a lesson. He would regret what he had done. The next day came. The weather was fine and the young boy walked through the crowded streets. Suddenly, the young man had a strange premonition. It seemed to him that something was going wrong. Suddenly, a truck stopped in front of the black-haired kid. A moment later, three intimidating men emerged from it, searching for Lin Mu. These bigwigs reported that their boss was inviting a young lad in for a cup of tea, and he was obliged to turn up. The black-haired guy wasn't eager to go visit someone he didn't even know, but no one cared. If the young man did not agree to go with them of his own free will, they would take him away by force. The protagonist has nothing to do but agree, because he does not want to be beaten by these ambassadors. After a few seconds, the guy gets into the car, he remembered the girl's words that the Wang family really likes revenge, but it doesn't seem to bother the black-haired kid at all. On the contrary, it would only amuse Lin Mu. Some time passed and finally our hero was brought straight to this boss, who in turn was eagerly waiting for him. The man was looking forward to meeting this scumbag who dared to be so brazen. The subordinates went out into the hallway to bring guests while the man sat on the couch waiting for him. A moment later, a knock was heard on the door, and the boss immediately ordered the guest to enter. So. The black-haired kid enters the office, and behind him are several of the boss's subordinates, 
who don't let him escape. The man hints that the guy is going to get in trouble for what he did, but the guy doesn't even realize what he's gotten himself into. Soon, the man's look changes, and he reminds him that Wang Dong is his son, and he won't allow him to be treated that way. But the young lad doesn't seem to care about that, as he continues to guffaw and doesn't take the words seriously. The man applauds the kid for his courage, as no one had dared to speak to him so disrespectfully before. Since our hero is from the Lin family, the scumbag decides to go easy on him. He'll let him go when the young man tears his tendons. But the protagonist is not as simple as it seems. Naturally, he is not burning with desire to fulfill such an order. Suddenly, one of the boss's subordinates grabs his shoulder and tells him not to cross their master. The young lad takes a blow to the head of this subordinate without a second thought. A moment later, Lin Mu grabs his hand and prepares to attack him, for he dared to interrupt their conversation. After a couple seconds, our hero throws the subordinate over himself, him on the table. Unfortunately, the man was unable to dodge the blow and flew straight into his boss's desk. A moment later, the man was on the floor and the table was smashed to pieces. The boss praised our hero's techniques, but even if the protagonist has some techniques, will they be enough to handle all the subordinates? The men surrounded the young lad, but he didn't seem at all worried, for he had a smile on his face. After a couple of seconds, the boss's patience broke, and he ordered his subordinates to tear this insolent man to pieces. The protagonist is confident, so he tells his enemies to attack altogether so they don't waste his time. The young lad gets into a fighting stance and bravely prepares to take all the blows of these formidable men. Thus, between the guys begin to fight. Our hero manages to hold firm and strike his enemies. Some time has passed and the fight has finally come to an end. Our hero calmly adjusts the sleeves of his suit. The young boy was able to win the victory. All his enemies were lying on the floor without strength. The man was completely horrified and shocked when he saw all of his subordinates lying on the floor with no strength. How could this guy do such a thing? The protagonist, as if nothing had happened, says that they can now continue their conversation that was previously interrupted. The scumbag got scared to be in the same room with such a strong guy, so he offered him $20 million in compensation. The black-haired kid immediately realizes that this money was clearly obtained by dishonest and dirty ways. The scumbag immediately starts making excuses and talking about how this money is clean and earned honestly. The young boy believes these words and starts looking for something in the inside pocket of his jacket. After a moment, he pulls out his card from there and asks me to transfer the promised money to it. The man immediately agrees to do it, but first he needs a computer to perform all the necessary actions. Money passes some time, and this scumbag actually transfers the promised amount to the young man's card. The man turns the computer screen around and says that the guy personally verified the truth of his words. The protagonist thanks him. At this time, the man starts rummaging through his desk drawers. With an evil look, he tells the kid to take his time and not to leave so immediately. I think he's up to something. As it turned out, the scoundrel pulled out his gun, but has not yet shown it to our hero. And then, just a moment later, the bastard pointed the muzzle of the gun directly at the unarmed protagonist. The young lad stands and moves while the boss scoffs at his helplessness. But after a couple of seconds, the young man's lips spread into a chi and an amused grin. Is he really afraid? He didn't hesitate, and in one swift motion kicked the table where the scumbag was. Because of such a strong blow, the table flew straight towards the creep and pushed him, hitting him hard in the stomach. Such a hard blow caused the man to fly back into the wall and drop the gun. Now he was defenseless here. The man began to fear for his life and assured the guy that it was a misunderstanding and would not happen again. He begged for his life. I think it was the last one. There was nothing more to discuss in their conversation. The black-haired kid reminded him that he could kill him any second if he wanted to, so it was best not to unnerve him. The man began to humiliate himself before the young man Isa in loyalty to him. He said he was ready to do his bidding. Hearing such words, our hero becomes interested in this proposal. It seems he already has an idea in mind. Suddenly, a young boy grabs this scumbag by the throat, scaring him off. A moment later, he shoves something into the scumbag's mouth against his will. The young man then forces the scum to swallow what he just gave him and watch it closely. The man immediately tries to spit it out and find out what he just swallowed in the first place. Fear has taken over his whole body. As it turns out, it's poison. If the man behaves well, our hero will give him an antidote every three months. Otherwise, he will die a painful death. Having said that, the black-haired boy headed away, leaving this scumbag lying on the floor and thinking about his future life. The young man was about to leave the office, but suddenly the phone rang in his pocket. When the kid pulled out his phone and looked at the screen, he realized that he was getting a call from the same student, Tan Bei Bei. He picked up the phone without a second thought. 
the girl informed him that they had an urgent assignment and the guy had to come to the base. The protagonist, of course, obediently complied with the girl's request and headed to the Ten Lawn Corporation where the base was located. The young man came to the right place. There were quite a lot of people in the room, and everyone was whispering while looking at the big screen and the stage. The young boy didn't understand at all why so many people had gathered here and what was going on. He tried to ask the girl for information. It didn't take long for the answer to come. The girl explained that they had recently caught the leader of a mercenary group, and his subordinates have taken about 20 people hostage, so now demands to trade them for the leader. But besides taking hostages, the mercenaries also want to attack the Pearl Tower. They just can't let that happen. The plan was to rescue the hostages and help the rest of the unit. That's the priority right now. The black-haired kid thought it would be just him and the student going to save people, but that turned out not to be the case at all. For if they had enough men, they would not have called for recruits. Lin Mu's assignment was to merely locate the hostages, then notify his elders. The man who stood in front of the whole crowd seemed to be one of the commanders. He turned to the crowd, drawing their attention to himself. The man assured everyone of the importance of this task. Since he had already explained the situation earlier, he was not going to waste time on it now. There was not a second to lose because they could cost the lives of the hostages. That's why. The guys immediately set out on the mission. And so, without slowing down, the rescue team set off for the western neighborhood of Dokai City. It was quite beautiful here. The protagonist climbed to the roof of one of the buildings to scrutinize the situation and look around. It was very strange, for the rooms and the premises were completely empty, although Lin Mu could sense that there were many people here. Moments later, a young boy dares to jump down to check out what's going on here in person. The young man quickly pressed himself against the wall so that no one would notice him. He was as stealthy as possible, so as not to attract the attention of his enemies. The protagonist didn't understand what was going on here. He glanced out the window and was shocked to see no one there. But even so, the black-haired kid could sense the presence of people somewhere nearby. That means they've gone into hiding. Lin Mu gathered his thoughts and once again scrutinized the area, trying to find a single detail. Suddenly, a quite logical thought comes into our hero's head. He squats down and looks carefully at the sewer manhole. Turns out their enemies had been hiding here all along right underneath them. It was much simpler than that, but now it was too early to rejoice. For first the young lad must test his theory, so he lifts the manhole cover. And as soon as the young man lifts the lid, he sees a bright light that comes straight from the depths of the sewer. Lin Mu looks inside and sees a long white staircase with a bright white light at the bottom. The black-haired guy decides not to hesitate and immediately goes down the stairs to now check the situation there. This was the secret base of their enemies. There were guards here as well, and at this time one of them was looking around their domain. Suddenly, the enemy guard heard a strange sound so he immediately became alert and turned around to check what had happened. But it was too late. When the man turned around, he had no time to do anything because our hero had already beaten him. Lin Mu firmly grabbed his neck with his legs, preventing him from retreating away. He clutched the enemy's neck tightly with his legs. It was extremely difficult for the man, and he obviously couldn't handle it on his own so he desperately tried to call for help. But instead of screams, only a quiet wheeze came out. With each passing second, the man was losing consciousness, for air was gradually ceasing to enter his lungs because of the strangulation by his legs. Eventually, the strength completely left the unfortunate guard, who had been caught off guard, and he collapsed to the cold floor. The young boy was not confused. He seemed to have a plan. The young man began to quietly remove the clothes from the newly defeated guard. Once Lin Mu finished with this, he changed into the clothes of a guard and thus disguised himself. Thanks to this, he quietly made his way into their base. Our hero went straight to their boss's office. It was quite risky, but he turned out to be a very brave guy. The young man told the boss that something was wrong at the base. Accordingly, the boss immediately opened the door after these words to find out the reason for his guard's visit. The protagonist slowly continues his story, but keeps a close eye on his boss's every move so that he is always on guard. The black-haired kid immediately notices the bald man slowly bringing his hand closer to the gun on his belt. And so, just as the scumbag pulled the gun from his belt, the young lad quickly grabbed his wrist to prevent the worst from happening. The boss was not confused because he was good at martial arts. He took a sharp swing of his knee preparing to deliver a powerful blow, but since our hero is not a timid guy, he immediately reacted and started to self-defense. Young blocks his foe's kick and strikes him back in the leg, causing him to break his bone with a loud crunch. The bald man immediately begins to scream, unable to contain the emotion in himself, because it caused a lot of pain. 
The pain made the man unable to stay on his feet and collapsed to the floor, grasping at his injured leg. After a moment, the scoundrel was not confused and pointed the muzzle of the gun directly at Lin Mu, trying to reveal his identity. This bald scumbag threatened to shoot and finish him off if the young man didn't reveal his identity right here and now. Naturally, the black-haired kid didn't obey this, and a moment later he made a strong swing with his knee. The protagonist delivered a powerful knee strike right across the face of this scumbag, who didn't have time to react to such speed. Our hero's blow was so strong and accurate that his enemy simply blacked out and fell to the floor with a clatter. Lin Mu looked around the room. There were people who were huddled against the wall in fear and panic. It seemed that these were the hostages that needed to be freed. The protagonist looked around again and concluded that all the hostages must be here and they must be okay. The black-haired boy took a second look around the room and saw two suspicious bags that stood in the very corner of the room. Without a drop of fear, the young man went straight to those bags to check what was inside. And so, when the young man opened the bag, he was surprised at what he saw inside. The bag was completely full of money. That's unbelievable. Our hero looked carefully at the money, which was stuffed to the brim in his bag. The bills seemed to be real. Lin Mu was greatly surprised that these scumbags were able to steal so much money, so much in cash as well. The hostages still do not know who our hero is, so he decides not to lose such a wonderful opportunity, but on the contrary, to take advantage of it. After thinking about his plan for a bit, the black-haired kid zips up his bag like it's meant to be. Right after that, Lin Mu grabs both bags and heads for the exit. It turned out that the guy had decided to embezzle all that money for himself. One of the hostages watches the stranger carefully as he walks away. Her gaze fills with determination with each passing second. The girl came to the conclusion that this stranger had killed that scumbag just to get his money and escape. Suddenly, the girl's gaze catches what is on the floor. Hope appears in the girl's eyes. Turns out everyone had forgotten about the gun, which was now on the floor unattended. It seemed like a great opportunity. Seizing the opportunity, the girl deftly did a somersault and was near the gun with lightning speed. The brave girl grabbed her gun and pointed it at the back of the departing stranger, ordering him not to move. But this didn't seem to frighten the protagonist at all, as he only sighed irritably in response. The kid turns around and calmly explains to the hostages that he's not going to harm them, and now they're free to go. You can leave this room and escape. But the girl continues to stand her ground, for as it turns out, she is a police officer. She orders Lin Mu to drop the bags and put her hands behind her head. The guy doesn't give up either and offers a good deal. He leaves one bag to the guys and takes the other one for himself. That way, everyone's on the plus side. But the girl officer continues to stand on her principles and threatens to shoot if our hero doesn't listen to her this very second. Unfortunately, the young lad has no choice but to obediently follow orders and throw the bags of money on the floor. Then, the brunette turns to one of the hostages. She asks him to remove his belt in order to tie the stranger's hands. The man obeys the officer and removes his belt then walks over to the guy, who sits obediently on the floor and waits. But it didn't seem to be that simple. The young man was not going to give up, but only waited for the right moment, which had just appeared. The young boy jumps up sharply and pushes with all his might at the man who was just about to tie his hands. Because of such a strong blow, the man falls right towards the girl, who clearly did not expect such a stunt from a stranger. As a result, the man could not keep his balance and fell directly on the girl, thus immobilizing her for a while. Thanks to this, the protagonist was able to approach the girl and calmly take away her weapon, while still in one piece. The hostage pissed the guy off, and he ordered her to go back to the corner of the room and wait there for help. The officer had no choice but to obey, for our hero had a gun, and it was a threat to her life. In this way, the cunning fellow was able to take all the money for himself. Now he calmly headed for the exit from the premises. Finally, the young man opened the heavy doors and stepped out of the room. As soon as he did, he immediately began to remove the heavy body armor and clothing of the past guard. After a while, our hero took off all the clothes that belonged to the guard and put them back on the man, who was still lying on the floor without strength. After that, the mission was completed, and the young boy with a calm soul could go home to rest. After completing the task, the black-haired guy headed outside to rest for a while. He came to a well, standing alone in the courtyard. The protagonist didn't hesitate for a second before throwing bags of money straight into this deep and dark well. Lin Mu doesn't part with the money. He plans to come and get it again as soon as it's over. When the young man finished his business, he immediately called Tang Bei Bei to report that he had found something suspicious. Soon, officers arrived on the scene and began taking turns removing the hostages from the trap. The protagonist and his girlfriend watched in silence as the hostages left this horrible place. 
our hero is summoned to go to headquarters to report back and say the mission is accomplished. They can proceed to the next part of the plan. A young student exhales with relief when the last hostage finally leaves the enemy base. Now everyone is safe. All the hostages are taken to a small bus, which has already pulled up to the right place. Now they will all be taken home to safety. The boys looked at the bus, which was getting farther away from them with each passing second. It was warming to realize that they had saved the hostages, but that's not all. The hostages said that something suspicious happened, so Tang Bei Bei wants to personally inspect the scene. The black-haired boy looks questioningly at the student, not understanding what suspicious thing the hostages might have seen. It turns out that the hostages had already told them that the two mercenaries had gotten into a fight, but when the officers arrived, two were already out. The guys enter the very room where the incident took place. The girl looks around and realizes that the dirty money is nowhere to be found. Whoever knocked out those two mercenaries must be a true master at his craft. It was done with dignity. The girl urgently needs to report that such a martial arts expert has appeared among the mercenaries. It was about the main character, but he wasn't going to admit it. Instead, he only smiled and agreed with the student's words. And so, the boys went to the base of the Dragon Defenders. It was still late at night. Soon, it was time to say goodbye. Lin Mu said goodbye to his friend and quickly left, as he still had unfinished business. As soon as the black-haired kid stepped outside, he immediately hailed a cab. A young boy urgently needed to get to Pingjiang District. There were urgent matters waiting for him there. As soon as the driver received the order, he immediately went to the desired location requested by the customer. When the car arrived at the right place, the guy paid and asked the driver to wait, saying he would pick up the clothes and come right back. Immediately afterward, the black-haired kid got out of the car and walked away in an unknown direction. Since the customer was not around, the driver allowed himself to smoke a cigarette, hoping to finish before our hero returned. The man waited quietly in the car. It was dark outside and only the headlights illuminated the road. The cigarette slowly smoldered as the driver was immersed in his thoughts. I wonder what he was thinking about now. After a while, the young boy returned to the car and asked the driver to open the trunk to put clothes in there. The driver agrees to open the trunk without too many questions because, after all, it's his job. As soon as the driver pressed one of the buttons on the panel, the trunk opened immediately. The protagonist walked around the car and quickly threw into the trunk the very bags of money he had taken earlier, under the pretense that they were clothes. The driver glanced at his customer and couldn't help but notice that the guy looked very pleased after picking up the clothes. The bags contained about 10 million euros. Naturally, the young man looked pleased, but it was a mystery to the driver. Meanwhile, that very boss Wang had the results of the body check come back to him. One of his subordinates brought him an envelope. The man held out an envelope to his boss. Inside were the results of the examination. The subordinate states that the results say that the man's body is fine and he wasn't poisoned or anything like that. In the end, the man gives his verdict that the boss is completely healthy and has no problem with it. Hearing this verdict, the thug asks the subordinate to leave. Now the man wants to be alone with himself. The man's face flushes with anger and rage as he thinks about the fact that our hero might have just outsmarted him. What if he hadn't actually poisoned him? Suddenly, the man is pulled out of his thoughts by a phone call. When the creep looks at the screen, he realizes it's a call from an unknown caller. Who is it? The man looked very serious and worried, but he answered the phone. Who's on the other end? As it turned out, he received a call from none other than Lin Mu. That made the scumbag laugh. The protagonist has already booked a table in one restaurant, and invited Wang's boss there. He wants to have a little chat with him. The man didn't seem to mind that at all and very quickly agreed to come to meet him in a couple minutes. Even though he looked relaxed, his mind was churning with thoughts. He was nervous and didn't understand what else the protagonist wanted from him. A few minutes pass, and the old man is already arriving at the right restaurant. He didn't want to keep the young boy waiting. The man did not hesitate and got straight to the point. He wanted to know what the black-haired boy wanted from him. The bastard is ready to do whatever he wants. The young man was slightly amused at this reaction from the scumbag, but continued nonetheless. He had one request. The protagonist continued and immediately said that the man should know about his family's situation, and he has one task that only Boss Wang can accomplish. After saying that, he filled his glass with wine. Hearing this, the man seemed to be more than a little interested. He was looking forward to hearing this assignment. The black-haired kid explained the situation. He had some cash, but unfortunately he couldn't really use it yet. And since the man is in business, he can probably bail out our hero in such a difficult situation. Boss Wang had no problem agreeing. Although he has few useful skills, but business is one of his strengths. 
Immediately after that, the man moved on to the question of money and its amount. He was very interested to know how much money our hero had on his hands. Lin Mu had 20 million euros. He instructed the man to turn that amount into an even larger sum, no matter what the means. Boss Wang will have no problem doing this, so the protagonist only has to rest and wait. In that case, our hero thanks the man in advance and raises his glass to him. Boss Wang raises his glass too and pulls it towards the guy's glass to clink and seal their deal. Some time passes. The weather is clear outside. The black-haired boy has returned to the dormitory. A young man sits at his desk doing something on his laptop while his roommates walk around. Lin Mu can't concentrate in this environment, as there are too many extra eyes, so he decides to leave. It is for this reason that the protagonist decides to look at places with arenas and seems to find a pretty good one. After that, the young lad urgently needed to go and check something out. Our hero went outside and came up to some nice building. It looked quite expensive and caught his eye at once. And so, the young man is already standing in front of the entrance of the building and hopes that the owner will turn out to be a nice person. A moment later, the young boy presses the bell without doubt or hesitation. A melody sounds. A voice is heard inside the house. It seems that someone is about to come outside. After only a couple seconds, the door of the mansion swings open. A young kid with glasses comes outside and looks at Lin Mu in surprise, asking who he is looking for. The main character got straight to the point. He saw in the advertisement that this house was for rent, so he came here. The young lad was immediately filled with seriousness when he realized that the young man in front of him was possibly his future client. The young lad was interested in the monthly rent for such a nice house. The boy first invited them to come inside and look around, and then they could discuss the price in peace. A moment later, our hero put on his slippers and entered the house. It was quite spacious and cozy. The boy finally introduced himself. His name is Meng Xuan, and he inquired about our hero's name. The black-haired kid kindly introduced himself and gave his name, Lin Mu. Meng Xuan began a tour of the house. There were already two people living on the top floor, and now there was just one vacant room left. The guy led the protagonist to a vacant room. It was well furnished and cost $1,200 a month. Lin Mu must pay the amount for the whole year at once. The young lad started to get a little indignant, saying it was a little overpriced for just one room. The man objected, saying that there were rooms nearby that only cost a few hundred a month, and if Lin Mu wasn't satisfied with something, he could go there. Suddenly, a pleasant female voice was heard from the corridor. A moment later, a woman entered the room and immediately recognized Lin Mu as the guest. The black-haired boy was surprised to see Miss Song here. It was his instructor at the university. The man with glasses looked over at the guys and was slightly surprised that they seemed to already know each other. The woman confirmed this fact and added that Lin Mu was her student from the university. The young lad immediately realized that it would be difficult to do anything when Miss Song was around. That was the problem. That was why the young man refused to rent the room, saying that the price was too high. Having said that, he headed away. The woman wondered why the young man couldn't rent the room, given his family's wealth. Thoughts began to creep into the woman's head that perhaps something had happened to the kid's family. In the meantime, the young boy still managed to rent his own place. Our hero isn't really a big fan of Western style, but it's not the worst option it could be. The black-haired kid looks around carefully and realizes that this is indeed a good place to cultivate, as it's calm and quiet. Then the young man's gaze slides to the spacious kitchen, which is imposing to him. A small smile appears on Lin Mu's face at the realization that it had been quite a while since he had cooked for himself. And so, the young man decides to fix it. So after a while, the pan is already frying odorous vegetables and meat. Lin Mu can cook well, but unfortunately, this time he was unlucky with the ingredients. Next time, he will order them online. The protagonist immediately went online and decided to look up some herbs for future meals in the meantime. Suddenly, he came to a shock at what he had just seen on his screen. On the screen was a picture of some kind of plant. It looked more like someone's root, and it's called spiritual ginseng. The young man genuinely did not expect to see such a thing. After all, it was a 300-year-old spiritual ginseng that suited him perfectly. This product is located in Nangu City, which means that Lin Mu will have to personally go to pick it up. A young boy has already arrived at the airport because very soon was his flight. He has to fly to another city. The protagonist was already on his way to the airplane to which a special corridor led. In fact, the young man was incredibly curious about what it would be like to fly an airplane, because he had not had that experience before. But before getting on board, one naturally needs to take a look at which seat Lin Mu is sitting in. The protagonist pulled his phone out of his pocket and opened the ticket, checking the information. The corners of his lips lifted in a smile, 
realizing that having an entire company behind him was great. Boss Wang had prepared a plane and everything for him. Meanwhile, on the airplane, on one of the seats was a pretty girl Hao Yue from Luo Bi Yun Corporation. There were quite a few people on the plane, mostly men. But soon, our hero came on board, walking between the rows and looking for his seat. The girl was surprised that another person had come aboard, for she thought they had the whole airplane to themselves. The man explained that before boarding, the airline informed him that they needed a VIP seat. Hearing this, the girl was greatly surprised, because if it was a VIP passenger, he must be an influential person. Now the girl wondered how powerful and important this man was, after all, if he was put on the plane with them like this. When the black-haired boy passed by the girl, he smiled warmly and said hello in a friendly manner. After a moment, he finally found the right seat on the airplane and took it. Why, to pass the time, the young man began to study the screen panel that was on the back of the seat. At this time, the pretty girl was scrutinizing him with her gaze, trying to catch every detail. If the girl is not happy with this intruder, the man is willing to talk to the airline and resolve the issue. But she refuses. With a smile on her face, the girl remarks that compared to the rest of the VIP clients, there is something interesting about this guy. Some time passes and the plane finally lands. The flight is over and has passed without incident. Our hero has gone about his business. The girl and her subordinates had also just gotten off the plane. The girl was slightly upset that this guy just walked away and didn't even speak to her. The subordinate seemed to notice this and wanted to somehow support the girl and reassure her, but she assured him that everything was fine. It was just her first time going through such an experience. Meanwhile, in another part of town, an auction is taking place. The next item is a very special plant. This plant has been identified by botanists and evaluated by professionals. It has many useful qualities. And the starting price of such an unusual and special product is $15,000. The black-haired kid is surprised that the price of such a valuable ginseng is so small. No one here seems to understand its value. A moment later, those present in the room began to raise their bets, and at this point the maximum bet was 22000 Our hero did not wait long, and immediately raised the bid to 44000 to definitely buy this lot. The auctioneer immediately began counting down, waiting to see if anyone else in the room would raise a bid. But finally the man finished counting down, and the bid was not outbid. It turns out that Lin Mu had bought this special plant. This unusual plant has finally found its owner. It has been sold to the protagonist. The young lad was incredibly excited about his purchase, as he wanted it so badly. The bronze cauldron should be here by the time Lin Mu returned. Finally, the day began to come to an end. People in a fancy restaurant gathered for a dinner party. The evening promised to be wonderful. The girl saw her acquaintance, Miss Lee, and asked her to come over. After a moment... The girl held out a glass of wine to her acquaintance and asked her to hold it for her. The black-haired girl is surprised and doesn't understand where Miss Lowe is going, because the banquet isn't over yet. Miss Lowe reports that she just wants to go outside to ventilate and get some fresh air. And so, as soon as the girl was outside, she got into the car. Finally, she felt free. But even though the girl had already left the banquet hall and was on her own in the car, she wasn't entirely comfortable. And that's because her bodyguards were following her. Sure, it's for her safety, but having five special forces is a bit much. It didn't seem to bother the girl much, for she had a great idea in her head. Miss Lowe decided it would be a good idea to throw her bodyguards off her tail while she still had the chance. The subordinates, as soon as they saw the girl begin to pick up speed, rushed after her. They couldn't lose her. And so, the real chase began between them. The girl drove as hard as she could, but the bodyguards didn't lag behind at all. When the girl realized that her plan didn't work, she didn't despair for she had another thought in her head. At this time, a bright red color appeared on the traffic light, and a road sign with an arrow signifying a turn was hanging nearby. Seeing such a swanky opportunity, the girl quickly swerved while her bodyguard's car stopped at a stoplight. The subordinates missed the rebel girl because their traffic light was now red, and they couldn't violate traffic laws. The girl was overjoyed when she realized that she was now 100% free, because she had left her bodyguards behind. Immediately afterward, she began to contemplate what she would do while no one was watching her. But all of a sudden, some strange guy ran right into the road. Where the hell did he come from? Miss Luo hit the brake sharply to avoid hurting that strange guy and running him over. Moments later, a bullet flies right next to the girl's face. It almost hits her in the head. It was a real gunshot. The car window was punctured. Thankfully, the girl was lucky and wasn't hurt badly. She instantly got out of the car to look around. If Miss Lowe had stopped even a second later, it's scary to imagine what might have happened. She decides to hide somewhere safe until the bodyguards can find and rescue her. The girl quickly runs down the empty hallway, hoping to get away from her abusers as soon as possible. At last, Miss Lowe dared to stop, 
for she was already very tired from running. She would be safe here for a while. Suddenly, the young girl hears someone's footsteps. It makes her a little nervous. But, after a moment, the girl calms down, because these footsteps are quite calm, which means that it is an ordinary passerby. A couple seconds later, the girl sees a lone kid walking down the street. After a moment, the girl recognizes in this passerby the very guy with whom they had previously flown on the same plane. Suddenly, the girl grabbed the black-haired boy's arm, after which she asked him to stop. The protagonist naturally stopped and wondered what this stranger wanted from him. The black-haired guy thought that this girl was offering him prostitution services, so he immediately refused, because now he did not need it. The young girl was greatly surprised to hear of any favors. Miss Lowe looked at her clothes and was greatly surprised, for she realized who this stranger had taken her for. The young boy heads away, but the girl has no intention of letting him go and screams again, asking him to stop. The protagonist turns around and looks questioningly at the girl, wondering what else she needs. The girl says that the young man is wrong and explains the situation about a killer hunting her. She desperately asks for help. When the young man hears about this, he immediately volunteers to help. He helps Miss Lowe to the police station. It was a deep night. Millions of stars spread across the night sky, and the full moon illuminated the city. And so, after a while, the boys saw a police station. To get there, all they had to do was cross the road. Finally, the guys come up to the police station. The girl needs to get inside as soon as possible and stay there. A tense atmosphere hung between the boys. They walked in complete silence. The black-haired boy seemed to sense this tension and shifted his gaze to the girl. The protagonist feels the girl's hard stare on him, so he assumes that she needs something from him again. The girl is very embarrassed and crumpled, but eventually asks if he really didn't recognize her. The young guy replies seriously that he doesn't recall her. He's in a big hurry to go about his business. It seems that the young man really didn't recognize the girl. He didn't seem to really want to see her and wanted to leave as soon as possible. She can't tell the police about today's attack because someone in her family will deal with it. She needs to find a place to hide. The girl is very embarrassed. Since he doesn't recognize her, it's understandable why he wants to leave as soon as possible. She finds a way out. The girl asks to buy her food because she has no money now. Then she will return it all. The main character seems to calm down easily when he hears such a request. He feels sorry for the girl. He agrees but warns that she'd better go home or to the police station as it's not safe here this late at night. Some time passes and the guys come to our hero's house, which he rents. The girl is surprised, assuming there is some kind of restaurant somewhere nearby. Well, it didn't turn out that way. In fact, our hero brought her to his house to feed her and cook dinner. Naturally, the girl doesn't think this guy is a bad person, but it seems a bit much for her. Moments later, the boys come to the entrance of the young lad's house. Then they go inside and the girl looks around, noting that the owner of the house has pretty good taste. After a couple minutes, the young girl sat down on a chair and waited. The young girl seemed a little nervous. Apparently, she had been walking in such high heels all day. Lin Mu noticed this and immediately realized that her legs must be hurting a lot, but she didn't complain about it. Seeing this, the young boy turns around and leaves the room, saying he'll be back soon. After a while, the main character returns to the room again, and the girl is shocked at what he has brought with him. It turns out that the young man brought her a basin of warm water for her to hold her feet in. That should make her feel better. Finally, the girl dipped her sore feet into the warm water. It relaxed her immediately. After a moment, the girl realized that she had forgotten to introduce herself. She corrected herself and said her name. Luo Bingyun. The black-haired kid smiled friendly and introduced himself in return. The young man tells the girl to rest, and in the meantime he will get busy cooking dinner. The young man seems to think she's usually a girl. It's pretty great to know someone as caring as Lin Mu. The main character had already finished cooking dinner and saw the girl's hungry look. She must be very hungry. The young girl immediately started making excuses and saying that it wasn't so she wouldn't look like a glutton. It turns out the black-haired kid even made slippers for her. It was very nice and thoughtful of him, so the girl appreciated the kind gesture. The young lad didn't think much about what he cooked and did what first came to mind. The girl assured him that everything is very tasty and appetizing looking. She is glad for such a show of care. The black-haired boy laughed sweetly, for he was pleased to hear such warm words to his address. The young girl chewed leisurely and wondered again if our hero really didn't remember her. But unfortunately, the young man really couldn't remember where he had seen Miss Luo before. Then, Miss Luo decides to give the guy a little hint and hints that they met in Nangu City, on an airplane. Hearing these words, the young man immediately remembers that he has seen this face before. The young girl was greatly surprised that our hero was so forgetful for she had not changed much since that time. Then the protagonist has a question. 
Why then was this defenseless girl being pursued by someone? The girl herself does not know the reason for this, but assumes that it is because of some problems and conflicts at work. After hearing this, Lin Mu is no longer going to ask the girl about it, for she must be uncomfortable. The young man tells Miss Lo to finish her meal, and after that they'll deal with the girl's sore leg. A couple minutes after the boys had eaten, our hero began to examine his guest's leg. He carefully and gently began rubbing the girl's leg. The redness was visible on it. The leg was a little swollen. When the young man rubbed the girl's leg so gently, it embarrassed her very much. A strong blush appeared on her cheeks. When the black-haired boy finished examining the girl's leg, he concluded that it was a simple sprain. But the problem was that this sprain was right on the girl's leg, which made things difficult. If there was no way to help her leg now, it would seriously affect her walking. Lin Mu could help her, but it would be painful. The young girl agreed to accept help from the kid and prepared herself for the pain, squeezing her eyes shut hard. But after a moment, the guy had already finished his work and Miss Luo didn't even feel anything. It felt like Lin Mu was a real doctor. The black-haired kid immediately started denying it since he's still a student. That's just more impressive. Moments later, the girl asks the protagonist for permission to occupy his bathroom because she can't go home like this. The young lad is naturally okay with this, but asks Miss Lo to wait a bit before doing so. The young man is going to bring the girl clean clothes to change into after her shower. Since our hero lives alone, he has no women's clothes, so he holds out clean clothes to his guest. The young girl was overjoyed that the young lad was so kind to her and agreed to help her. And so, before long, Miss Lo headed for the shower. The black-haired boy left his slippers by the door so the girl wouldn't slip later. When the protagonist gave all the things to the girl, he went to another room, leaving Miss Lo by herself. And so, when the young man entered the living room, he immediately began to ponder about the spiritual ginseng he had acquired today. But before using this miracle plant, our hero has to figure out how to use it. After a couple minutes, a knock was heard in the living room. It seemed to be the girl who had finished taking a shower. The girl had indeed already finished and changed into the shirt her boyfriend had given her. When the black-haired boy saw her in this shirt, he could not take his eyes off, because the girl really suited her. She thanked him and started to approach as she suddenly saw a box of ginseng on the table and wondered what it was. The young boy immediately explained that it was a medicinal herb from which he was going to make a medicine in the future. The girl was surprised when she heard that it was a medicinal herb. Did our hero really have some health problems? The young boy talked about how he has had a very weak body since he was a child, so he has lived on medication all his life. The girl said she knew some pretty good doctors and could recommend them to the guy for counseling. The guy politely refuses, saying that Chinese medicine will only make things worse, and Western doctors won't help here. The young boy says it's pretty late and not safe to get home alone, so he suggests she spend the night here in the guest room. The girl immediately agrees without hesitating for a second. She heads to the guest room and wishes the guy a good night. And so in such a friendly atmosphere, they wish each other good night, after which they go to bed. And so the night flew by. Night changed to morning. Dawn came. The sun slowly peeked out from behind the horizon. The young boy had just woken up and came out of his room. The slippers that stood against the wall caught his eye. There were two pairs of slippers here instead of one. Because of this, the main character thought that the girl must have already left without saying anything or saying goodbye. Suddenly, our hero heard a pleasant odor, but did not understand where it was coming from. When the young man entered the kitchen, he saw many dishes on the table that felt like they had been cooked recently. These dishes looked quite expensive, and there was a note beside one of them. As it turned out, these dishes were prepared by Miss Lo. She had some business to attend to, so she left so early. Her phone number was written at the end of the note. The protagonist was very pleased to receive such a gift in the morning, and he was truly grateful. The black-haired boy sat down at the table and immediately began to taste the delicious-smelling food. As soon as the young man took a bite, he came to marvel at how delicious it was. The young lad had no idea that the girl was so good at cooking. And so, right after the meal, our hero decided to waste no time and get busy creating the right medicine. The black-haired boy reached into a cupboard and pulled out the right cauldron. Moments later, the protagonist chopped up the desired plant and placed the cauldron of water on the stove, waiting for the water in it to start boiling. And so, when the water finally began to boil, the young lad added ginseng to it. Our hero can easily cope with this task, because you only need to boil on low heat. Meanwhile, in Manhattan, all the houses shone brightly. No one was asleep. Some man was shouting loudly that his daughter had almost been killed. He was seriously reprimanding his subordinates, for it was their fault. The subordinate stood in front of their boss and felt incredibly ashamed for failing to protect his daughter. They realized their guilt. 
but luckily the subordinates had already found the killer and the man behind it all. The boy handed his boss an envelope with the information. That was good, of course. But the man was more interested in who had helped his daughter. Luckily, the subordinates even had that information. The man carefully took a combination of information about the one who saved his daughter, that is, our hero. The man came to a shock when he read that the main character once died, but came back to life. The subordinates assured the boss that this information was accurate, because they got it straight from the hospital. After our hero woke up, he became taller and his appearance changed. As it turned out, his personality had also changed. The hospital told them that this was the first time such a miracle had ever happened in the history of medicine, and it couldn't help but surprise them. After a moment, the kid speculated that it might have something to do with Lin Mu losing his memory. Bing Yun's father couldn't understand how this kid met his daughter or where it was even. Five days ago, they flew on the same plane and then met on the day the girl was attacked. This time the boss had forgiven his subordinates for such an oversight, but it must not happen again from now on. And so, when the subordinates received their boss's forgiveness, they headed away from his office. Finally, the man was left to himself. All he could think about now was this incident and Lin Mu who had saved his daughter. Meanwhile, Lin Mu sat in his home and rested. By this time, it was late evening, and our hero went to the stove to see if his medicine was cooked. Luckily, the medicine was already prepared, and it seems to have been prepared correctly. The young lad began to pour the liquid into the crock, and as soon as he did, it immediately solidified. The protagonist has to do everything with his hands, as he has no chi in this world. He started twisting the ball. After a while, the young man made many such balls. Now, everything was ready. Finally, it was time to try it. Our hero did not boldly put the pill to his mouth. The black-haired boy closes his eyes, trying to feel if something is about to happen to him. It seems to have worked. Although the effect is a little weak, the quantity makes up for it. The protagonist is happy, because he realizes that with such large finances, nothing and no one will prevent him from rising to the top. Thus, the next day came. Our hero went to the university. The auditorium is filled with students. Black-haired kid sitting outside Tan Bay Bay doing something on his phone. As it turned out, the protagonist was checking the grade he got on his last exam. The girl noticed that his grades hadn't gone up much after he'd lost his memory and was laid up in the hospital. She made a joke about wanting to fall off the balcony and it made the young lad uncomfortable. A bitch on the other row remarked that after that incident, everyone around them was just talking about how handsome Lin Mu had become. The brunette Lee snorted unhappily and told her friend to ignore it because it was none of their business at all. The bitch reminds us that they're still engaged, which means our hero is her fiancé. He's also always hanging out with Tan Bay Bay. The girl irritably replied that she absolutely didn't care about those papers and wasn't going to waste her time on it. The weather outside the window was beautiful. The sun was shining all around. A fancy and expensive car was parked in the parking lot outside the university. Who did it belong to? The red car obviously stood out among all the others because it looked more expensive and luxurious. There was a girl in it. As it turned out, it was none other than Miss Lowe. She looked absolutely stunning. Unexpectedly, one of the classmates informed our hero that someone is looking for him. Moments later, a girl enters the auditorium and approaches the black-haired kid who didn't expect to see her here. The young girl is cute, smiling and giggling, since she gave him such a little surprise. The young lad doesn't understand how the girl knew that this is where he is. The girl unhappily recalled that our hero never called her back, so she had to look for him on her own. The main character got embarrassed and said that he had been busy the last few days, so he had completely forgotten about her. The girl is a little annoyed and points out that the young man didn't look busy when he was chatting with his girlfriend. The black-haired kid started making excuses that they had just gotten out of class and were discussing it. The girl didn't want to hear it. Instead, she suggested that the guy go out to dinner at her expense. She took the initiative as well. The young man politely refused her because today is his grandfather's birthday and he is obliged to be home. It is his 80th birthday. But the girl was not upset at all when she heard about this news. Instead, she wanted to go with her boyfriend. It wasn't the best idea because our hero's family is a bit odd and might not like her. Miss Lowe didn't seem to care at all as she kept asking to visit him. They say it's not a problem for her. After a couple minutes of such entreaties, the protagonist agreed, but he must have one more class first. The young girl agreed to wait for him and walked out of the auditorium. The young lad circled back and was pleased that no one seemed to pay much attention to it, but he was only imagining it because everyone around him was already whispering about Lin Mu having a girlfriend and such. Our hero quickly ran out of the classroom, hopefully avoiding these rumors while the other students whispered and shouted after him. Fortunately, the young man managed to escape from the classroom, and now he won't have to explain this situation to others. 
but suddenly his girlfriend approaches the kid and asks him to explain everything that just happened. The young man answers honestly about only seeing that girl twice and the rumors are lies. The protagonist told his girlfriend everything from beginning to end, from the airplane to the assault. Even if that was the case, why did this girl come to his university if they hadn't seen each other only twice? Maybe she'll thank him by marrying him too? The black-haired kid immediately began to deny it, because she is from a rich family and there is no way she will marry him. But Tang Bei Bei is not relenting. Why then did Miss Luo act so friendly, and the young man even agreed to take her into his home? The young boy couldn't understand why it bothered his girlfriend so much. The student got embarrassed and started to justify that she was worried, because beautiful girls are very skillful at lying. The protagonist reassured the student and said that Miss Lo couldn't fool him, and her friend was only worrying for nothing. Moments later, the young boy heads away to the auditorium, for class is about to begin. The girlfriend runs after him, keeps asking a million questions that never get answered. The day is slowly coming to an end, and a warm evening is coming. There are still students at the university. The auditorium is filled with students sitting in their seats, minding their own business. Suddenly, the girl slams the table loudly, getting her friend's attention. The girl Yara was discussing the fact that some stranger had just approached our hero and said she was going to come to his grandfather's birthday party. But the brunette didn't seem to care at all about where and by whom the protagonist would spend his time. Her friend was greatly surprised at such indifference. Some girl would come to visit her fiancé and she wouldn't even do anything. This did not concern the girl at all, for they were going to break off the engagement soon anyway. The girlfriend starts to object, because they haven't broken off the engagement yet, and it looks like a spit in her face. The girl tried to distract her friends from this and said that the teacher would be here soon, and they should close this topic and sit back down. Several hours passed and classes finally came to an end. Tired students streamed out of the university. The young lad had also already left the university and was heading out on his own, but he heard a car horn. A gorgeous red car, driven by a girl, stopped right in front of the young man. It was Miss Lowe. She asked if our hero had the skills to drive a car. The black-haired boy smiled and nodded immediately. She invited the young man to drive, for she did not know where his grandfather lived. It would be easier if he drove her. The young boy got behind the wheel without further ado, and moments later, the car started. The boys were calmly heading toward their destination, and the girl leaned forward. The young girl touched herself on her leg, in the place where she had sprained it last time. The main character noticed it immediately and thought that her leg was still hurting. The girl immediately calmed him down and assured him that everything was fine. She just has a little soreness from the heels. The girl refuses to wear regular shoes because her legs look much longer and prettier in heels. The black-haired kid confessed that he doesn't understand girls at all. Why do you have to work so hard for beauty? The young girl smiles sweetly and explains that she wouldn't wear those heels on a normal day. But today is an exception. The young boy fell silent when he heard this. In fact, he didn't understand anything and decided to keep silent. Some time passes and the guys finally arrive at our hero's mansion near which many cars are already parked. An elderly man comes out of the room and meets a black-haired kid. He seems glad to have him back. The protagonist kindly greets his uncle. After a moment, the man has a very logical question. Who is that girl next to the guy? The protagonist immediately introduces his girlfriend, explaining that he took her to his grandfather's birthday party. Hearing this, the man kindly invites the girl to come inside. Suddenly, the black-haired boy thought about something and looked up. The young man looked straight up at the roof of the building before shifting his gaze to the balconies. Miss Luo looked at Lin Mu when she saw that he had stopped. She was worried that he had something wrong. The young lad immediately came to his senses and assured her that everything was fine, then invited her inside. As soon as the guys went inside, they were immersed in a completely different atmosphere. The place was full of people who were lively chatting with each other. The young girl looked around carefully and noticed that Lin Mu had a rather large house. The two relatives of our hero looked at Miss Lo attentively and gazed into her face, for the girl reminded them of someone. Unexpectedly, one of the guests shouted out loudly when he found out that this girl was the Luo family's Miss Luo. The bearded man was immediately surprised when he heard about it, because he didn't understand how the protagonist and her could meet. Our hero's fiancé was also at this party, and she was looking intently at the unexpected guest. In the man's mind, there was a suggestion that the Lo family was planning to help the black-haired boy. The bearded man is worried that all his hard work will go down the drain, all because the Lo family will interfere. Auntie immediately greeted the young lad as soon as he entered the room. The woman inquired why the protagonist arrived home so late. Lin Mu instantly explained that he had classes at the university and came as quickly as he could. The woman began to greet their guest graciously, for she realized how much status this young lady had. 
They were glad to see her here. The young girl asked not to communicate so formally, for she came here as an ordinary friend of our hero. Regardless of the girl's reasons for showing up here, their family is immensely pleased by her presence at such an event. The black-haired boy wanted to see his grandfather as soon as possible, for he had never met him before today. The aunt realizes that the young man can't remember anything after the hospital. So, she explains that his grandfather has Alzheimer's and is now in his office upstairs. Hearing this, the young boy decides to head upstairs to see his grandfather. Miss Lowe goes with him. As soon as the guys leave, the bearded man immediately turns to the woman and asks what she was able to find out. Unfortunately, nothing could be found out because this girl is not as easy as it seems because you can't find any information on her. No one knew what connects this girl with the main character. But one thing they knew for sure, the guys are not in a relationship. The bearded man is greatly angered and disappointed by this. For now, it will be harder for them to do anything. At this time, the young boy had already gone up to his grandfather's office. There was an employee in the office who was looking after him. Just as the boys entered the office, the nurse was busy spoon-feeding the elderly man because he couldn't do it himself. Grandpa's gaze was fixed on one point. It seemed as if he didn't care about any of this. Suddenly, the elderly man grabbed the caregiver's wrist as she put a spoon in his mouth. The black-haired woman turned around and looked at our hero with a questioning look, as if asking what she should do. After a moment, the young boy allowed the woman to leave, for he wanted to talk to his grandfather in person. The nurse obediently complied with the request and left the office without further questions. After that, the main character walked over to his grandfather and sat down in front of him, wishing him a happy birthday. The young boy took his grandfather's hands in the hope that he would remember him. The elderly man looked very tired, but still managed to pronounce our hero's name. Moments later, Grandpa was also approached by Miss Lowe, who wished him a long life with a warm smile. The black-haired kid immediately explains that this girl is his girlfriend, whom he took with him to help her help celebrate her birthday. The elderly man didn't seem to mind it at all. On the contrary, he only smiled warmly. When our hero was about to pull back a little and remove his hand, his grandfather grabbed him tightly, preventing him from doing so. The young boy looked at his grandfather, who held his hand tightly and didn't want to let go. At this time, a servant entered the study and announced that the celebration was about to begin, so we should hurry up. The protagonist headed downstairs to scout out the situation, leaving Miss Lo to keep an eye on her grandfather. Waiting for him at the bottom was Xiao Yue, who had been standing here for quite some time. The black-haired kid didn't understand the purpose of her coming to this event. Her grandfather has instructed her to be here to represent their family. She's also to present a gift. Moments later, the girl's subordinate drops off the gift that Xiao Yue's family has prepared for our hero's grandfather. As a gift, the Xiao Yue family prepared a gorgeous flower-painted vase from the Yong Zhen period. It's very precious. As soon as they showed this vase, everyone present began to whisper and marvel at such a luxurious gift. The young lad politely tried to refuse the gift, for it was very expensive. The brunette reminded him that she was still his legal bride, so in the right to give such gifts. The young lad laughed at the fact that she started talking about engagement. She reminded me again that the engagement is their family's business, but she's still the official bride, so she has to give her future grandfather a gift. The protagonist looks at the girl with indifference, realizing that he has made a mistake. Our hero should have broken off the engagement earlier, then Xiao Yue wouldn't have had to come to the event. Upon hearing such news, everyone present began to whisper. No one understood why they wanted to break off the engagement. Auntie also heard about it, so she immediately went over to her nephew to find out the reason for it. Lin Mu explained that Xiao Yue thought he was a loser, which was why the young man had decided to break off the engagement. But since the girl's grandfather is against it, our hero decides to personally talk to him. The black-haired girl looks seriously at the young boy whose voice is filled with determination. Moments later, Miss Lo, who, as it turns out, has also prepared a gift for his grandfather, enters the conversation. It seems very awkward for our hero to accept such expensive gifts, but the girl holds out a small box. But our hero has no choice but to accept this gift. I wonder what is in the box. The young girl smiles sweetly. She can't wait to see the guy's reaction when he opens the box. A moment later, the black-haired boy opens the box and sees a beautiful wide ring there. A young boy is greatly surprised when he sees such a gift. At first, he is stunned. The girl adds that this ring is made of the best jade, Chiyue Yang. The brunette agrees that the jade is really not bad, but they also can't be sure that the ring is real. The young girl praises Xiao Yue's sharp eyesight, as she was able to determine the quality of the jade so easily. Since it's made of the finest jade, it's probably the real thing. No one would dare to deceive the Luo family, and since Miss Lo said so, the girl puts all doubts aside. 
Soon she congratulates our hero's grandfather on such an incredible gift. The black-haired boy smiled sweetly and slipped the box to his inside jacket pocket, then thanked the girl. Guy accepts the gift of the Dew family on behalf of his grandfather. He promises that he will come next time to talk about breaking off the engagement. The black-haired girl does not respond to this in any way, but only looks at our hero seriously. Suddenly, his aunt enters the conversation, saying that Lin Mu can't do such a reckless thing, because the engagement is his grandfather's decision. But the young boy keeps standing his ground. None of the guys want this engagement, so we should just break it off. Hearing such seriousness and determination in her nephew's voice, she stops arguing and agrees with him. A few more hours pass and finally the birthday party comes to an end. The girl takes note of Xiao Yue's incredible beauty and asks if the protagonist will have any regrets after breaking his engagement to such a beauty. But the young man doesn't care at all. Since the girl doesn't want to waste her time on him, her beauty and intelligence don't matter. The girl tries to change our hero's mind but all to no avail. He's not going to marry the girl. He is not the kind of man who will pursue something that does not belong to him, leaving behind what is at his fingertips. The young girl picks up on our hero's eloquence and it amuses her. Some time passes and finally the guys arrive on the scene. The young kid immediately gets out of the car and dials something on his cell phone. Moments later, the phone rings. As it turns out, the black-haired guy gives the girl his phone number and asks her to call if she needs help. The young girl is happy about such a step on the part of the protagonist, so she smiles sweetly and says goodbye to him. Moments later, Miss Lowe quickly leaves on her own business, leaving our hero alone. After that, the black-haired kid digs into the inside pocket of his jacket and searches for something. He reads a note from his grandfather. Turns out his grandfather doesn't have Alzheimer's. He acts this way because he doesn't want to mess with his relatives who have been fighting over the inheritance all these years. A young boy with sadness in his eyes reads this note while a realization slowly comes to him. Thus came the next day. Our hero arrived at the Dew family's resort where he had been invited. A black-haired kid walks up to a yacht, near which two guards stand and ask who it is and what he wants. The young boy quickly introduced himself and said that he had come here to talk to Grandpa Dew. Hearing this, the guard informs the boss via a small microphone that our hero has come alone. Having received permission in the headphones, the guards kindly let our hero in, for an elderly master is already waiting for him. The young boy nods and thanks the guards profusely. Moments later, the protagonist slowly walks up the gangway to board the ship. The young man walks aboard the ship, where he sees people relaxing in the pool. Soon he notices his grandfather and greets him. The man then says hello back and asks what topic he wanted to talk to him about. The young girlfriend decides not to beat around the bush and immediately starts talking, asking if the grandfather is close to his granddaughter. The elderly man becomes nervous for thinks something must have happened to his granddaughter. The young boy calms the grandfather down by explaining that the girl is not happy with their engagement. But the gray-haired old man does not take it seriously, because children tend to quarrel and it is not worth paying attention to it. Our hero continues to stand his ground, saying that if Xiao Yue doesn't want it, he won't waste her time and suggests just breaking off the engagement. Suddenly a man enters the conversation and tries to put our hero in his place, saying that he has no right to talk like that. But he is interrupted by an old man who shouts loudly and tells his subordinate to shut up. After that, a tense atmosphere hung in the air. Everyone fell silent when they saw Grandpa's anger. The gray-haired man once again questioned whether the protagonist really wanted to break the engagement. The young man once more repeated his wish for the breaking of the engagement. After that, they would be mere strangers to each other. Moments later, the man agrees to break the engagement. It seems it was easier than it seemed. The black-haired kid says he'll take the wine and this moment will not waste any more of their time. After a few seconds, the young boy turns around and heads away, saying goodbye to everyone present. The mustachioed man doesn't understand why the master allowed this to happen so calmly and easily, as it could lead to rumors about their family. But it seems that said Vlasov man does not care at all about the opinion of society, because it is thanks to him that their family has become what it is now. The mustachioed man explained that the Luo family was much stronger than the Lin family, so it would be more advantageous to marry Xiao Yue off to someone from the Luo family. But since the engagement is already broken, they may not hide it. Some time passed, and the young lad went downtown on his own business. Unexpectedly, the young man saw a woman he knew. It was his instructor at the university, Miss Song. The young man was very surprised at their sudden meeting, and immediately offered to help her with the packages. The woman didn't mind the help at all, and moments later handed the guy a heavy bag. Inside the transparent bag was a gift box, and our hero thought it was someone's birthday. The woman said it was her birthday, and she bought a cake to celebrate, but she will celebrate not alone, but with her neighbors. After a moment, 
the woman invited the protagonist to join them. The black-haired boy was greatly surprised at such an unexpected offer. Suddenly, someone called out to the woman. In front of them stood three men who were heading in their direction. The kid resented the woman celebrating her birthday in such a boring way and suggested she go along with him. But that didn't appeal to Miss Sleep at all, because she already had someone to celebrate with and politely declined. Then, the guy offers to bring a female friend along if she wants and reminds her that birthdays are very important in Korea. But it doesn't work on the woman, because she's Chinese and doesn't care about Korean customs. Moments later, one of the guards blocks the woman's path, not reacting in any way to her refusal. Miss Soon tries to find out what it all means and why the guy won't let her go quietly. The blonde man doesn't answer, only chuckles quietly and smirks as he looks at the uncomprehending woman. The guy has been looking for Miss Soon for a very long time, and he's angry that the woman can't just give him one chance. Blondie's not going to back down. He doesn't seem to understand the word no. He thinks the woman is dating this loser instead of him. But that has absolutely nothing to do with Lin Mu. The woman agrees that our hero is much better than that loser blonde guy. The guy rants about how much he cares about the girl and reminds her that if it wasn't for him, she wouldn't be here right now. The blonde man then addresses the main character, saying that the girl will leave him as soon as she doesn't need him. Miss Sung starts to defend herself and yells back, informing her that everything this guy has said is nothing but slander. But the boy smiles smugly, thinking he's right. The girl is going to dump Lin Mu at some point anyway. The girl warns Li Guanzhui one last time to shut up or else he will regret everything he just said. But the lad doesn't take the girl's words seriously because he's sure she can't beat him. Instead, he adds that he wants to touch her legs again. After a moment, the girl's patience runs out and she swings her leg at the guy with all her might, but he easily dodges the blow. The kid acts like he's mocking the girl and looking down on her. At this time, the black-haired kid was already surrounded by two of the scum's guards. Moments later, a bald guard starts a fight and swings his foot at the protagonist, deciding to finish him off quickly. But as we all remember, the young lad is not as easy as he looks. He keeps a close eye on the guard's punch. Due to his alertness, the young man easily dodges and strikes back at his assailant's face. The blow was so hard that the scumbag couldn't stand on his feet and collapsed to the ground. A couple seconds passed. Our hero had already switched to the second guard and showed him where he belonged. The young man easily overpowered the two men and knocked them to rest on the cold ground. The woman watching all this was greatly surprised and empathized with whether the young lad was injured. The black-haired boy smiles and says he's fine. He lies about how when he opened his eyes the two men were already on the floor. Someone must have saved him. Why, the boys quietly go about their business, but the woman is still surprised for she says she saw no one. But that doesn't matter now. The most important thing is that the young boy was left safe and sound. The bald man is still lying on the ground with no strength, but he lifts his head and wants to tell them who really did this to them. Our hero doesn't let that happen and steps on the man's foot, automatically gagging him. The woman wants to get out of here as soon as possible. Because of these scumbags, her mood is ruined. But the blonde man doesn't let it be that easy and stops them, because they just injured his subordinates. The woman gets on the defense and says it wasn't their fault, and if he wants revenge, he should find the professional who did it. Blondie doesn't care who did it. He wants to teach him a lesson. He says no one will save them this time. The black-haired boy focused and became more alert. He watched his opponent carefully. Miss Soane tried to talk the protagonist out of it, since the blonde had won many competitions under Taekwondo. The blonde, in turn, on the contrary, encourages our hero to enter into battle with him and teases him, calling him a loser. The young lad must accept this cancer, for otherwise he will lose his dignity. Moments later, the protagonist step forward, ready to start a fight and see what this creep can do. The blonde is glad our hero has accepted his challenge. Now they'll find out who's stronger. The young man wants to get this over with as soon as possible and see if this creep's words match his abilities. And then, a moment later, this badass quickly speeds up and heads for the young kid. After only a second, he jumps up high and swings his leg, ready to deliver the first blow. The woman watched anxiously as the fight quickly gained momentum. She was worried about our hero's health. The black-haired boy was as vigilant as possible for he immediately realized that his opponent did not look like a weakling at all. The protagonist manages to dodge such a strong blow at the last second. If the enemy had hit, it would have been very bad. But the blonde is not going to give up at all, and in the next instant, he prepares his second blow. A moment later, the opponent throws another leg kick, but our hero successfully blocks it. Blondin praises his opponent, as he was even able to block his turnaround kick. So what's the young lad going to do now? Does he have a plan? The woman anxiously watches this brutal fight and worries greatly for our hero. 
Li Guanzhui could calmly break through a board the size of a bowl. But then, how could the protagonist survive such an attack? Lin Mu was perfectly fine. In fact, he didn't expect his opponent to be this good. The woman marvels that the young boy can withstand all these attacks with such courage. When did he get so fit? The enemy did not wait for our hero to recover, and a moment later jumped high to strike. The black-haired boy with all his courage is ready to take such a heavy blow. He gathers all his strength. Blondin notices his opponent has two hands ready at once, and assumes he wants to grab his leg. The scumbag thinks he's figured out the protagonist, so he immediately comes up with another plan. And then, unexpectedly, this scoundrel changes his foot, preparing to strike with the other one. Our hero obviously didn't expect such a trap. The woman watching this tensed up a lot when she saw such an unexpected welcome from the guy. A moment later, the scoundrel took a swing of his leg with all his might, aiming it straight at the protagonist. But, unfortunately for him, the plan failed. For the young lad sharply and strongly grabbed him by the leg he was about to attack. The protagonist was more serious than ever. Now he was going to teach his enemy a lesson. The black-haired boy squeezed his opponent's leg with such force that a loud crunch of bones was heard a moment later. A moment later, there was a piteous scream from a guy who was unable to contain such pain. Our hero pathetically gave him advice not to do something he wasn't good enough at so as not to embarrass himself. He only made a fool of himself. Having said that, the guys headed away, leaving this loser alone lying on the ground and screaming in pain. The guys are going about their business and discussing what just happened. Miss Song did not expect this turn of events. It's hard to believe that a young lad has gotten so strong in just a couple months. But nevertheless, it's all true. The woman felt as if she was communicating with a completely different person. No matter how you looked at it, Lin Mu had become a better person. Afterwards, Miss Song adds that her neighbor is also pretty good at martial arts. The black-haired boy looked at the woman in surprise and realized that it was Zixi that Li Guangyu was talking about. It turns out that Zixi has been practicing since she was a child, so now she uses the sword as if it were an extension of her arm. Lin Mu wonders what such professionals do, but Miss Song doesn't know the answer to that question. Zixi leaves early in the morning and returns late at night. After a moment, the woman suggests that the young lad come inside and have some tea. Zixi is just home today. Unfortunately, the protagonist has to politely refuse such a tempting request because he still has plenty of things to do. After a moment, the young boy turns around and walks away before saying goodbye to the woman. The black-haired kid is calmly going about his business as he suddenly hears shouting and requests for someone there to stop. When the young man turns around, he sees some stranger running away holding a bag. Someone shouts and calls him a thief. This stranger runs fast, skirting around crowds of people while being shouted after and asked to stop. The protagonist observes all this with curiosity, but decides not to interfere to avoid unnecessary problems. And then, moments later, a police car arrives on the scene and breaks sharply beside this thief. Soon, a policewoman gets out of the car and shouts after the thief, telling him to stop because the police have arrived. But as expected, the stranger doesn't listen to anyone and keeps running, causing him to slip on something. He tried to jump the fence but slipped and fell face first onto the pavement, dropping the stolen bag. At this time, the policewoman wasted no time and deftly jumped over the fence, catching up with the criminal. Resistance is futile. The thief is caught off guard and the policewoman is already preparing to apprehend him and take him to the station. But the man doesn't seem to just and isn't about to give up. He clenches his teeth irritably. Moments later from his pocket, the stranger pulls out a knife, preparing to defend himself against the policewoman to the last, as long as he doesn't go to jail. This scumbag tries to stab the girl, but she deftly dodges, reminding him that assaulting a police officer is a serious offense. The thief continues to stand his ground, unwilling to give up. As long as he is free, he can do whatever he wants. If the thief voluntarily surrenders, the girl will turn a blind eye to the fact that he tried to attack her. The man still has a chance, but the man is adamant in his judgment. He picks up the bag from the ground and is about to confront the guardian of order. In such a case, the girl has no choice but to fulfill her honorable duty. A moment later, the girl headed straight for the thief, who started waving his knife around in a panic in a pathetic attempt to defend himself. The policewoman is not going to listen to the thief's orders. She boldly approaches him and grabs his wrist with a knife in her hand. And in a couple of seconds, this scumbag is pinned to the pavement. He had a chance, but he didn't take it. So now he will be punished to the fullest. The policewoman had done her job, and now all she had to do was wait for backup. Suddenly, from behind, a stranger approached the policewoman, who had momentarily let her guard down and kicked her in the back. The young girl felt a sharp pain and immediately realized that something was wrong here. 
So, after only a moment, she ducked and bounced away from the lying and immobilized thief. As it turned out, it was his accomplices who had come. Now there were three of them in total, and the policewoman was still alone. One of the badasses says that some things you have to turn a blind eye to, so the girl shouldn't have gotten involved. These mutts are about to leave, but the girl is not afraid. She can't just let them go because she's a police officer. One of the guys gets really annoyed by this, and he can no longer contain his emotions and quickly snaps. This scumbag runs up to the girl and throws a punch, but she dodges, causing her to lose her balance and almost fall. Because of this, the policewoman finds herself in a desperate situation. She has nowhere to dodge because she is pinned against the wall. A terrible thing could happen now because she's unarmed, and this scumbag has a knife. I think he's really going to kill her. Suddenly, someone's hand grabbed the bastard, which saved the unfortunate policewoman from being stabbed. As it turned out, it was our hero who asked the guys to forgive the policewoman because all people make mistakes. The bald guy mulls it over and, for once, decides to forgive the policewoman, but warns her to stay out of other people's business. The young lad is very happy that these scumbags have finally gone and left them alone. But when the young man shifts his gaze to his hands, he sees the officer handcuffing them. What's the reason? The protagonist couldn't understand why the officer handcuffed him, but it's up to him to know what he's done. The black-haired kid doesn't understand why he was arrested after all he was just saving a cop's life. But the girl does not believe at all that our hero is unfamiliar with these criminals. It's all too suspicious. The protagonist sees them for the first time, but the policewoman doesn't believe it. Why then did they listen to him so easily? The young lad explained that they couldn't have beaten his fight, so they decided to leave peacefully. The girl marveled that this stranger was capable of defeating three robbers. Now they would go to the station and write a report. Now it is very bad timing, because our hero has a lot of unfulfilled cases and asks to let him go but the officer is adamant. By this time, another police car pulls up and a police officer gets out. The man thinks the officer has already caught the robber and doesn't need help. But the girl explained that this was not a robber and he should be taken to the station, as he might be an acquaintance of theirs. Upon hearing this, a police officer pushes the protagonist into a car and asks if Officer Wang will go back to the office. The girl explained that she unfortunately twisted her ankle, so she asks her co-worker to give her a hand. The policeman immediately agrees to help his colleague, slams the car shut, and runs up to the girl. A man helps his co-worker to her car, noting that she is rather clumsy. They have a cute giggle. Suddenly, the girl's eyes go wide with surprise. How is this even possible? When she looked inside the car, our hero was not there. Instead, there were only unbuttoned handcuffs on the seat. At this time, the young lad was going about his business with a quick stride, and the policewoman was still in a stupor. The black-haired boy had already regretted a million times that he had intervened in this situation. He should have just walked on by. Suddenly, someone called out to our hero. It turned out to be Miss Song, but the young man thought she should be home now. The woman forgot to buy some condiments, so she goes back to get them. She again invites the young man to take a walk together to introduce him to Zixi. In the end, the young boy has no choice but to agree. This way he can escape the police for a while. Some time passes and Miss Song brings the black-haired boy to her house where Zixi is already waiting for them. Zixi praised her friend for bringing such a fine young man to visit them. She inquired about his name. The other girls seemed to be a little softer. She asked Zixi to be less assertive so as not to scare our hero away. The young boy smiled sweetly and greeted the girls. The girls can't wait to meet the guest. Miss Song introduces the boy who is her student, Lin Mu. Zixi assumes that this young man is the woman's favorite since she deigns to invite him to her home. The woman explained that the black-haired kid had helped her teach Li Guangzhu a lesson, so she wanted to thank him with dinner. The brunette was worried when she heard that the scumbag was up to his bad deeds again. The bright girl immediately concluded that Lin Mu had some pretty good fighting skills since he was able to teach a bad guy like Li Guangzhu a lesson. The young boy sat down next to the girl and said that he was still growing up to her fighting skills. The girl immediately realized that her friend had already told the kid about her fighting skills and abilities. Then, the girl informs us that Meng Xuan is now gone abroad, so our hero can move in with the girls. The black-haired kid tries to politely decline, since he's already found a place to live. The girl keeps insisting they say he can take the room downstairs and they will live upstairs and if they need help, they will turn to the guy. Miss Song, who had heard their conversation, also joined in and started begging the young man. This way, they could help each other. In the end, the young lad could not resist for long and agreed to such a venture, but before they lived together, they must discuss some rules. The second floor is for girls only, and it is forbidden to go in there without permission. The young man must clean up after himself. The boys will eat together, but the dishes will be washed by the boy. After a moment, 
it's a little stressful for the guy because he doesn't realize if there will be many more of these rules. Some time passes and the brunette finishes her list of rules. Now they can celebrate, and before long, everyone is having fun and joking around, starting their fun celebration in honor of a friend's birthday. Some time passed and our hero and his girls came back after shopping. He complained about how much stuff they had bought. The main character finally finished stuffing all those bags and stuff into the trunk. Suddenly, someone in the distance called out to the black-haired boy, and he naturally turned around. As it turned out, it was the same policewoman who had earlier detained the guy, but he escaped. She ordered him to put handcuffs on. The young lad was clearly not eager to fulfill her request, as he didn't think he was guilty of anything. After a moment, the young man's face fills with wonder, for he sees something strange in the distance. The policewoman immediately turns around to see what caused the protagonist to be so surprised. But, as it turned out, it was just our hero's usual ploy to escape. A distraction, so to speak. When the girl turned around, the young boy was already riding away from her on his bicycle, while she threateningly shouted threats at him. Moments later, the police began chasing a young kid who was chasing at full force on a bicycle. At this time, Miss Sleep came in, who was greatly surprised when she realized that she couldn't find our hero anywhere. Meanwhile, there was a cute couple innocently strolling along the sidewalk, having a fun discussion about something. Suddenly, a hero on a bicycle whizzed right by them. The girl gave a startled look at what it had just been, and while she did, her ice cream fell to the ground. The police still continued to chase the protagonist, who just as surely didn't want to give up and kept driving away. Pedestrians were surprised to see a police car chasing a cyclist. It looked quite strange. It seems the black-haired kid was in serious trouble because the women didn't want to fall behind. If things continue at this pace, the bike tires just won't hold up. The young man urgently needs to come up with a plan to escape. Suddenly, he notices a turn in an alley and decides to use it. The police car slows down a bit but also pulls into this small alley. The policewoman smiles slyly as she is determined to catch this fugitive. He can't escape. The young lad relaxed and got off his bike, for he thought he had gotten away from that schizo policewoman. But suddenly, the familiar handcuffs snap back on our hero's wrists. The policewoman caught up with him. The young boy is really annoyed. All the girl does all day is chase after him. What does she want? The policewoman must do her duty and bring the young man to the station since he escaped last time. The black-haired kid hasn't done anything illegal. He decides to try that trick again and distract the girl by saying there's a robbery going on. The girl thinks it's a ruse, but our hero convinces her otherwise. They say there's already a whole crowd gathered there. Suddenly, the girl hears some screams and noise, so she starts to believe the main character. After a moment, she goes to check what's going on and tells the guy to stand peacefully and wait for her. But of course, the young men are not going to just stand there and wait, so immediately breaks the handcuffs and frees himself. He hears voices about a policewoman asking to release a hostage. This gets our hero's attention. It seems the robber has taken a hostage. Since the young man has never seen such a wound, he wants to see it in person. A huge crowd of people gathered around the robber and watched the whole thing in horror. The perpetrator threatened to shoot a policeman in the head. The hostage was a little girl, but the policewoman had switched places with her and was at a disadvantage herself. The protagonist watches carefully and notices that the policewoman has a really kind heart. The perpetrator put a gun to the girl's temple, threatening to shoot her. He had no other choice. The perp sets conditions. He tells everyone to leave and get his car ready for him to escape, or he'll kill that pathetic cop. The black-haired boy sighs heavily, complaining that leaving without trouble apparently won't work. Moments later, the young man falls out of the crowd right onto the floor, then attracts everyone's attention. Afterward, he immediately stands up and fixes his hair to make you look normal. The officer yells loudly and tells him to leave because it's very dangerous here and he has to save his life. The protagonist tries to contact this criminal by saying that he has always been a loyal fan. One woman in the crowd started to get indignant because she noticed that this scoundrel stole her bag, but our hero needed it. The black-haired kid starts telling a story about how he always wanted to be like Brother Lan. He complained about this policewoman who chased him around for an hour. The policewoman was angry at Lin Mu for saying that. She was right about him being the ultimate criminal. The young boy quickly shuts her up and tells her not to get involved in their conversation. He shows his disrespect for her. The man asks to stop talking nonsense. He needs to get out of here first, so he asks Lin Mu to get him a car, and after that they can't talk. Then. The young man pretends to follow a police car that was parked not far away. Suddenly, a young kid yells about a sniper targeting them and points his finger somewhere in the distance. This immediately scares the criminal, and he starts looking around to see where to expect the threat from. Well, when the scumbag looks at the place our hero showed him, 
He doesn't see anyone there. Looks like the guy just tricked him. Seizing the moment, the protagonist throws the bag he took from a passing girl right in the direction of the criminal. The young man tosses the bag directly at the gun that was in the man's hand. The bag knocks the gun away and changes its course. Suddenly, there's a misfire. The perpetrator tries to shoot, but nothing happens. The young lad deftly grabs the criminal by the arm and immobilizes him. He then elbows him with a stick, freeing the policewoman from the scumbag's grip. Immediately afterward, the perpetrator begins to lose his balance and it feels as if the ground is slipping from under his feet. Thus, the young lad manages to get this scumbag to the ground and twist his arm so he won't do anything about it. Now everyone's safe, and the cop is getting ready to arrest the creep. At this point, our hero asks the officer to give the purse to the woman he borrowed it from. His hands are full. The policewoman complies with the request without question, putting the one that fell out of her when she fell into her purse. After that, Backup arrives and two cops take this scumbag into a car to arrest him and take him to the station. An hour or so passes, and finally the black-haired kid goes home with peace of mind. There, he is immediately met by a concerned woman, who doesn't understand where he has been all day and where he has disappeared to. She immediately wonders what happened, but the young man doesn't want to bring it up. He is very unlucky, but the woman still tries to find out what happened, because they were very worried. The guy explains that it was just an accident. A young man enters the living room and asks what the girls are watching. It's Yao Xianxian's concert, which Zixi really wants to go to. But tickets are very hard to get. The girl asks if the guy is going to apologize for dumping them like that without warning. The black-haired kid calms her down and informs her that he will definitely redeem himself. Suddenly, our hero urgently needed to leave to call someone so he stepped away. The girls were very worried for he had just returned home and he had some trouble again. Sometimes it seemed to the girls that Lin Mu was not a student at all, but an adult and mature man. He seemed very masculine for his age. Zixi found many positive traits in the main character, not just masculinity. After a while, Lin Mu returns to the living room and asks if the girls have time to go to the coveted concert in three days. The girl immediately jumps up, overjoyed, because she has long dreamed of going to Yao Xianxian's concert. Where did the guy get the tickets? The protagonist did not reveal the secret answer that he has connections. If no one minds, they can go to the concert in three days. Some time passed and the guys went out for a snack. Everyone was already tired and hungry, and so the boys entered the cafeteria, but were greatly surprised for the place was very quiet today. The young boy was greatly surprised to see such an attractive girl in the cafeteria. What is she doing here today? The black-haired girl averted her gaze and seemed to notice our hero as well. Suddenly, the main character saw a bright blue light in the girl's chest and immediately realized what it was. The young lad immediately guessed that this girl was also a cultivator. Zixi noticed the young man watching this attractive girl who seems to be a rather calm person. Suddenly, the girl stepped on the kid's foot with all her might and he screamed. The black-haired boy didn't understand why he had received such an unexpected blow. She told him not to look so intently at that girl and rather go get them something to eat for they were starving. Right after that, our hero started to recognize the girls, if they knew that brunette stranger. But unfortunately, no one knew her, not even the instructor. The boy was saddened by this. The woman began teasing the young man, saying that he seemed to have fallen in love at first sight. The protagonist immediately began to deny it, and justifying his interest by the fact that the girl seems very familiar to him. Hearing such a boring answer, the women only unhappily clucked her tongue. Our hero tried to soften the girls up a bit and reminded them that he had tickets for front row seats. The girls, so be it, forgive the kid and get their tickets. The woman forgives our hero for abandoning them last time and leaving without warning. She says she will take the boys to the concert tomorrow after school. The next day comes. The music is playing loudly in the room. The hall is completely filled with people who are in anticipation of the concert. The girls make their way inside. They are still surprised that Lin Mu managed to get them such fancy seats. It feels like there are over 1,000 police officers patrolling just for the concert. But so many people are here. But it was quite expected since Yao Xianxian is one of the most popular singers. The black-haired boy was a little surprised at this fact, for he could not even think of such a thing. And here, not a few minutes later, the long-awaited singer comes on stage all around shining, and the whole stage is illuminated with footlights. The girl stands confidently on stage and greets all her audience. She sincerely thanks them for the tickets they bought. The crowd is already excited for the start of the concert. Everyone is shouting loudly and cheering the appearance of their favorite star. It's only because of her fans that she's here today. So she wants to dedicate this song to everyone who supports her. And then, just moments later, the singer starts the concert with a song. 
Descendant of True Love. Thus, 03. Time flies by quickly, but the next part of the performance promises to be a lot of fun. The girl reports that she wants to invite someone from the audience to help her with her performance. After a moment, the girl asks the organizers to turn on the lights. She will now randomly select a lucky winner. Zixi wants to get on stage incredibly badly and shouts loudly, waving her hands. She doesn't want to miss this chance. The light is already very close to the girl and heading in her direction. Hope appears in her eyes. Moments later, the singer tells the lights to stop. Now we find out who was the lucky one. The light stopped on our hero, and the singer asked him to go on stage. The young man in no way expected such a turn of events. The singer graciously greeted our hero and waited eagerly to get up on stage. Zixi was a little hurt that she didn't get to join her idol on stage, but at the same time, she was happy for her acquaintance. The main character didn't seem to be burning to get up on stage, but since he's a lucky guy, he has to take the chance. The young boy felt a little embarrassed at the thought, for he was well aware that he could not sing. The girl began to tease the young man and said that if he did not go on stage now, he would badly set up the singer. But the young lad didn't seem to care about that at all. After all, it was his decision. The girl turned to the young man and asked if he was very shy so he couldn't come on stage to her. Lin Mu recognized his shyness and told the singer to give such a wonderful opportunity to someone else. Hearing this, everyone in the hall began to cheer and applaud our hero because he said very beautiful words. The singer was not at all upset by the rejections and agreed to give someone else the opportunity. A couple seconds later, the light shone on someone else in the room. It was a man. Moments later, it was the lucky guy who got up on stage and sang the song along with his idol. When they finished the performance, they hugged each other tightly. The fan was madly happy about such an opportunity, and the girl thanked him for his support. That's how the concert came to an end. Everyone applauded loudly and did not want to leave, but it was time. The guys were going home. Everyone was filled with energy after the concert because it was really cool, but Zixi was a little upset that she didn't get a chance to sing with her idol. Suddenly, two men appeared behind our hero's back and called out to him, and he turned around. It was the guards who informed the protagonist that their mistress wanted to see him. The black-haired boy didn't immediately understand who he was talking about, so he asked again. It turns out that Yao Xianxian wanted to see him. But why? The young boy was greatly surprised by such a sharp desire on the part of the popular star. In the end, Lin Mu agreed and told the girls to leave. Later, he would catch a cab and return home. The instructor had no problem letting the kid go and told him to be alert. And his girlfriend pipped him again and asked him not to forget about them after meeting the singer. And so, when our hero was alone, he asked the guards to take them to his mistress. Five minutes had passed and the young lad had already arrived at the right door, which was open. When the young man opened the door, he found the girl, who was just changing her clothes. She was in her underwear. The young boy was shocked by what he saw and fell into a stupor. He felt embarrassed that he had caught the girl like that. The protagonist immediately left the room and closed the door tightly behind him, apologizing along the way. The brunette assured him that everything was fine. She didn't feel awkward at all. Turns out, she'd thought it was a servant. She invited the lad in, for she had already changed her clothes. A black-haired boy entered the room and inquired for what purpose the girl had called him. As it turned out, the young lady was very curious as to why the young man refused to go on stage. The protagonist did not immediately answer her question, but asked to eat more modestly, for he is a young man in the prime of his life. The brunette was thoroughly amused by this, and she smirked quietly. The young lad wasn't going to waste much time on this, so he turned around and headed for the exit. But the girl didn't let him just walk away. She asked the guy to wait and quickly got up, then headed towards him. She walked briskly toward the boy. Her heels clacked on the floor. When she approached him, she gave him a quick peck on the lips. The young man was clearly not expecting it. The young boy was stunned by such an unexpected and sudden action of the girl. He did not know how to react. Immediately after that, the singer pulled away. The young man thought that something was wrong with the girl and she might be feeling ill, but as it turned out it was just a normal way of stopping the guy to chat with him a little longer. But the black-haired kid understood what they could talk about, since he was a nobody and the girl was a celebrity. She tells him that Lin Mu is the first man to turn her down. Before that, no man had ever peppered her, no matter what she asked. The protagonist undeniably recognized the girl's attractiveness, but reported that not every man would buy it. That's why our hero was interested in the singer. It really hurt her self-esteem. The kid apologized if he somehow hurt her self-esteem. He's still embarrassed. After that, the young man turned around and headed for the exit, because there was nothing to discuss. The young girl followed his gaze with curiosity. She was studying him. The black-haired kid went to the bathroom to wash his face. He asked to get rid of the lipstick residue, 
or there's no way he'll be able to explain it if he's suddenly caught. The young man had to hurry home because if he did not return soon, the neighbor would be angry with him. To get home quickly, our hero decides to call a cab. He goes outside. Suddenly, behind his back, the young boy feels someone's presence. There is some stranger in a cloak standing behind him, telling him to turn around so that everything will go smoothly and quietly. The protagonist turned around and put his hands in the air. He wanted to know information about why they wanted to kill him and who sent this guy. Under normal circumstances, a murderer told the truth to a man who was about to die. But as he saw the young man's face, it discouraged all desire. A moment later, sharp claw-like blades appeared between the stranger's fingers. The stranger was quickly approaching our hero to finish what he had started and finish him off. The protagonist immediately realized that the stranger was using a throwing knife against him. And so, as the killer threw them at the kid, the kid caught them in one deft movement. The black-haired kid caught the knives and continued the conversation as if nothing had happened, trying to find out who had sent an assassin after him. The stranger realized he couldn't kill the young man now, so he promised to come back for him later. The young lad was greatly disappointed that the stranger was going to leave without saying anything. After a moment, he took aim and hurled the knives at our hero. The weapon flew with a ringing whistle, cutting through the wind. One of the throwing knives stabbed into the ground right in front of the young boy's feet. The stranger threatened the young man with reprisal if he took another step. Then, the black-haired kid decided to let the stranger go, telling him to come back when he was 100% sure of himself. The young boy looked at him silently and wondered who could have ordered such a tough mercenary. The killer wasn't fighting at full strength. The young man wasn't even sure he could handle him alone. The protagonist decides not to dwell on it now. His main goal at the moment is to become stronger. When the stranger disappeared around the corner, our hero calmly went to his home, where his girlfriends were already waiting for him. Lin Mu puzzles over why he's attracting attention to kill, even though he's acting as carefully as possible. Unexpectedly, but the hero felt some strange feeling that made all the cells of the body tense up. The young man sensed that this something was coming from the girl in front of him. As it turned out, the brunette also recognized our hero as that guy from the cafeteria. Suddenly, something strange began to happen to the girl. Her whole body was on pins and needles. She didn't understand why her frosty chi was so aroused and what caused such a reaction. Was it related to this strange guy? A young boy saw that the girl wasn't feeling well, so he approached to inquire about her well-being. The protagonist took the girl by the shoulder and wondered if he should risk asking about Chi, but just a moment later, the brunette jerked her hand away and pulled away from the guy. She screamed and tried to find out what he wanted from her. Our hero tried to be friendly and explained that they attend the same university, but the brunette wouldn't even listen to him, and a moment later she was running away. The young lad couldn't afford to let this mysterious stranger go so easily, for he needs to get to the bottom of this. That's why the young man started to catch up with the fugitive, he wanted to ask her a question. Suddenly, the girl just started floating and flying up into the air. The black-haired kid went into a stupor when she saw this. The protagonist immediately realized that it was Ching Tsung. A moment later, the girl was already hidden on the roofs of buildings. The boy noticed that her movements were graceful, which meant that she was practicing. But even so, our hero is not going to give up and continues his pursuit. The young lad chased this stranger for two whole hours, but finally lost her. The young man tried to catch his breath, in parallel looking around and trying to figure out where he had run to. Suddenly, the black-haired boy heard a bell ringing. When he turned around, he saw a huge, luxurious temple behind him. Without any hesitation, the young man decided to go inside and take a look at it in person. The place was full of people, each asking for blessings and help from the higher powers. Suddenly, the young lad felt an enormous amount of chi emanating from within this temple. The protagonist was desperately trying to figure out what this place was as he suddenly saw some man. In the center of the empty room sat an elderly man who radiated the golden aura of a Buddhist. Our hero immediately noticed the aura around the old man, and at first couldn't even believe his eyes. The black-haired boy watched the stranger's every move carefully. He didn't realize how the old man was right in front of him, though he didn't take his eyes off him. The man asked what he could do to help this guy, since he had been standing there for an hour. Linmu deflected apologized, explaining that he was lost in thought. The young lad immediately realized that this kind monk had the aura of a non-mortal. Starry calmed him down and explained that he had come up to help, for he felt that the young man really had a good heart. He called him to follow him. The black-haired boy immediately followed his grandfather, eager to find answers to his questions. Lin Mu inquired what this place was all about. It turned out to be the place where the old man meditates for Buddhist enlightenment. The protagonist saw a hovering statue in front of him. It greeted the man with words about Amitabha Budu, 
The protagonist was surprised to realize that a monk was cultivating here. The man looked in amazement before him. He realized that he was seeing before him the real face of the legendary Buddha. Buddha told the guy that he had heavy sins on his soul. He offered him a set of techniques in cultivation. The protagonist thanked the Buddha with very great enthusiasm. An enlightened deity held out his hands to the protagonist and told him he would get something. A very bright beam struck the main character's head. He felt something enter him. The teacher thought to himself that he had not expected the Buddha to bestow great power on the young man. The old man served his hands in prayer and pronounced the blessing with the words about Amitabha Budu. The next day, the main character woke up in the house. The sun was already high. The guy jumped up abruptly in bed. He was still wearing yesterday's clothes. The young man was surprised. At first, he even thought that everything that had happened to him had been a dream. The guy put his hand to his head and felt pain. He realized that the pain came from knowledge and spiritual energy. The protagonist was walking around the yard and was surprised to think to himself that he had been in this place for a whole night. The teacher prayerfully ministered his hands and greeted the young man. The boy bowed to the grandmaster and thanked him for the gift. The old man told the protagonist that kindness has no limits. He wished the guy to cherish the knowledge he received from Buddha. The protagonist very humbly told his interlocutor that he had learned a great deal. At noon, the guy arrived at Dunay University. The lecturer in the lecture was talking about derivatives. The boy thought to himself that the temple he was in was known for its seals. They ward off bad luck. The protagonist thought with a smile that kindness and respect for everyone was not gratuitous. The protagonist thought to himself that he still didn't have enough spiritual energy for the new technique. The guy thought to himself cheerfully that the technique would still come in handy for him. The protagonist, sitting in the audience, decided happily to himself that he had gotten to the spirit accumulation stage faster than he had expected. The guy decided happily that thanks to the chewy energy he had when he was reborn, he didn't need to exert any effort to pass the realm of foundation building. The student thought to himself that after receiving the technique, he had immediately jumped to the spirit accumulation stage. There were several stages in the fusion realm. First, the spirit accumulation stage began. Then came the Xi'an Tian stage and then the deep connection stage. The guy thought to himself that when one passed to the spirit stage, he had already become several times stronger than he was at the peak of the foundation formation realm. The protagonist rejoiced at his accomplishments. He laughed to himself. The student realized just in time. He had forgotten he was in a class at the university. The teacher asked Lin Mu sternly, did his subject seem funny to him? The guy apologized to the teacher. A student was walking down the street. Annoyed, he banged his hand against the wall with all his might. Lin Mu told his own self sternly that he was very forgetful. He wouldn't be able to recover the name of the strongest cultivator if he rejoiced in every little thing. Suddenly, the protagonist is hit by a very strong and vivid feeling. Lin Mu looked sideways at the girl. He told himself that it was her. The main character looked closer. He realized that he saw a girl with black hair and wearing a long dress. Lin Mu realized that he had reached the spirit gathering stage. As a result, he began to sense the girl's presence from a great distance. There was something wrong with her, and he decided to find out everything this time. The girl looked at the guy and asked grudgingly, Who was he? The protagonist said his name and asked what the name of his interlocutor was. The girl said her name was Ji Ching Lan. Lin Mu smilingly suggested to his new acquaintance to find out why their qi energies were reacting very strangely to each other. Ji told the guy that he was as ignorant as herself. The girl said it would be bad if things continued like this. The girlfriend suggested the guy go to quiet place. They can check out what makes their chai react that way. Half an hour later, the protagonist and his new acquaintance found themselves in a deep forest. Lin Mu asked the girl what they should do now. The girlfriend replied unhappily that she didn't know herself. The guy sat down on the ground. He had the girl connect their chi and see what happens. Ji was excited about this idea. She agreed with the guy with a smile. Lin sat across from his girlfriend. They closed their eyes and held each other's hands. The guy told the girl to focus on her breathing. People sat in deep meditation. The guy felt their chi interacting much more strongly. The girl felt that her icy chi was now much clearer than usual. The main character realized that the girl's chi was much purer. He has the same situation. The guy couldn't figure out what technique his girlfriend was practicing. He felt something cool in her. People stopped meditating. Lin told his girlfriend that their chai was now purer. Ji said with surprise to the guy, her frosty chi now seemed very strong. The protagonist enthusiastically told his girlfriend that they would both benefit more if they continued. He added that something more was in store for them. The girl looked at the main character and said that they could try again. She asked that the guy let out more chi this time. 
People put their hands on each other, the girl said to start. A bluish energy began to rage between the hands of the Linya and his new acquaintance. Lin Mu sat in front of his girlfriend with his eyes closed. He was immersed in meditation. Ji was in a meditative state. She continued to exchange energy with her friend. People sat in meditation for an hour. They were silent and motionless. Energy traveled between Lin and his girlfriend. They touched each other tightly with their palms. Eventually, the protagonist and his new acquaintance were able to move to another realm. Sitting in another dimension, the main character felt that the chi in that place was very dense. He could feel everything that was happening around him. The boy came to his senses and opened his eyes. He was a little startled and shy. Lin saw a naked girl beside him. Ji felt a refreshing feeling around her. The protagonist turned his head sharply to the side. He told himself that he hadn't seen anything. The girlfriend came to her senses. She turned her head to the side unhappily and glared at the guy. Ji was very much startled and shy. She realized that there was a naked guy sitting next to her. The girl was angry. She yelled very loudly that her new friend was a pervert. Ji, very angry, knocked the main character's swinging hand on his face. Lin Mu was very much amazed and surprised. He realized that all of this was really happening to him. The guy excitedly asked the girl to wake up. He explained to her that it was all an illusion. Ji came to her senses. She said fearfully that everything seemed so real to her. The protagonist told his girlfriend that because of the chai fusion. They were able to sense the divine consciousness beforehand. Ji felt embarrassed. She asked the guy if it was because of the fusion of Chi'i. Lin said seriously to the girl that Chi fusion has three stages. Divine consciousness is created after reaching the divine territory. The guy explained to his girlfriend that due to divine consciousness, they were suddenly naked. Lin thought pro his own cultivation knowledge. He realized that all of this was definitely divine consciousness. Ji asked the main character his name again. The guy confirmed that his name was Lin Mu. Girlfriend shyly asked the main character if he had a girlfriend. Lin Mu glanced at his interlocutor. He wondered to her why she was asking. Ji glanced at the guy and demanded sternly that he answer. Lin Mu said fearfully to his new girlfriend that he didn't have a girlfriend. The girl sternly asked the guy if he was telling her the truth. Lin Mu replied to the girl that he would not lie to her. Ji angrily told the protagonist that if he deceived her, he wouldn't leave here. The protagonist asked the girl why she was asking about it. Ji told her about her grandfather's words. The old man told her that she should marry someone to whom she would give her body. If she couldn't marry such a guy, she would have to kill him. Lin Mu said in a soothing voice to the interlocutor that her grandfather was completely right. The main character asked the girl excitedly how she wanted to marry him if she didn't give him her body. Ji angrily yelled at the guy that he should take responsibility for her. She explained that the guy saw her body and took her innocence. The interlocutor tried to justify himself. Lin said soothingly to his girlfriend that it was all an illusion that the divine consciousness had created. Ji looked at her friend sternly and said that what he saw through divine consciousness was more real than what he sees with his eyes. The companion explained to the guy that their family also had a master of divine territory. She saw the notes left behind. The guy realized that he couldn't fool his girlfriend. The girl said grudgingly to the guy that he now had to be sure to marry her. Lin Mu told a serious girlfriend that marriage is a very serious thing. He warned her that they might not be right for each other. Ji began to tell the protagonist with a clever look the wisdom her grandfather had told her. The boy told the interviewer that her grandfather had taught her many things. He asked what else the old man had told her. Ji remembered her grandfather telling her not to get married too soon. She had to wait until graduation. Lin thought happily to himself that the girlfriend might insist that they get married today. Ji Doe disappeared in the middle of the forest. The protagonist was returning home by himself. He said to himself that girls had become very frivolous. The guy thought worldly problems were annoying him. He decided to reach the stage of original peace. Suddenly, the protagonist heard a noise behind him. He realized that someone was running after him. A strange guy ran up and yelled for the protagonist to get out of the way. The stranger in the hat was running at full speed. He shouted for Lin Mu to move aside. Lin bounced aside in time. He realized the guy wasn't after him. The protagonist could not understand why the stranger was running so fast down the street. Lin noticed a girl in a police uniform running. She looked familiar to him. The protagonist thought about it. He thought the cop was jogging. Lin continued to ponder. He decided that in order to be a police officer, he had to make a run for it. The main character remembered the stranger. He thought there was something strange about that guy. Lin Mu recalled with excitement the stranger's gaze as he ran past him. The protagonist remembered that this kind of evil look is very common in this world. Lin Mu realized that the stranger wasn't as good as the cultivation masters. 
but he too exuded a lust for killing. The protagonist thought excitedly that the policewoman was chasing a criminal. Suddenly, there were very loud gunshots in the alley. The guy got excited. Lin Mu said to himself fearfully as he heard the sounds of gunshots. The guy accelerated and started running. He realized he let the perp slide. The protagonist ran to the alley. He realized the shots were coming from there. Lin Mu ran into the alley. He noticed the girl lying on the ground. Opposite stood the perpetrator with a gun. The intruder shouted to the girl that she had not even spared her life to catch him. The policewoman was very wounded. She was lying on the ground and struggled to say something. Lin Mu ran up to the girl and asked excitedly, Was she alright? The protagonist looked at the girl with excitement. He lifted her in his arms. Lin Mu took a closer look and noticed that the perpetrator's bullet had hit the policewoman in the heart. The guy thought about it. He realized the bullet must have missed his heart. Lin Mu told the injured woman not to worry. He explained that the bullet had not hit her heart, so she would be fine. The girl asked the main character who he was. The cop asked the guy to run away and leave her to herself. The guy told the girl to cover the wound with her hand. The girl shouted frightened to the protagonist not to go to the criminal. He had a gun. The guy promised the policewoman that he would deal with the bandit and take her to the hospital. The policewoman was scared. She told the protagonist he was crazy. The protagonist walked confidently towards the criminal. The bandit with a gun in his hands shouted to the guy that he was not afraid of death. The intruder yelled at the guy for watching movies. He yelled at the guy to show him the harsh reality. The intruder fired a gun at the protagonist and shouted that he was going to die. The main character was in the public safety building. He was talking to a police officer. Lin explained to the officer the details of everything that had happened. He said that if there were no questions, he would leave. The officer held out his hand to the guy and told him to wait. Lin asked the officer what else he wanted. The policeman shook the guy's hand. He thanked him for helping him get Van Silen to the hospital. The protagonist replied that he had done what he had to do. Lin Mu was in the building of the city hospital. The doctor said the patient was undergoing surgery and asked that relatives wait outside. The guy was standing outside the operating room door. He couldn't figure out why no one had come out yet. Lin Mu thought excitedly to himself that the situation with the injured girl was far from optimistic. There was the sound of the door opening in the operating room. The protagonist realized that he would finally find out what was wrong with the policewoman. A group of doctors were carrying an injured girl on a gurney. One of them said to be careful. Lin Mu thought to himself that if he had reacted earlier, the girl wouldn't be in this state right now. The guy saw a girl lying unconscious. He asked Officer Van how she was feeling. The doctor came in. She explained that the effects of anesthesia hadn't worn off yet. The girl couldn't hear the protagonist. Lin Mu inquired of Dr. Zhou. What is the condition of the policewoman? Zhou calmly explained to the protagonist that the operation had been successful. There was no threat to Wang's life now. The main character told the doctor he had something to tell the girl. He asked for permission to go in to see her. Joe explained that the policewoman was just out of surgery and needed to rest. She told the guy to come back tomorrow. Ling Mu asked the doctor to make an exception to the rules for him. The doctor was surprised. The protagonist told his interlocutor that he'd be done very quickly. Joe told the guy that he could come into the room in ten minutes when the patient woke up. She added to let Lin Mu speak slowly. The guy thanked the doctor very cheerfully and with a smile for her favor. Ten minutes later, the protagonist entered the room. He told Officer Bath that he had come to check on her. The girl was lying on the bed. She looked at the main character and called his name. The guy asked his interlocutor, How on earth did she know his name? Van explained with a smile that she was a police officer after all. The policewoman asked the guy apprehensively if the perpetrator had been captured. Suddenly, the girl coughed. She found it very difficult to speak. The protagonist told the officer to rest and not to make any unnecessary movements. Lin Mu realized that the policewoman didn't know that he had stopped the criminal. He realized that he would have to waste time explaining. A couple hours earlier, a girl was lying unconscious. She was very hurt. The protagonist told the criminal with a smile that his method of shooting is nowhere near good enough. The intruder was surprised. He couldn't figure out why he couldn't hit the guy. The bandit fired a gun at the protagonist. There's no way he could have hit him. The perp was startled to realize he was out of ammunition in his weapon. The bandit fearfully asked the protagonist if he was even human. The guy stood calmly. Lin Mu crushed the culprit with a very powerful punch. The culprit could not stand on his feet. The bandit was badly injured after the blow. He coughed up blood. The perpetrator fell unconscious to the ground. The protagonist realized that his blow would not kill the intruder. Lin Mu remembered the injured policewoman. He decided to help her. The main character picked up the girl. She was unconscious due to massive blood loss. 
Lin Mu began to check the girl's pulse with great attention. He realized that she was still alive. The protagonist noticed that the policewoman's pulse was very weak. He realized that he had to send her to the hospital. In the hospital, the protagonist told a policewoman that some stranger in only underpants stabbed the perpetrator in the chest. After that, the perpetrator fell to the ground. Lin Mu explained in a convincing voice to the girl that if it wasn't for the stranger's help, they wouldn't be alive anymore. Van with a smile decided to ask the interlocutor if the muscular guy had a red cape. The cop grudgingly told the guy he'd been watching superhero movies. She realized he was lying to her. Lin Mu decided to help the girl up. He told Wang not to say anything else. The protagonist thought to himself that the girl had figured out his lie. Lin Mu took out a small brown pill from the box. He decided to offer it to the girl. The protagonist held out a pill on his hand to the policewoman. She stared in amazement. Lin Mu smilingly promised his interlocutor that the pill wouldn't harm her. The cop took the pill and cracked it. She agreed to take it. A doctor came in. She told the main character that the van girl had relatives coming to see her. Lin Mu told the girl that he understood everything and he was ready to leave the ward. Van thanked the protagonist for the medicine and said goodbye. The guy wished the policewoman recovery. He informed her that he would visit her in a couple of days. The girl's parents anxiously asked how their daughter's health was. Jo reassuringly told her parents not to worry. She explained that Van was already safe and they could check on her. The main character waved goodbye to Dr. Jo and said he was leaving. Suddenly the girl shouted for the guy to stop. Lin Mu wondered what else happened. Jo asked the protagonist, what is this medicine he has just given to the sick? The doctor explained to the protagonist that seriously ill people can't eat anything. Lin Mu said with a smile to the doctor that he had only given the patient vitamin C. The protagonist thought to himself that he had given the girl drugs to affect her injuries. Ling Mu left and told Dr. Zhou that he had to go. He promised to come back in a couple of days. Zhou realized that the guy was no longer the same old Lin Mu. The girl couldn't understand who had just been in front of her. The main character was sitting in the house the next morning chatting with the girls. A friend with glasses said she really likes cooked food. She'd eat it all her life. The red-haired girlfriend asked the protagonist why he had come back so late last night, and Lin Mu explained that he had met a former classmate and they had been chatting. The girl looked closely at the guy and asked again, Was it really like that? Lin Mu took the glass in his hands and asked the girl, Does she really doubt him? The girl looked at the protagonist and told him to ignore the girlfriend. She explained that she liked to ask stupid questions. The girlfriend suggested that the main character go out in the evening and have fun. Lin Mu suggested to the girls that they take him along to their classmate's birthday party. The interviewee told the guy with a smile that he would meet the new acquaintance once and they would become friends. The protagonist didn't like the offer very much. He decided to object to the girl. The conversationalist smiled at the guy and said that Lin Mu would go with them in the evening. The night before, the guy and his girlfriends were driving down the road in a car. The red-haired girl told the guy that she hadn't seen her friend in a long time. She didn't even think that she still remembered them. The interviewee said that because of the family business, she and her girlfriend gradually drifted apart. The girl with glasses said with a smile that she and her acquaintance were in different worlds. A little later in the evening, the guy and the girls arrived at a huge building. Lin Mu was walking with his acquaintances through the hotel lobby. The girl explained that they were at the Princeton Restaurant Hotel. The main character along with the girls entered the elevator. One of them pressed the button for the 19th floor. The guy asked his girlfriends, was their former classmate named Satu Shu really that rich? The girlfriend explained that the Satu family has been passing down inheritance from generation to generation for centuries. It's the easiest way to get rich. The elevator arrived at the 19th floor with the passengers. The signal sounded. There were a lot of people at the banquet. There was a lively atmosphere everywhere. Lin Mu looked around in surprise. He was surprised that so many people had come because of an ordinary birthday party. A guy came over. He greeted the girl with a sunglass and offered to buy her a drink. The girl grudgingly told the guy in front of her that she didn't know who he was. Mu suddenly noted that he had a special feeling again. The protagonist sensed that one of the people in front of him had the aura of a true king. Lin Mu looked closely and noticed a beautiful girl in a yellow dress in front of him. She was accompanied by guards, the guy wondered. He couldn't understand why on earth this woman was exuding the aura of a true king. The stranger glanced at the protagonist and told him mentally not to stare at her like that. The protagonist was surprised. He couldn't understand how the girl could have mastered telepathy. Lin Mu thought to himself contentedly, There are many high-level people in this world. The girl looked at the protagonist and asked, What is he looking for? The guy replied that he was looking for a place to sit. 
one of the girls invited her companions to sit at the nearest table, girlfriend. Asked the protagonist why he was looking at a strange girl like that. Did he find her so charming? At this time, a girl in a yellow dress came up on stage. The host asked all the guests for silence. The girl was surprised to realize that the protagonist had been looking at Sati Shu all this time. Linmu happily confirmed to his girlfriends that the girl on stage is Satu. The protagonist excitedly thought to himself that he was very surprised that the source of the true king's aura would be the girl on stage. Situ looked at the guy with great surprise. She realized that he was communicating with her through telepathy. The girl got worried. She realized that someone might actually be able to figure out her family's secret. Situ said cheerfully from the stage that it was her birthday today. She thanked everyone for coming. The birthday girl's eyes sparkled. She said cheerfully to the guests that she and thanked everyone and hoped they all had a good time. The people at the banquet all wished a happy birthday to Miss Cheese. The guys at the tables raised their hands in the air and joyfully started congratulating the girl. Lin Mu looked at the girl and happily thought that she was very charming. The host told the guests that they could line up to prepare gifts for the girl. People started one after another. Each of them had some kind of package or box in their hands. A guest told the girl joyfully that today he had made sure that she was very irresistible. The guest replied to the interlocutor that he had a very high opinion of her. The guy handed the box to the girl. He said it contained a modest gift from their company. C2 told all the guests from the stage that she thanked them for their wonderful gifts. The main character asked his girlfriends why they were not carrying their gift for the birthday girl. Song explained to the guy that only valuable gifts are given to the birthday girl. Ordinary gifts are given to the receptionist. Lin Mu said with surprise, It is very much Maroka to just give a gift to a girl. The main character jumped to his feet and told his girlfriends to wait. He also had a wish to give something to the birthday girl. The girl asked the guy fearfully, What does he want to give? She pointed out that he came empty-handed. The girlfriend said with a smile to the protagonist not to talk nonsense. Lin Mu walked down the aisle. He raised his hand and shouted that he had a personal gift for Miss Satu. The birthday girl got excited. She recognized the guy and she wanted to know what he was all about. The guards blocked the main character's way. They pointed out that he came empty-handed and asked him what he wanted to give. Lin Mu said calmly that he would like to dedicate a few words to Sat. He added that the girl would really benefit from it. People cheered a lot. They couldn't believe the guy wanted to give a couple words as a gift. The girl thought to herself that her friend was overreacting. She thought that the protagonist was about to be beaten up. Situ said from the stage that she was grateful to the guy and was willing to listen to him. The girl hesitated. She decided to wait to see what the protagonist could pull off. The people around the protagonist waited in wonder. What is he going to say now? Lin Mu said seriously. He wanted to personally convey his congratulations to the girl. The host explained to the guy that the girl was ready to hear him out. That would be more than enough. She couldn't understand what the protagonist was trying to accomplish. The girl looked sternly at the host and said that the main character could go up. Six? The man told the guy that he could go up if the girl let him. Lin Mu Poo thanked back. Lin Mu climbed up on the stage and walked towards the girl. The people around him were silent. The guy came close to the surprised girl and started whispering something in her ear. One of the guests said that the main character was very arrogant. He didn't like that he got so close to the cheese. The girl kept listening and listening to the guy. He kept telling her. Lin bowed to the girl and said these were the words he wanted to give her for her birthday. Situ was very pleased and amazed. She thanked the guy for enlightenment and for the show. The guests were very surprised. They didn't understand what the guy said and what just happened. Lin Mu walked over to the table where his girlfriends were sitting. He asked why their faces were not happy. The girl with the glasses told the main character that he scared them to death. The girlfriends slyly ranted at the guy and said they were expecting him to put on a show here. Lin Mu looked at the girls with a smile. He apologized for making them worry. Satu approached. She greeted her tablemates named Yuju, Xuan Rong, and Zisi. I looked at the main character and wondered what his name was. The main character gave his name. He told the girl she could just call him Amu. The girl greeted the guy with a gesture and said it was nice to meet him. Lin replied to the new girlfriend that it was nice to meet him too. The red-haired girl asked with interest to her interlocutor, Do they really portray the martial artists from the movies? He didn't even know what to say to his girlfriend. C2 said with a smile to the Z girl that she was still just as funny. She added to her friends to eat. And take your time. At night, the girl Satu returned to her family estate. She walked into the hall and greeted her father. The man looked attentively at his daughter and asked if the banquet had been fun. Situ sat down next to the man. She told him she had something she wanted to discuss. The girl told father affectionately that she did not want to study in Kyoto. She asked that he return her to Dunhai University. 
The man reminded his daughter that she herself had insisted on going to Kyoto University. Situ looked joyfully at her father and said that she wanted to stay with him in the Dunhai. The man asked his daughter if she really wanted to stay with him. The girl said she did. The man excitedly told his daughter that she made him very happy. He held her close to him. Situ remembered that the protagonist had pointed out her main four flaws. She decided to correct these shortcomings in a short time. The man was in the karate room. There were warriors standing against him. They asked the president if he was ready. Luchin Xiaojiro got into a fighting stance. He said that he was attacking his opponents. The president accelerated to hit the athlete across from him with all his might. Luchin thuds his opponent's hand into his defensive glove with a big thud. The athlete could not withstand the blow. He flew aside and could not stay on his feet. The man decided to continue the attack. He shoved off and ran with all his might. The president swung his leg. He shouted to his opponents that he wasn't done yet. The athlete stood and looked fearfully at the president. He prepared to repel the attack. Luke and crushed the athletes with a very big leg kick. The president cheerfully told his opponents that he hit them easy and they can't get up anymore. The guy lifted himself off the floor. He apologized to the president in a tired voice. Luchin helped the guy up. He told the other athletes to keep practicing. The fighters gave a friendly bow to the man and said they would do just that. Luchin told himself thoughtfully that it was time to visit that man. The main character was in Dunhai University. There were other students around him. Lin stopped. He noticed with surprise that there was a familiar girl beside him. A student told his friend that he noticed an ice girl Ji Ching Lan near him. The girlfriend saw the main character. She said he came over. Ji wanted to say something to him. Then he went to his girlfriend and asked her what was wrong. He wondered why she didn't tell him right away. The girlfriend grabbed the protagonist's hand and led the way. He was surprised. The girlfriend told the guy to just walk beside her and not to worry. The student said that the girl Ji turns out to be able to love too. The friend replied to the guy that Lin Mu had already taken three female students from the university. The student explained calmly that if a guy was born cool, he could do whatever he wanted. The protagonist and his girlfriend were camping in the woods. He asked the girl why so much caution. Ji told the interlocutor seriously that her father wanted to meet him. She added to have the guy go to her house. Lin interjected with surprise at the girl. Does her father really want to see him? Ji said in a shy voice that her father wanted to meet his future son-in-law. Lin Mu sternly reminded the interlocutor that they had previously agreed to wait. The girl angrily asked the protagonist, Has he changed his mind? Lin asked her girlfriend to calm down. The protagonist explained to the girl that he couldn't just go to her house. A man walked up next to him. He asked the protagonist if he was Mr. Lin Mu. The main character was walking with his girlfriend. She asked him to walk slower. The girlfriend said excitedly that Lukin had never lost at Tokyo University. She asked her friend if he was sure he could do it. The protagonist thought to himself that he had no worthy opponent after his visit to the Lingjing Temple. He hoped to himself that Xiao Jiro would not disappoint him. Half an hour ago, a guy and a girl were standing in the woods. Across from them was a man in a suit. Lu Chin told the protagonist that he was the president of a karate club at Tokyo University. He invited the guy to fight him. Zi was very angry. She told the man displeased that she was now talking to Lin Mu. The president strictly said that the Ling must definitely agree to the duel. The maiden looked at her interlocutor unhappily and asked what would happen if the guy didn't agree. The protagonist pointed his hand to the side and told the man that he agreed to his challenge. Lukin thanked the guy and said he'd be waiting for him at 6 o'clock tonight at the school stadium. Lin said confidently to his girlfriend not to worry. He can beat his opponent. Z told the guy not to lose by any means. She reminded him that Lin is her fiancé and she doesn't want to see him beaten. At 6 o'clock in the evening, many spectators had gathered at the sports stadium. Lucian sat on the floor and prepared for battle. The man sat in a deep and meditative pose. He was silent and very focused. One of the fighters said the president is going up against a tough opponent tonight. One of the girls excitedly shouted that Lin Mu had finally arrived. The main character was walking quietly with his girlfriend. Everyone around him was silent. Lin was very surprised. He couldn't understand why the people around him were all looking at him. One of the fighters looked at the protagonist unhappily and said that the guy looked weak. Lin asked Xiao Jiro before the battle started. Why did he want to fight him so urgently? The man became agitated. He wanted to explain to the guy why he had challenged him to a fight. Lu Xing said that he had heard how the Ling had defeated Mr. Li Guanjuya, so he decided to fight him. The man told the protagonist that he wasn't going to avenge his friend. The protagonist remembered whether Guanjue was courting and harassing the dream teacher. The man bowed to the protagonist and said that he wanted to exchange experiences with him in this duel. Lin Mu said obediently to the man that he would not fight at full strength. 
The lush asked the protagonist to be unmerciful to him. The man said excitedly that when he fights, he fights hard. It shows respect for the opponent. It shows respect for the opponent. The protagonist told his rival that it was time for them to exchange experiences. The man got into a fighting stance and said that the main character can attacked him. The Luchin swung his arm with all his might to knock the guy off his feet. Lin Mu was startled. He realized that he needed to react to defend himself from the blow. Lin Mu very fearfully turned away to protect himself from the blow. The guy realized to himself that Xiao Jiro was much stronger than his past opponent Li Wanjue. The protagonist dodged a kick. He thought his opponent was a long way from him. Lucian swung with all his might to hit the guy with a punch. Lin kept his defenses up. The protagonist professionally dodged punches in all directions with maximum reaction. The audience cheered. They shouted and cheered for the president of the fight club. Z hesitated. She grudgingly thought to herself that an inexperienced person might think as if Xiao Jiro was suppressing the protagonist. The girl noticed that the movements of the protagonist are not chaotic. It is as if he is testing the strength of the opponent. The man tried to kick the guy in the leg. He dodged it. Lin Mu excitedly thought to himself that his opponent had almost gotten him. The man bounced to the side. He was out of breath and didn't have the strength to attack further. Lucan asked grudgingly to the guy, Why on earth is he only defending himself? The protagonist apologized to his opponent. He said that he had been studying his techniques and had completely forgotten that they were competing. The man was amazed. He was amazed because of the fact that the main character could study his techniques and still be on the defensive. The protagonist got into a fighting stance. He told the man that he was about to attack him. Luchin standing in the stand-up. He shouted for his opponent to show him his strength. The man suddenly noticed the protagonist snapping out of his seat and running towards him. The protagonist ran up and shoved his opponent with all his might with the palm of his hand. The man was flung over the top by the tremendous impact and flew backwards. The Luchin fighter fell to the floor. The people around him were very surprised. People did not understand what had happened. A martial artist said excitedly that suddenly he saw Lin Mu suddenly appear in front of the president. Zi was very much amazed. She realized that her friend was fighting with amazing speed. The man was lying on the floor. He was coming to and decided to try to get up. Luchin began to rise to his feet. He told his opponent that he had been careless. Lin thought to himself that he had only released some qi energy and his opponent was already unable to get up. The protagonist thought to himself that he wanted to test his accumulated power in this battle. The man stood up and prepared to fight on. He realized his gap between the Lin master, but he didn't want to stop. Lucan prepared to attack his opponent. He shouted that he would not give up so easily. Lin was surprised to think that his opponent had a fighting attitude, but it would all be useless. The man took off from his seat and ran at full speed at the protagonist. The lush was coming at the guy at full speed to hit him full force. The president told himself confidently that he absolutely had to hit Po Boy now. The man rushed over and held his fist in front of him to deliver a crushing blow. Lucan suddenly realized to himself that he hadn't hit his target. He couldn't understand how that was possible. Lun Mu grabbed the man's hand with his own hand. Luchin asked, surprised at his rival, What kind of man is he? The protagonist told his rival that he was a student of Dunn University. He prepared to throw his opponent to the floor. He apologized to him. The protagonist swung around and threw his opponent to the floor with all his might. The man's head hit the floor. He didn't have time to defend himself. The Lucan raised his head and looked in front of him. He said the guy didn't have human strength. In the evening, the girl brought her friend to her family mansion. She introduced the guy to her grandfather. The old man looked at the protagonist and asked, What are his plans with Qinglan? Lin Mu smiled and told his grandfather that he didn't have any specific plans at this moment. The old man banged his hand on the table with all his might. He interrogated the guy. Did the guy refuse to marry Ching Lan? The guy explained to his grandfather that he just wanted to graduate first. The old man grudgingly told the young people that they had no future. He asked angrily, Is this just a marriage game to them? Zhu explained to the old man that the guy would be graduating from university in two years. The old man pointed his finger at the guy and said that the main problem was his attitude. The grandfather told his granddaughter that after university... Everyone has their own way. If the guy runs away, where will she look for him? The protagonist thought it wasn't his idea in the first place. Zhu dragged him into it. He ended up being the one to blame. The grandfather asked the girl why she had chosen this guy. He said that the lineman had no ambition. Zhu tells the old man that the main character is not at all what he says he is. The old man angrily told his companions that he would not give them consent to their marriage. The protagonist decided to intervene in the conversation. He apologized. Lin Mu explained that he really doesn't have any plans and doesn't want to make excuses. He added that his own future is still being planned. 
The main character got up from the table. He explained that he wouldn't be coming anymore. The guy headed for the exit. He said goodbye to his companions. The girl got worried. She asked the protagonist to wait. The old man told the Ching girl that her friend would never become anything outstanding. The girlfriend was yelling at the main character to stop and wait. Zhu cried. She shouted to her grandfather that he didn't understand anything at all. The old man remained seated at the table with the man. Zhu stepped aside, saddened. The man said thoughtfully to his grandfather that last sentence was very stern. Grandpa explained that he wanted to check if the guy really loved the Zai girl, or if he simply only wanted to join their family. The old man explained to the man that if the guy had ulterior motives, he would make concessions. The man explained that if the protagonist came to join the Tzu family, he could be understood. The old man got to his feet and said that even if the protagonist marries Ching Lan, he would not join the Ji family. The man decided he couldn't change the old man's stubborn nature. The girl's father thought to himself that Lin Mu is a good guy. The main character was walking and thinking to himself that he had to get angry today. He realized that his Qi had become weaker. Lin Mu thought to himself that the original Qi of his new body was very weak. That is why he was so upset. The main character was walking down an evening street. He couldn't understand why the Jai family looked down on him. Suddenly, the guy stopped. He noticed something very interesting in front of him. A fat man in a brown jacket was walking down the street. He was asking for help in a frightened voice. Lin Mu looked at the fat man and he showed his very familiar. He started to remember. The main character remembered that the fat guy's name was Shin Wai Long. This guy used to cheat other people at school and take girls with his power. Lin Mu asked fatty Shin Wai Long what happened to him in the middle of the night. Shin looked at the protagonist with excitement. He asked him for help. A whole bunch of guys showed up with guns. They yelled they were going to take the fat man's life. Lin told his acquaintance that he was very lucky. He was being chased by people who wanted to kill him. Shin looked anxiously at the guy and asked if he could help him. He was in danger of dying this night. The leader of the bandits told the protagonist angrily that they only wanted one fat guy today. He demanded that the guy get out of the way. Xin asked the frightened protagonist to save him from the gangsters. Lin Mu said to himself that he was in a bad mood today. He decided to get even with the bandits. The ringleader asked the protagonist if he was fed up with his life and didn't want to leave. Lin told the gangsters that the fat man is his classmate and he can't stay away. The guy ordered his subordinates to deliver the blue and the main character to him. A whole group of gun-toting thugs ran at full speed at the protagonist. Lin Mu said to himself reassuringly that bandits of this level would not be a problem for him. The Sin warned the protagonist in a frightened voice that these gangsters could quietly kill a man. Lin Mu prepared to fight off the group of bandits attacking him. The protagonist prepared to teach the criminals a lesson. He got into a fighting stance. Lin Mu decided that he would beat his opponents to a pulp. Only then would they learn their lesson. The bandits with swords ran at the protagonist. He stood still and waited for them. Lin concentrated. He prepared to fight off his first opponent. The protagonist pointed his palm forward to fend off the first attacker. The guy got hit pretty hard right off the bat. He started flying off to the side. Shin looked fearfully at the protagonist. He still felt like Lin was making a mistake. The guy flies off to the side after a powerful punch from the protagonist. Lin Mu was very happy and satisfied. He realized that he had succeeded. The fat man was surprised. He said to himself that he was seeing a scene from a martial arts movie. The main character was walking down the street. Someone ran after him and asked him to wait. Lin Mu stopped. He looked with interest to see who had just called out to him. The protagonist saw a battered fat man standing next to him. Sin thanked his friend for saving him last night. Lin looked at the fat man and said no thanks. Sin once again thanked the guy for saving his life. The fat man dropped to his knees and said in a tragic voice that he would always follow the protagonist. The lynx inquired of the fat man what kind of people were chasing him. Shin explained that he had insulted the leader of a group called Pai Husin. After that, he had brought trouble upon himself. Two students were walking by. One of them said that they should hurry as there was some spectacle at the school gate. Sin stopped the boy and asked why on earth were they in such a hurry to get to the school gates. The student said that the ice girl G wants to fight with another beautiful girl. The protagonist got worried. He couldn't believe that Zhu could be fighting someone right now. Sin told his friend that it would be a good spectacle. He offered to go and watch it. The main character told his friend that he wasn't in the mood. He suggested that Fatty walk alone. Sin grabbed his friend's hand. He said he'd help the guy unwind. The protagonist said grudgingly to his friend that he could walk on his own and not to drag him. The girls stood a short distance apart. One of the students said that they had been standing like that for a long time. The girl with blue hair said grudgingly to her rival to act. Fatty, along with the main character, made their way through the crowd to see what was going on. 
The protagonist was very much surprised. He couldn't understand what the girl Satu was doing here. The girlfriend turned around. She looked at the protagonist with great interest. Lin asked his acquaintance with great excitement, Why did she come here? C2, as if nothing had happened, raised her hand and greeted her friend. The students around were very surprised. They couldn't believe that this beautiful girl knew the main character. Zhu warned the protagonist and told him to be careful. Zhu explained to the protagonist that Cheetah had inquired about his whereabouts. Perhaps the girl had some kind of score to settle with him. C2 looked at the protagonist and said that he is a big hit with women. She noted that the guy is protected by beautiful girls. The main character explained to his girlfriend that Saitu isn't a bad person. They're just acquaintances. The fat man told everyone present that there had been a misunderstanding. He demanded that the students disperse. The protagonist asked Satu, So why did she come to Denhai University? The girl smiled and said that she had transferred to this place from Kyoto University. 31. G asked suspiciously to her interlocutor, Why did she transfer here? C2 told her interlocutors with a smile that she would like to become classmates with them in the future. She would also like to ask them for some advice. The students looked with very great admiration at the girl's picture on their phones. They called her a beauty. One guy said that the position of their university hottie could easily change. At the same time, a group of girls were sitting at a table and talking among themselves. One of them asked, Where did the G come from? Xing told in a calm voice that the G girl was called the Snow Queen. Situ said cheerfully that if a girl is called a Snow Queen, it means she is arrogant and indifferent. The girlfriend brought the main character a bento in a box. She offered to eat it together. The main character thanked the girl and said he wouldn't eat that much. The girl explained that G is only very good to the main character. Satu told cheerfully to her new girlfriends that G is their rival in love. The student got angry. She shouted at her interlocutor not to talk nonsense. The girl calmly replied that there was no reason for them to like the main character. Singh added that it was impossible. Situ told her girlfriends with a smile that she was only joking. At this time, a man came up from behind. He asked the protagonist if he was Mr. Lin. Zhu said grudgingly to the stranger that they were here to eat. The man said good-naturedly that something had happened. The master wants to discuss it with Mr. Lin. Lin noticed a large man standing in front of him. Normally, such people don't usually look for a fight. He asked the stranger who was his master. Zi was still standing with the box in her hands. She asked her interlocutor, Why didn't the master come himself? The main character told his girlfriend not to hit on people. He added that he would drive there and back. The man bowed to the protagonist and told him to follow him. Lin Mu waved goodbye to the girl and told her not to worry. Ji asked the guy to be more careful. The main character was approaching the car with other people. The man told the guy to wait for a while. The guard approached the gentleman and informed him that the lineman had arrived. The man said the guy could get in the car. A man with glasses asked the protagonist if he remembered him. Lin replied with a smile to the interlocutor that the latter was the father of the girl of the bathtub. The man told the guy they'd only met once, but the guy remembered him. The man told the protagonist that he was the only one he could rely on this time. Lin told the interlocutor that Van was his girlfriend and promised to help with all the problems. He inquired what the girl's condition was now. The man said the rehab went well. He invited the guy to visit when he had time. Lin told the male that he would come to see him in a couple of days. The interlocutor replied to the male that they had an agreement. The protagonist asked the man what he was looking for him for this time. The man said he wasn't going to drag his feet. He started giving details. The protagonist, together with his companion, arrived at the building. The man told the guy that things were very bad. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been looking for him. Lin was climbing the stairs. He told his interlocutor that he was not a doctor. The man demanded of the guy that he work his ass off. He added that they'd get him whatever he needed. Two very excited military men were sitting on the sofa. They were waiting for Mr. Wong. One of the military men on the couch cheerfully greeted the incoming man. Mr. Van asked his interlocutors how the head was feeling right now. The military man replied that the head was still in a coma. He explained that this did not bode well. There was an old man lying on the bed under an oxygen mask. The man said the chapter was of great importance to China. Mr. Wang explained that if there is no head, China will face serious problems. The main character told the man that he would do what he could. He asked him to wait outside. Mr. Vaughn headed for the exit with the military. He reminded the protagonist that the chapter's life was in his hands. One of the officers asked the man if the young man could be trusted. Mr. Wang said the guy saved his daughter. He believes him. The main character walked up to the lying old man and took his hand. He realized that first he had to find out the cause of the illness. Lin first decided to run the Chuai energy through the patient's pulse. The old man's reaction surprised the protagonist. He found it strange. 
Lin noted to himself that the patient had no obvious organ abnormalities. Such abnormalities usually existed in people who had reached their limit. The protagonist thought about it. He decided to himself that he might have missed something. Lin decided to himself that he could try again. He put his hands on the patient and decided to direct more chi this time. The protagonist was deep in thought. He couldn't figure out what the patient's problem was. Lin Mu looked at the old man's body. He realized that he had a heart problem. The main character realized that the patient has a lot of dirt in the artery of the right atrium. This causes a prolonged lack of oxygen in the body. After that, the body starts to malfunction. Lin Mu decided happily to himself that now it was time for the small matter to be completed. The protagonist realized that he needed to use qi directly now. This would help cure the ailment. Mr. Van stood waiting by the door. One of the soldiers said it was unknown whether the head could survive all this. The doors suddenly opened. The main character came out into the corridor. He said that the head was fine and would wake up soon. The soldiers got very excited. The man asked the guy did he really cure the old man so quickly? Mr. Wang inquired of the lad, how long would the head last? Lin explained that in elderly people, the body was already severely depleted. If an old man's energy was dead, he would last for about half a year. Three days later, the old man recovered from his convalescence. The military man was very displeased. He pounded his hand on the chair with all his might. The commander-in-chief's name was Duan Fusheng. He angrily shouted that as long as he was alive, no one would touch the East China Sea. Mr. Van told the old man to take it easy. He advised that the commander should not be nervous. Duan said thoughtfully, if he could live a couple more years, it would be good. Mr. Van told the old man not to worry. He promised that this difficulty would end. Duan replied to the man that he himself knows better than his own body. He added that he did not expect to be rescued. Duan calmed down. He asked the man if the guy who saved him was coming today. Mr. Van told the old man that he had already done everything and the protagonist would arrive soon. A knock sounded at the door. A subordinate informed the commander-in-chief that a guest had arrived. The man jumped up from his seat. He ran to the door to meet the guy. A man introduced the guy who saved his life to the commander-in-chief. The protagonist bowed to the old man and greeted him. Then he gave his name. Duan told the protagonist to take a seat soon. Lin thanked the old man. The commander-in-chief told the guy that he wasn't a soldier, so he could just call him Grandpa Duane. The old man told the protagonist cheerfully that if it wasn't for his help, he wouldn't have lived to see today. Lin told Grandpa that he was exaggerating. He explained that he couldn't eliminate the focus of the disease. Duan said with gratitude to the guy that he was able to save him, and that was already a very good thing. The old man said that at his age he no longer takes certain things seriously. He added that it is absolutely irrelevant whether he dies or not. Lin told the old man with great joy that he admired him very much. A man came in. He told the old man that the food was ready. He suggested we talk at the table. Mr. Duan suggested his companions have some fun and drink a couple of sips to lighten the mood. Mr. Wang reminded the commander-in-chief that he had just recovered. Three hours later, the protagonist told Grandpa Duane that he'd had enough drinking for the day. The girl was at home. Her secretary came to her with a report. The girl informed her boss that there was new progress today regarding the ordinance. C2 cheerfully told her subordinate that she could keep talking. The secretary reported that the protagonist had arrived at the war ministry after lunch. He had been there for three hours. The secretary asked her subordinate what the protagonist had been doing in the war ministry for so long. The secretary replied that it was still unknown. The supervisor grudgingly told her subordinate to get to work as soon as possible. The secretary bowed to her boss and said that she would go to execute everything right away. Mistress was alone. She sat on the couch and thought about the main character. Zitu was deep in thought. She couldn't understand why the main character was going to the war ministry. The next day, students gathered near the entrance of Dunhai University. There was a guy standing there with a bouquet of blue flowers. The students were surprised. They did not understand who it was standing at the university gates so early in the morning. The guy with the flowers was waiting for the girl. One of the people said the girlfriend still hadn't shown up. One of the students spotted the latest model Lamborghini pulling up to the university entrance. The race car stopped and a girl Satu got out of there. Someone shouted happily that she had arrived. The student took off her glasses and was surprised. She didn't understand why there were so many people at the gates of the university. The guy said happily to the girl that she had finally come. Satu greeted the student and called his name Yan Lanshi. Situ asked the guy with great surprise, what on earth is he doing here? Yan explained to his girlfriend with a smile that he had brought her oriental blue roses. The overjoyed student took the flowers from the guy's hands and thanked him. The guy wondered to the girl, 
so why didn't she warn him that she had transferred to Dunhai University? Satu told her friend that she wanted to move to Dunhai. Here she can spend time with her parents. The girl asked her friend what he wanted to say. The student looked away. He told his girlfriend that she moved to this university because of a boyfriend. Situ was very surprised and worried. She looked at the guys coming to the entrance. The student noticed the Ling approaching in the company of her familiar fat man. Yan asked the girl what the main character said to her at the birthday party. I told my friend, unhappily, that it was all her own business. Yan looked angrily at his interlocutor and said that she was his fiancé. So he would question her about everything. Situ replied to the guy that she wouldn't tell him anything even if she was his wife. The student got really angry. He asked his girlfriend, does she really like Ling Mu? The girl turned around and started to walk away. She told Yang not to hit on her again. The student angrily asked his girlfriend if she understood what she just said. Situ angrily asked her friend, did he really think she was joking? Sin told the protagonist that there was something going on near the university entrance. The protagonist looked in front of him and noticed that the adult guy was refining the female QI energy. Sin turned around and asked his friend, why is he so cheerful? Lin told his friend that they had to go. The fat man replied to the guy that the fun wasn't over yet. Yan was very angry. He didn't like the main character looking at his girlfriend. The student thought angrily to himself that the protagonist was not going to make it. On the evening of the same day, the main character was walking with his friend. He asked the fat man where they were going. Sin told his friend to be cool. The guy's gonna find out soon. The students approached the large doors. Servants near the entrance invited them inside. The main character looked in surprise in front of him. He realized that they had gotten into a charity dinner. Lin said with surprise to his friend's interest in charity projects. Sin said slyly that it wasn't just a charity project. He added that the guy himself would find out soon enough. The protagonist and his friend were walking through the room. Suddenly, the guy felt something. Lin Mu didn't realize what was happening. He felt that something was beginning to happen to his ring. The fatty asked excitedly to his friend, What happened? The Lin even turned pale. The main character replied that he had eaten something bad. He wondered where the restroom was. Sin told his friend where the restroom was. The protagonist headed for the exit and asked that Fatty wait for him. Lin Mu locked himself in a restroom stall. There was no one around him. He was by himself. Thirteen, the protagonist wondered. He couldn't figure out what had happened. The guy realized that the ring wanted to break free. If he didn't suppress it, the consequences could be unimaginable. Lin thought that he was for obtaining the ring, almost died. In the cultivation world next, there should be no mistakes. Suddenly from the side, some girl told the protagonist to come out. He came out of the stall and noticed the girl next to him. He wondered what she was doing here. The protagonist told his companion that she was actually in the men's room. I asked the guy, is he really interested in charity work? Lin replied to the girl that he was just brought here by the fat man. He asked his interlocutor how she was doing here. The girl angrily said that she saw her boyfriend Yang in the morning. He misunderstood her relationship with the protagonist. Satu promised to sort it out. The protagonist asked her girlfriend, Does she mean the guy at the university gate asking for her love? The girl grabbed the guy's clothes and said as he noticed Yan's murderous aura. The protagonist calmly replied to his girlfriend that he had noticed the aura. Situ explained irritably to the protagonist that Yang shouldn't be a problem for him. She warned that the student was very good at various tricks. Lin told his girlfriend that he didn't realize she was so concerned for his safety. The girl told the main character that she would be so worried about him if it weren't for his instructions. The protagonist thanked the girl for the warning. He promised to be careful. Situ got ready to leave. She asked that the protagonist save himself. At that time, some man went into the toilet and noticed a guy and a girl in there. He was surprised. Lin Mu felt very awkward. He glanced sideways at the man who had entered. The stranger was surprised. He realized that the young men were in such a hurry that they had decided to do everything in the men's room. There was a charity auction on stage. One of the bidders said 10 million. The auctioneer with a hammer in his hands repeated the bid of 10 million several times. The presenter banged his gavel on the table and shouted that the goods had been sold for 10 million. The presenter thanked Miss Lin for her help with the charity. The protagonist thought to himself in surprise that the vase could be sold for 10 million. Fatty said that all the people who came here, they came for charity. The presenter introduced the next exhibit. It was an ancient necklace. The value of this thing could not be recognized. The auctioneer explained that no one had ever been able to find out the composition of the necklace. The host pointed with his hand to the side and said cheerfully, Nothing in the world can damage this piece of jewelry. The fat man was very surprised. He couldn't believe that nothing could harm an ordinary piece of jewelry. The protagonist thought to himself that after the necklace appeared, the ring's reaction became stronger. 
The guy thought deeply and seriously. He decided there might be a connection between his ring and the necklace at the auction. One of the bidders held up his sign and said he was offering five million for the goods. Shin was very surprised at such a big bet. The protagonist told his friend that prices would still rise. The presenter pointed his finger into the audience and said that Mr. Liu was offering five million. He asked the audience, can anyone offer more? A girl with red hair held up a sign and said she was willing to pay six million. People in the audience started bidding very actively. The price went up to 15 million. The man raised his hand and said confidently that he was offering 20 million. The auctioneer announced that Mr. Liu was offering 20 million. He asked who could do more. The fat man was surprised. He couldn't understand who was willing to pay 20 million for a stupid necklace. Lin explained that the money would go to charity. One of the participants held up a sign and said he was paying 50 million. The participant was surprised. He couldn't believe that someone would be willing to pay 50 million at once. The presenter said Mr. Ao wants to pay 50 million. He asked, can anyone give more? The auctioneer repeated the amount of 50 million three times. The necklace was won by Mr. Ao Shaolong. The auctioneer cheerfully said to thank the A.O. bidder for his contribution to the charity. The fat man from his seat said that he knew A.O. Shaolun. The protagonist asked the Shinya how much did he know the man. A friend told the protagonist in confidence that the head of the A.O. family is an important figure. Fatty said that the A.O. family attaches great importance to the necklace. It means that the jewelry is not so ordinary anymore. Lin remembered that there were six other ring-like treasures in the cultivation world. These seven treasures were known as the ancient immortality armor. The protagonist thought the necklace might be part of an ancient armor of immortality. There was a charity banquet for VIPs. A guy was puzzled about something. He asked Lin Mu how dare he play with Shu'e Er. The man with the snake-like appearance asked the master if there were any instructions. His name was Ching She, which translates to green snake. Master replied that he didn't want to see that boy in white anymore. Ching Shi began to assure him that he would not see the sun tomorrow, but the master warned him that this guy had good skills. Don't underestimate the enemy. Ching Shi asked master not to worry. After all, he has never lost before. The charity dinner was coming to an end. Everyone was thanked for their support of the charity. The boy in white asked the fat man what he had brought him here for. The fat man explained that some people wanted to come but could not. He had originally wanted to buy something too and ask him to help him with his staff. Lin wondered why he had never once picked up a sign. The fat man replied that he had brought five million, hoping to buy something. But he didn't even get a chance to bid. The rich people from Dung Hai are too capricious. The bidding was beyond brutal, especially Ao Shaolong. He spent 50 million on a necklace. Even if it's the best necklace in the world, it's still too much. The kid in white remarked that it was probably bought for someone. Fatty stated that he couldn't help buying someone that item. The comrade replied to the fat man that he had urgent business and needed to go out. The fatty asked Brother Lin why there was such a rush. He wanted to invite him to eat. Lin explained that this was a very important matter and asked him to invite him next time. There's an underground parking garage in front of us. The kid in white realized it was here. He started watching what was going on. A man in sunglasses motioned for Mr. Ao to get into the car. Lin watching them thought about the necklace he had bought for him. He decided to find out where the necklace was hidden first. It's most convenient to pick it up a little later. There are a lot of stoplights in this city, so it's easy to keep up with the car. Just then, Lin felt someone's murderous gaze on him. It felt strange, not like the usual crooks. The boy turned back and saw three masked and hooded men in front of him. He asked who they were, but instead of answering, they began to attack him. Lin skillfully dodged and told his opponents that they were fighting too naively. Three knives flew at him at once. One of the masked guys laughed thinking he'd made it. Lin laughed in response, since it turned out to be just the opposite. The hooded guys were very surprised at how he managed to dodge. Lin noticed that they only knew how to attack from ambush. He began to scatter them all one by one. He exclaimed that they were moving too slowly. One of the guys was surprised that the two were knocked down in an instant. What had he done to them? Lin realized that he had struck the air. The guy in the mask said he had a good reaction. Lin called him a jack of all trades. But this time, he promised not to fail. The masked guys decided this guy was hard to deal with, but one of them found a way to beat him. Lin prepared to repel the attack. There was a lot of smoke around him, and he couldn't figure out what the other technique was. But after thinking about it, he realized that they were using the air currents around the body. It's all about disrupting the thoughts of the enemy, which eventually leads to hallucinations. Lin realized that this technique is made worse by anger. These three know the technique too superficially. He asked the guys where they were hitting because he was on the other side. 
The masked guy wondered how he could understand this shadow technique. He must have the blood of the elite in him. Lin thought they had easily mistaken him for one of their own. He wondered who had sent them to kill him. The guys apologized. Apparently there was some kind of misunderstanding. They asked to come back with them to find out what went wrong. Lin replied that he couldn't make it now as he had a lot of things to do. The masked guy explained that if he didn't go with them, they would be in big trouble. Nine assassins were sent on this mission. They were only one of the squad. Lin asked not to worry, for they were no match for him. He would be able to defend himself. The masked guys replied that in that case, they wouldn't bother him anymore. Meanwhile, the snake man was watching them. He was surprised at how quickly Lin had learned these techniques. Since that's the case, he should show some real skills. Lin ran and realized that he had lost Shaolun's car. Apparently, another plan had to be devised. Suddenly, a beam of green snake flew at him, injuring him. He didn't think the kid would notice him. Lin didn't expect an expert like him to attack from ambush. Ching Shi replied that he was an assassin, and in order to achieve his goal, he would do anything possible. Lin fell to the ground and coughed. He wondered if the man had followed him then when he was fighting those guys. Ching Shi replied that it was because he was too strong that he had to strike from behind an ambush. He's his second target that had to be killed like that, which is honorable. Lin asked him to tell his name. He wanted to know by whose hand he would die. Would he not fulfill the dying man's last request? The snake man said his name, but then Lin jumped to his feet. He tried to hit the snake, but it dodged. It was a stealth attack. He was able to sense it and react quickly. Ching. She couldn't understand what was wrong with this guy. Could it be that he was pretending to be dead? But he had definitely received his blow after all. Lin noticed that the serpent had also perfected in the spiritual realm. He's also the master who opened the middle and lower Dantian. Despite that, he was determined not to lose to him. He exclaimed that the person who should die is him. Ching, she noticed that Lin had been injured so severely and the blows were still so strong. Lin threw a punch at Ching, she. He wondered who the kid really was. The guy said he was Lin Mu and asked him to remember the person who killed him. Ching, she couldn't understand how this was possible. His knife was definitely stabbed into him. Lin felt that the poison that was on the knife had penetrated his heart and lungs. I wonder if he'll end up here like this. After this phrase, the boy fell to the ground. That same day at night, the guy was lying on the floor in a lot of pain. Ten years ago, a girl cried over the master. She wailed that it was Yunur who had hurt him. She spoke of herself. The master said that it was the healer's job to save the terminally ill. If it was possible to save her, he would die without regret. She is bound to live well and save and heal many people. Yunair said that when she was adopted by the master, she contracted a strange disease. If it wasn't for his healing techniques, she wouldn't have lived to this day. Each time after the operation, the master got older little by little and sacrificed himself for her life. Though this technique can only be performed by working hard, she can't control it freely. But if she's still a doctor, she's not going to let an unconscious guy get in trouble. Therefore, he shouldn't give up either. The girl pierced Lin Mu with a healing needle. This secret technique consumes a lot of energy. If it continues like this, it may not survive. She admonished herself, trying to cheer herself up. Master had treated her like a daughter since their first meeting and had saved her at the cost of his life. And now that she had made up her mind, it was too late to coward. She asked the master to give her strength, and she remembered him telling her that this technique required precision, and those shots require skillful speed. No way you should stop at an acupuncture point for long or it will lose all its labors. Yunar noticed that the black color on Lin Mu's face was disappearing and it was working. The master asked her to remember that the acupuncture process must not be interrupted or the patient would die. She wouldn't let him die. The girl raised a finger in the air. Then she put the needle into his heart with a sharp movement. A little more and she'll take Yang. Yunar breathed heavily before collapsing on top of the patient. Lin Mu was saved. The events are taking place in Situ's house. Some girl was sound asleep. Suddenly the phone rang. She wondered who was calling so early. She picked up the phone and asked Lian Ru what was wrong. It was explained to her that Lin Mu had been gone for three days now. The girl immediately woke up. She replied that she understood everything and asked to wait for news. In the future, the improvement of her cultivation would only depend on him. Can't have anything happen to him. The girl became puzzled at the thought. She called Yan Lanchi and asked her to tell her nicely if Lin Mu's disappearance had anything to do with him. Let's go back three days earlier. It was a dark night. Yunar was unconscious. Suddenly she opened her eyes. She couldn't understand where she was if she was in heaven. But when she woke up, she realized she was home. I guess she was lucky. She started looking for Lin Mu. Where did he go? 
The boy was sitting in the lotus posture meditating. The girl turned to him, noticing that he was already all right. Lin Mu was glad that Dr. Zhou was already awake. The girl replied that she didn't think he would recover so quickly. Then she coughed. The boy came up to her and put his arm around her and asked if she was okay. Lin Mu asked the girl not to worry. His body was already fine and he suggested her to sit down. He thanked the doctor for saving him. He promised to repay her for her help in the future. The girl replied that it is the doctor's duty to save and treat the wounded. She did not ask for any payment in return. The boy wondered how she got rid of the poison in his body. He thought he was going to die for sure this time. The doctor explained that acupuncture had saved him. This method is described in the secret book of its master. At that time, he saved countless people with the help of 27 needles and was nicknamed the Divine Doctor. However, she had only superficially learned the teacher's technique and found it difficult to use. She admitted that at one point she almost gave up. Lin Mu told Dr. Zhou that her skin color was not very healthy and asked the girl to take her time. She replied that she was fine. Her body was weak as still yesterday's detoxification took a lot of energy. Lin Mu asked if there was any way to help her. The girl explained that the master had tried his best to save her that year. If it wasn't for him, she wouldn't be alive today. But ten years ago, he had spent too much energy trying to save her. Lin Mu realized that only her master's surface technique was able to draw out the poison. What kind of disease had actually rendered her master helpless? Yunur lowered her head down and said that she felt a little dizzy. After that, she fell down on the table. Lin Mu lifted the girl into his arms. She really seemed to have expended a lot of energy to save him. Even spit on her own life. Lin Mu looked around the doctor's room. It was very clean. Apparently, she cleaned it often. That's when he noticed some retracted bricks. One of them was dangling. Someone must have done it on purpose. So it was. Pushing aside a brick, the kid noticed that there was something hidden between the walls. When he climbed into the opening of the wall, he picked up a letter. He realized that Master Yuner had left a letter for the girl. The master explained in a letter that what she was learning was his family's secret acupuncture technique. The length of the acupuncture needle chosen determines how much yin is taken away, and yang returned, which is why the sun eventually takes away yang. If cultivation reaches its limit, it is possible to resurrect the dead. Forcibly using techniques will waste her energy, which will eventually lead to death. He offended a mysterious organization, and they tried to steal his family's secret technique from him. So he hid it. What he regrets the most is that he couldn't cure Yuner. He left a secret technique to cure Yang especially for her. He hopes that someone gifted can use it to cure the girl. Without having a sufficient level of cultivation, one should never use the Yang extracting technique. Lin Mu realized that the technique she used to save him was called Yang Extraction. He should pass it on to Dr. Zhou as soon as possible. Such powerful machinery can only be used with a high level of cultivation. And so evening came. The full moon was shining in the sky. Yuner finally woke up. The boy asked how she was feeling. The girl replied that she was feeling much better. She noticed a letter on the table. Lin Mu asked her to look at it and then she would know. The girl took the letter in her hands and began to read. She said that the teacher was so merciful to her that he took care of her even after death, and she didn't even have anything to repay him for it. The girl began to sob quietly. She asked the kid where he found the letters. Lin Mu explained that he had found them today while cleaning in the wall. That was where he had discovered them. Yunye said she was sorry there wasn't someone gifted enough to do it. The kid said he didn't. Maybe the man in the letter is him. Yuner asked him not to be fooled. Even if he is talented, he can't cultivate directly. He doesn't have such a good foundation. And forced cultivation will only destroy it. The kid asked not to worry about it. She wondered what he meant by that. Lin Mu said that he was almost certain that Dr. Zhou knew a little bit about cultivation. Could she help him find out if he was qualified enough? The doctor asked if he could gather all the chai on the tip of his finger. After all, even a master couldn't do that. Yuner didn't think that Lin Mu was so secretive. Maybe he could really practice yang retrieval. Lin Mu said that it might be possible to cure her illness without reaching the highest cultivation level. The girl hoped that was the case. Then he could speed up his cultivation progress by helping her. The boy thought that as long as there is hope for survival, no one gives up so easily. Dr. Zhou's letter makes him realize how precious life is. Yuner said she thought she could save a couple more people and then she could live her life without regrets. Lin Mu replied that all good things come back. This time she saved his life and he gave her a chance to live. The girl said that saving a life is saving oneself. The master told her that it was the doctor's duty to save life. The salvation of life is the salvation of self. There are things in the world that are predetermined in advance. 
Lin Mu thanked the girl. He decided to go back for a while or else his family hadn't seen him all these days, and he should hurry. Yuna replied that she had to go back to the hospital too, so we need to say goodbye here. Let's go back half an hour. Lin Mu walked along the bridge and thought about the fact that powerful techniques like Yang extraction really existed in this world. Its creator has a deep understanding of the human body. He fears that no one on earth can surpass him. As the boy walked along, he noticed a crowd of people hovering over the bridge looking out into the vast ocean. What could be going on out there? People were talking about how the driver wasn't going to do well. The rescue team hadn't arrived yet. It certainly wouldn't last too long. You can tell the owner really cares about her sports car. No one would have thought she'd die in a place like this. It's ironic. Lin Mu realized that someone had fallen into the water. One of the men exclaimed that a girl had flown a car into the water. He just came down but the car window was too hard to break. He didn't make it. Lin Mu headed towards the ocean. People asked if he had decided to rescue the girl. The man who had already dived said it was useless. It was better to wait for the rescuers. The car window was too solid to break. The boy replied that he would try it after all. If we wait for the rescue team to arrive, only the car will be saved. And then he took a dive. It's good that it's not deep. Lin Mu looked for the car, and now he'd finally found it. In his mind, he asked to hold on a little longer. As he swam up to the car, he noticed that there was a girl sitting in it. The glass was very strong indeed. Must have been bulletproof. No wonder that man couldn't break it. But that glass was nothing to him. He used his trick and started to pull the girl out. He pulled her out of the car. The boy noticed that the girl was about to die. He decided it was necessary to give her some energy. After that, he approached the girl with his lips. He kissed her, giving off energy. She was bound to last. He was determined not to let her die. A girl sitting in a car at the bottom of the ocean thought about what people live for, for the glory of the family or for a lucrative business. She didn't think once in the water that she would die this way. She wasn't prepared. Why was she thinking about Lin Mu in the last moments of her life? The boy pulled the girl to shore. I wonder if she's finally awake. The girl asked him if he too had gone to heaven. Lin Mu asked not to talk nonsense. She wasn't dead yet, after all, he had saved her. The girl immediately jumped up and hugged the boy. She said that she missed him. Lin Mu asked her not to cry. After all, everything was fine now. She asked how he had found her. The boy explained that he was walking by and heard people talking about someone falling in the water, so he jumped in to save her. Didn't think it would be her. He asked how she flew her car into the water. The girl replied that she did not know what happened. The car suddenly went out of control. The kid said it was very dangerous. Afterward, he said he would escort her to change her clothes and asked her to take her time. The people around him clapped for him. They praised the boy for saving the girl. Donghai University is in front of us. Yuner thought about how everything was fine in the morning. Why now, all of a sudden, he turned off his phone. A voice was heard from behind her. One of the three girls asked if she was looking for Lin Mu. Yunye replied that she was looking and asked if they were friends of his. One of them asked for permission to ask what she was looking for Lin Mu for. He hasn't returned home for days, and they don't know where he is either. Dr. Joe explained that he had been at her house for a few days, only leaving this morning. She has a case for him, but she can't reach him on the phone and is very worried. They were very surprised that Lin Mu had been at her place these few days. What on earth is going on? Yuner explained that he had suffered severe wounds a few days ago. She had saved him. So she let him rest at her place for a few days. One of the girls was surprised and worried. Yuner explained that she had heard that he had been attacked by Ching Shi's assassin. The girl then became indignant. After all, she knew it. Lin Mu never disappeared without saying goodbye. Something had really happened. Yuner mumbled that he left this morning, so why hasn't he returned to the university yet? Something must have happened on the way. Meanwhile, at Yan's house, the boss was informed that the spy had news. Ching Shi, who was sent to kill Lin Mu, has failed the mission. That young man is back home now. The head of the Yan family, Yan Zhong King, was angry. After many years of diligent cultivation, Ching Shi had only done so much damage. One of the men asked the boss not to be angry. After all, it's only a youngster, Yan replied. Easy for him to say. Maybe he would go and eliminate him himself. The man sweated and mumbled that a subordinate dare not do that. The best thing to do would be to leave it to the killer. The boss said to let Pai go this time, but he shouldn't be so relaxed. Even Ching Shi died. This kid is definitely an unusual kid. Lin Mu was at his place of residence. Three girls were already at his doorstep asking when he had time to come back. Lin Mu immediately apologized to them. He explained that he had some things going on during these days. One of the girls exclaimed that he had come home and hadn't even said a word about it. 
At least he knew how worried they all were. The other girl confirmed her words, for they were looking for him. In the meantime, he went home quietly. A third friend calmed the girls down and asked them not to reproach him so much. After all, his wounds had only just healed. Lin Mu wondered how they knew that he had been injured. The friends replied that it was his sister Jo who told them. She came to Donghai University this morning, looking for him. The boy realized they were talking about Dr. Jo and wondered why she was looking for him. One of the girls replied that the doctor had said he wasn't picking up the phone. She was worried that something had happened to him on the way. She asked about their relationship. Lin Mu replied that they had the wrong idea. Dr. Jo is his savior. Last time, she saved him when he fell from the balcony. This time, he was injured by an assassin. It was all thanks to her. Otherwise, they would never have seen him again. The girl wondered if they had lived with her for so many days and nothing had happened. Then his cell phone rang. The boy apologized and said he had to take the call. And the girl asked him not to say such things because he was not that kind of person. He answered the phone to Dr. Joe, after which he apologized to her explaining that he had wet his phone in the morning and it was being repaired. The girls realized it was Joe's sister calling. Maybe she wants to be married for saving him. Lin Mu's face changed. He began to ask what they wanted. What happened to Dr. Joe? The voice on the phone replied that if he didn't want anything to happen to her, then he should immediately come to the third floor of Ying Huang Chaoj. His bro would be waiting there. Lin Mu asked who they were, but a short beep was heard on the phone. The friends asked the kid what happened. Wasn't it Dr. Joe who called? Lin Mu explained that Dr. Joe seems to have been kidnapped and he must rescue her. The girls exclaimed that it was very dangerous. What if he got trapped? The police should be informed first. But the kid replied that the police shouldn't be called at any cost. The kidnappers wouldn't be nice to Dr. Joe then. He asked for permission to meet those people first. And so, half an hour later, Lin Mu went to the meeting his kidnapper had arranged for him. The guy at the door asked who he was and if he had an appointment here. Lin Mu replied that he had come to meet their boss and asked him to take him to him. The guy started asking who he was again. Or he thinks if he wants to meet the boss, he can just walk in on him. Lin Mu grabbed his hand and explained that it was their boss who asked him to come. If the meeting was delayed because of him, he wouldn't get away with it. And then he let go of the guy's hand, and he started to lead him down the hall to the boss. He explained to his boss that he had a visitor. When the kid went inside, the man asked if he was Lin Mu. Dr. Zhou was sitting on a chair with her hands bound and her mouth taped shut. Lin Mu saw the doctor and realized that none of this was a joke. He told the man that it didn't matter what his goals were. He asked him to let her go first and then talk to her. Isn't capturing a woman considered a meritorious feat in the underworld? The boss replied that he was thinking about Lin Mu's insufferable personality. It turns out to be their pretty boy. It would be too easy money. The men began to surround Lin Mu from all sides. The boy said that he didn't want to waste time here and asked to attack all of them at once. The men called him a scoundrel, and they promised to show him their technique quickly. But Lin Mu immediately scattered everyone on the floor. The others couldn't understand what he had just done. The boss started to get nervous and asked why they were all frozen. He gave the command to all pile on top of him together. Lin Mu called his boys a herd of sheep, but they asked him not to be arrogant. He doesn't believe such a crowd can't overpower him alone. So he gave the command to surround him anew. The guys were just punching in the air. Dr. Joe noticed that Lin Mu is a high-level cultivator. Dispelling these little bipeds was too easy for him. The kid noticed that these people couldn't take even one hit from him. He walked over to the doctor and began to untie her. He apologized for being a little late and for her getting hurt because of him. The boss couldn't understand how it was possible. He had handled everyone in such a short time. Lin Mu replied that they were too weak. He asked if he would be stronger than them. Then the boss pulled out a gun and pointed it at the kid. He asked if Lin Mu thought that being good at Kung Fu was enough to become invincible. He doesn't believe that the kid will be able to dodge those bullets. Lin Mu replied that he really wasn't faster than a bullet, but it was enough for him to be faster than it. The boss wouldn't stop pointing his weapon at him and exclaimed that he was very stubborn, for which he would die even faster. But the kid made a move on the man's arm. He shot the man in the leg with his gun. He fell to the floor and asked what kind of man he was. Lin Mu said that he had ordered him to come. Doesn't he know who he is? The boss asked him to let him go. He promised to pay him back soon. But the kid replied that he definitely didn't need him to pay him. He then jabbed his finger into his forehead and said he wanted him to pay for everything he had done immediately. Then the man turned dumbfounded. Dr. Joe inquired what he had just done to him. 
The kid explained that he was just using a little yin to seal his yang. Just helped him wake up. Just then they heard someone's exclamation, as if the place was very lively. The man with the glasses exclaimed that the kid was really strong for putting down so many people at once. Lin Mu decided to inquire about who this man was. He introduced himself as Shen Zhuguang. He explained that this was his friend's place and he was making a mess. It's hard for him to work here. Lin Mu realized that he was the boss of Wang Shiqing, the chief of the Municipal Public Security Bureau. The man said he would take him to the bureau for questioning about intentional injury and asked to come with him. Lin Mu explained that all these people were defeated by him. It had nothing to do with this girl. If he wanted to apprehend someone, he should apprehend them, and that would be enough. Dr. Zhou was worried about him, but the boy asked her to calm down and promised that he would be fine. The man exclaimed that he was in charge of the case. Since when did he tell him what to do? Then he gave the command to grab them all. Lin Mu wanted to reply, but the girl calmed him down. The guys asked the two of them to head for the exit. Lin Mu apologized to Dr. Zhou for getting her involved. She asked what was all this talk about anyway. After all, she was the one who should be thanking him for saving her. Some fat guy came in and asked what was going on. He recognized the kid as Brother Lin. He wondered what he was doing here. Afterward, he asked the guys who they were and where they were taking Brother Lin. The guys explained that the police were working. The man was under suspicion and was asked to mind his own business. Lin Mu mumbled that the fat man was just in time and asked him to take a piece of paper. The fat man asked what it was. The kid told him to call the number a little later and tell that man about his arrest. He has high hopes for him. We have the Dunhai Public Security Bureau in front of us. The officer told Joe that that kid surnamed Lin had already confessed everything, so she could leave. The girl explained to the police officer that the other party had actually started first. The man asked her to stop and promised to look into the matter. Dr. Joe began to ask where Lin Mu is now and what's going to happen to him. Meanwhile, at the detention center, someone wanted to teach someone a lesson. Lin Mu mumbled that he wanted to rest. The guy he punched must have already realized that he shouldn't be disturbed. The guys surrounded the kid who was lying on the floor. He asked them not to stand still but rather attack Lin Mu. They asked the kid not to be so arrogant. Lin Mu decided to let him take one hit, but asked him not to regret it. The boy howled in pain, grabbing his arm. A man standing nearby noticed that this guy is not easy. He's obviously a good fighter. He then decided to teach him a lesson himself and began to attack Lin Mu. Lin Mu mumbled a surprise lunge to the chest from above and a punch to the stomach from below. It looked like he had studied martial arts as well. But the boy threw him to the floor. He exclaimed that he was too weak to fight him. The guy admitted he was really strong. The boys couldn't understand how it was possible. Brother Juan, who fights the best, was defeated by this boy. Meanwhile, on the phone, a man asked Shen Zhuguang why he had grabbed Lin Mu. The man responded to Mr. Li that this guy hurt people and he was just acting according to the rules and regulations. Mr. Li asked him not to be so formal with him. This Lin Mu is not someone they can touch. He gave the command to quickly let him go. The man wanted to argue, so he mentioned the Yan family. Mr. Li replied that he understood why he suddenly went against that guy, because it was the Yan family. He went on to explain that if something happened to this kid, even the ten Yan families wouldn't save his head. The man started to call Mr. Li, but the man hung up. He really wondered how it was that the Central Bureau chief had actually allowed him to let the man go. What kind of strength did Lin Mu possess after all? The officer put on his cap and asked Xiao Liu to follow him to the detention center rather. When Xiao Liu asked Mr. Shengt what happened, he told him not to ask. After all, this time, the Yan family had set them up badly. In the Yan family's house, the man told the wise master that he had fulfilled his request. The head of the central bureau called Shen Zhuguang, after which Li Yaozhong released Lin Mu from custody. The man was very surprised how Li Yaozhong knew that kid. The staff member explained that Li Yaozhong didn't know Lin Mu at all. He had one more phone conversation before calling Shen Zhuguang, where he received his release order. Yan exclaimed, How is it that someone is able to give orders to Li Yaozhong? Who on earth is trying to protect Lin Mu? The staff member apologized that it was impossible to find out this information. He explained that their conversation was encrypted, and if they tried to decipher this information, they might be detected. Yan mumbled that they couldn't retreat now, he must die immediately. After that, he gave orders to contact the Black Spikes and make an assassination order. This time, they can't let Lin Mu escape. The staff member replied that he would definitely contact them again. Let's go back to the Public Security Bureau Dunhai Investigation Detention Center again. Mr. Lin was told it was all a misunderstanding. The officer hoped he wouldn't take it personally. The kid asked if he could go, to which the officer replied that of course he could. 
A fat man met him in the street. He was happy to be released at last. He heard his brother was doing well and came to get him. He offered to celebrate his release. You can do it at the Hilton, for example. They can order anything there. Lin Mu wondered why such generosity, if he was up to something. The fatty replied that of course not. Such a pleasure was only for him, for Brother Lin. Thirty minutes later at the Hilton Hotel, the fat man brought Brother Lin to the cafe. They were greeted by the restaurant staff and led to a table. Fatty suggested that Brother Lin look at the menu and take what he liked. The kid replied that he wasn't very good at picking out food and asked the fat guy to do it, to which the guy replied that in that case let him blame himself. The fat man ordered foie gras with caviar, crab and curry sauce and steamed lobster. Meanwhile, Lin Mu asked the hotel employee if she could tell him where the restroom was. The girl asked for permission to show him in. She explained that the restroom was in front on his left side. There were people sitting in another food hall in the hotel. A man told Mrs. Yao that they had invited her here tonight to discuss the lead role for his new movie. Had she read the script? Mrs. Yao replied to Mr. Wang that she read it and liked it. She also has no questions about the contract, but can she find out who will be the lead actor in this movie? Mr. Wang replied that they have not yet chosen a person for the lead role. Does she have any references? And the girl said that based on the content of the script, she thinks it would have been better if they put a newcomer in the lead role. She has a man who is perfect for the role, but she is not sure he would be interested. Mr. Wang inquired as to who he is. Mrs. Yao explained that she met him at her concert. Then she tried to invite him on stage to sing with her, but he refused and it was awkward. An hour later, Lin Mu told the fatty that the food was wonderful. The guy replied that he was glad he liked it and asked to go here next time. A guy and a girl were walking towards them. She asked Lin Mu what he was doing here. Lin Mu was surprised to meet Yao Xianxian here. Fatty recognized her as a famous superstar. He didn't expect that she knew Brother Lin so well. Yao told the principal that this was the guy she was talking about and asked what he thought of him. Mr. Wang said it's not bad and she has good taste. He's good looking, poised, perfect for the protagonist of his movie. He turned to the young man and asked if they could talk. He promised that it wouldn't take too long. The fatty replied instead of Lin Mu that they had plenty of time today and could discuss it somewhere. He explained to Brother Lin that these were big shots in the entertainment industry. Talking to them could be useful. The kid agreed, after which the attendant took them to a table. Yao introduced Hua Xia and Mr. Wang, the famous investors, to Lin Mu. The kid immediately shook the man's hand and said hello to him. Mr. Wang greeted the boy. They introduced screenwriter Huang Shu Yue, producer Wang Zhang, and director Feng Yufan to him. Yao took a seat at the table and told Lin Mu that she would get straight to the point. They would like to discuss something together with him. The boy asked her to continue. She began to explain that Mr. Wang was getting ready to make a new movie, and she recommended him as an actor for the lead role in that film. Fatty was shocked. Did he really not miss here and they want Brother Lin to do a movie? The director replied that it was true. Yao thinks he is perfect for this role in terms of his looks and character. It's as if this role was specially made up for him. Lin Mu laughed and said that he didn't know what to do. He is studying history. The principal began to explain that life is like a show. It all depends on how he acts in life. The acting is just a variation of life. Miss Yao will be starring in this movie with him. He is sure that this movie will be a big hit. Lin Mu replied that it wasn't too right. That if he failed, wouldn't it then be a waste of time and effort? Yao asked the kid to do her a favor. She really can't believe that someone else will be able to do it. And asked him not to worry. The principal and her will help him. Fatty advised Brother Lin to just give it a try. Everyone has something for the first time sometime. Who knows, maybe he would discover his acting talent. The girl supported the fat man. A lot of stars didn't go to acting school. In the course of their lives, they stumbled into the entertainment industry and became world famous. Lin Mu replied that since they were all talking about it like that, he would try it. But he asked for permission to warn them that if it went wrong, they should not blame him for it. The director exclaimed that in that case they had a deal and asked him not to worry. He would have no problem with the movie he would be making. He asked Mr. Lin if he was free tomorrow and asked him to sign the contract. The boy replied that he was free and asked what time. The man handed him an invitation for 10 o'clock in the afternoon and asked him to come to the address. Lin Mu took the address and after thanking him replied that he understood it. He promised to be there tomorrow. It was the morning of the next day. Lin Mu came to the designated address. The man asked him to look at the contract. If everything suited him, he asked him to sign. The kid replied to Mr. Wang that there was no problem with the contract and the terms were pretty reasonable. Afterwards, 
Mr. Wong shook his hand, hoping that they would work together. The boy thanked him for giving him a chance. Yao asked Lin Mu if it was okay if there was an audition later. The boy replied that he agreed. Just let them prepare everything well. The principal exclaimed that in that case they would start right away and asked Mr. Lin to follow him, and so they set up the lights. The third camera was in place. The director gave Mr. Lin the script and asked him to try to play the role. While he was studying it, he asked to try to find out the psychological state of the character. Lin Mu thought about the fact that although he had never acted in a drama, playing a character's emotional state in the real world was a mere trifle for him. The man asked the kid how to prepare himself to say it. Yao exclaimed that he could definitely handle it, at the same time at Lin Mu's house. Someone was talking about Mr. Wang Xiaokun. Lin Mu's friend exclaimed that he is the most famous movie TV investor in China. All the movies he likes will be sold out in no time. The second girl said that Mr. Wang is definitely a unique person. It is unclear why he needs Lin Mu. Her friend agreed with her. After all, he is not a movie professional, nor does he have any experience in the field. Maybe it's some kind of conspiracy. Lin Mu said that he would be personally recommended to Yao Xianxian. She was actually a star and had no need with a mere student. Why did she choose him? I'm sure the two of them are definitely dating. He didn't come back for a long time last time. Her friend exclaimed that this made her doubt even more. If the boy betrayed them, she would have to teach him a lesson. And here it was 30 minutes later. Lin Mu sitting on his knees held his hand over his heart and asked him not to leave him. Afterwards, having played his part, he asked those around him how he had just played. The director exclaimed that he was an honored genius and it was great. Lin Mu asked Sister Yao if she thought he could play with her. Yao told the kid that he was born to be an actor. With his acting skills, he could play with anyone. That same night, Yao told Lin Mu that it was just a cafe dinner and there was no need for so many courtesies. She said his play this morning was amazing and wondered what the secret was. The kid replied to Sister Yao that she was over-praising him. It's experience, and that's all. The girl remarked that it wasn't just about the wealth of experience. She asked him not to be modest after all. He was a martial artist. She wondered if she was right. Lin Mu was very surprised and asked how she knew about it. The girl explained that her family has a bit of a connection, so it's pretty easy to find something she's interested in. He's pretty famous now, which is known to quite a few people. The case involving the Central Security Bureau had already put him on the radar of many powerful families. Lin Mu was flattered by her words. He thought about the fact that he had only asked Xing Wei Long to call Bao Luntan. I didn't realize their influence would be so strong. It only took an hour to get a full background check on him. Yao said that the powerful families are currently confused, guessing who is really behind his back. Lin Mu explained that these people did make up a lot of things. He is only a student. There is no one behind him. Yao began to ask again. Is there really no one powerful behind his back? How then did he force Li Yaojun to obey the order and let the men go? To which the kid hesitated and asked her who Li Yaojong was. Yao was even more surprised. Doesn't he know who he is? Yao exclaimed that there was apparently no limit to his cunning. A person of such a level as Li Yaojong could easily relieve him of any responsibility. And he doesn't even know a person like him. Lin Mu realized that this Li Yaojong must not be simple at all. Yao replied that of course it is not simple. He's actually the head of the Central Public Security Bureau and oversees the National Public Security System. However, even if he had some experience, still some people dare to play with fire. The kid asked if Yao's family started those rumors. Yao replied that according to the data she had gotten, the person who almost killed him last time was an elite cultivator. He was secretly raised by the Yan family. This man is codenamed Ching Shi. She won't say anything about his abilities because he has seen it all himself. Lin Mu said that it was indeed an assassin sent by the Yan family. No wonder Shi Tu Xiu told him to beware of him. Yao said that after the previous failed assassination, the Yan family invited a stronger master from Shuizi. They say they are from Europe and will be here in two days. Lin Mu asked how on earth the Yao family knew so much confidential information. The girl explained that even if he asked, she wouldn't tell. Even though he is strong, but still caution is paramount. He asked why she was warning him about it. The girl replied that because he had the lead male role in the movie. If he dies, who will she play with? Lin Mu decided that it wasn't really like she said. He thinks that the Yao family has also noticed his real strength. But unlike the Yan family, they probably want to win him over to their side. The next day. Ying Xuan Chaoj. Lin Mu thought to himself that since the murderer was still walking around, he should certainly shun them. But he can't leave it to the common people. Two guys stopped him and apologized and said they weren't accepting anyone today and they wouldn't open the door. 
Lin Mu thought that if no one opened the door, it was even better. The fewer people, the fewer witnesses. The guys started to get indignant. They asked him if he was going to leave by himself or go by ambulance. Just then, some man appeared and apologized to Mr. Lin. He explained that they just didn't understand anything. He called himself Wu Qian Ming. He explained that he was in charge of security and asked them to follow him. He told his boys that they were too brave to stop Mr. Lin. He asked them to apologize to the guy, which they immediately did. The guy forgave them because they were just following the rules. Wu Chen Ming asked Mr. Lin Mu if he came by today because there was some free time. The boss's men wondered who this Mr. Lin was. His companion replied that he didn't know, but the kid certainly didn't look like a small-time bastard. Wu Chen Ming told Lin that today was a little unlucky because some brothers right now were discussing the redistribution of territory again. To which the kid said that's just fine. He's got an idea. The man explained to Lin that the brothers were here and it was not convenient for him to come in. So he asked to see. Lin Mu understood and decided to go in himself. He knocked on the door, after which he pushed her, and apologizing for disturbing her started to enter. He explained to the people sitting inside that he had some business to discuss with them all today. One of the men asked who he was. He noticed that the boy had no manners. The man asked someone to come and shoot the boy. But the second man looked at the boy and recognized him as Mr. Lin. He asked him what he had come for. Another guy asked Brother Ji who he was. Ji remembered how he had been warned to never provoke Lin Mu, or else there wouldn't even be anything to bury. He replied to the guy that his name was Lin Mu. Even Shen Zhu respects him. A man walked up to the kid and apologized for what had just happened. He asked Lin Mu to sit down. Lin Mu asked the guys not to look at each other like that. He understood exactly what they were thinking. One of the men told the kid he had it all wrong. They had been playing Mahjong late last night, so their eyelids were twitching a little. Lin Mu asked them not to worry. He wasn't here to share territory with them. He came today to ask them for a favor. The guys told Mr. Lin that if he had any business to attend to, he could just report it. Why did you have to come? Lin Mu replied that it was because the matter was not convenient to discuss over the phone. It would be better to discuss it in person. The boy started to pull something out of his sinus. Lin Mu explained that a European would soon appear in the eastern port city and he was a professional killer. He needed their help to find him. One of the men asked if he had any distinguishing features. Lin Mu replied that he wasn't sure, only knowing that he was from Europe and would enter the city within the next few days. They need to follow all the foreigners arriving. The man scratched his beard and replied to the boy that it would be quite difficult. The other agreed with him. After all, there are many foreigners entering from the East Sea every day. If they don't know what he looks like, it would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Plus. Tracking down a killer can be dangerous and cost lives. Lin Mu explained that he understood their worries, so the greater the danger, the greater the reward. He opened the box he had taken out of his pocket. As long as they would help him with the search for the killer, he promised they would get a pill like this. One of the guys asked young Master Lin what it was. Then the kid asked who here had the courage to demonstrate the power of this pill. The men began to think, and then one of them dared to raise his hand. He asked young Master Lin what he should do. The kid asked him to take off his clothes and turn his back to everyone. The man obeyed and undressed and turned his back. Lin Mu asked him not to move now. He noticed that the man seemed to be a former soldier, so he should be able to withstand his attack. He asked him to bear with him for a little while and held up two fingers in the air. The man closed his eyes and motioned for the kid to act. The guy started asking Master Lin what he was doing. The man's body glowed with a kind of yellow light. One of them told the guys to shut up and better watch what happens next. The kid asks everyone to watch. He takes a small portion of the pill on purpose to show them. Just a small piece and the wound he left on the man's back immediately heals. Can they really see it? The wound healed right before their eyes. Lin Mu mumbled that everyone had seen its effectiveness. As long as they are breathing, this pill will save their lives. Lin Mu asked the man if his name is Wu Qian Ming. The man replied, looking intently into his eyes that it was him. Lin Mu called Wu Qian Ming a real man and handed him this pill. But the man replied to the young master, then it was too much and he couldn't take her. Another kid came up to him and asked if he was really willing to give this miracle pill to them. Lin Mu was glad that they understood the importance of this pill. For those who walked the blade every day, nothing was more important than their lives. He could see in their eager eyes that they were up to the task. Wu Tianming asked young Master Lin if he could talk to him. The kid immediately agreed and asked what the matter was. The man replied that there were too many eyes here and asked him to find another place to talk. He took him to the lower hallway and said the young master was a strong man, why he was asking others for help instead of taking the territory for himself. Lin Mu apologized 
and said that he wasn't interested and didn't want to be involved. Wu Qianming said that young Master Lin had a low opinion of them, but since he turned to them, it means he needs the help of people like them and can't entrust the job to anyone else. The kid asked him to get to the point sooner rather than later and stop beating around the bush. The man then explained that he had been part of the underground world for years and did not want to work for anyone else. His brothers have been with him for a long time, but they've accomplished nothing and he's let them down. His arrival is the perfect chance to change that. Lin Mu realized that the man was asking for his help to upgrade his gang. Wu Tianming explained that if they fought them head-on, and it would end in a loss for all of them. Therefore, he hoped that Master Lin would support him from behind the scenes. Lin Mu replied that he had already said that he didn't want to be involved. The man explained that he didn't need to do anything. He would handle everything in his own way. When he succeeds, he can ask him for anything he wants. Lin Mu realized that the man wanted to use his name to intimidate him. As long as he didn't clarify it, no one would know the truth. He replied to Wu Tianming that he had earned his respect, since he didn't need to do anything to help. He didn't mind. Wu Tianming was overjoyed, a smile never leaving his lips. Lin Mu said goodbye to him and exclaimed that he would be clean. The boy asked not to look for him unless it was something important. The man immediately thanked the kid, saying goodbye in return. And now night has fallen. In front of us is Lin Mu's house. The kid finally came home. One of the girls asked why he was home so late. Lin Mu explained that he went to see his friends after the audition, and when he came to his senses it was so late. One of the girls asked if he got the part. Lin Mu replied that he had received it, and all that was left to do was wait for their call. The girl hugged him gladly, for she believed he could do it. She knew her idol had excellent taste. Another friend told Zixi that she had changed quickly, because this afternoon she was imagining things. Zixi asked him not to listen to her. She might be a fan of Yao Xian Xian, but if she just wants to have fun with him, she won't just let her. Lin Mu asked Zixi not to overreact. She just wants to do a good job. Zixi replied that it's only been a day and he's already protecting her, after which the girl began to cry. After all, Lin Mu's heart is stolen and he doesn't want them anymore. It was a bright sunny day. The hot sun was shining over the green lotus mountain. Some guy greeted Ling Sheng, happy that he had come. Ling Sheng immediately hugged Lan Shi, replying that they hadn't seen each other for a long time, and he missed him too. But he wondered a bit why he was the one who missed the guy. It was the Hong family's eldest son, Hong Ling Sheng. Lan Shi asked if he missed him or the thing he had. The kid replied that he caught it. His parents gave birth to him, raised him, but he knows him better. Ling Sheng asked for permission to introduce one person to him. This is Lin Tiannan. He is from the capital and is here for a vacation. He is just an incredible guy. They immediately shook hands. Ling Tian mumbled that this compliment was too much and he was just an ordinary guy. Lun Shi asked Brother Tiannan not to be so modest. He realized at a glance that the brother was very important. Ling Sheng exclaimed that he had long dreamed of tasting tea in the fragrant abode and beckoned them to climb the mountain. Lun Shi motioned for them to follow him, and here before us is a mountain of green lotus, a fragrant abode. Lan Shi explained that everyone in the Eastern Sea had heard of the fragrant abode tea. Today is Brother Tiannan's lucky day. Tiannan replied that he definitely needed to try it. They were met by a girl. She realized that the guys wanted to try the tea and asked to follow her. The girl led them into the room. There was a man sitting at one of the tables enjoying tea. Brother Tiannan asked, looking at those happy faces. He couldn't wait to taste the tea as well. The girl asked if she could find out which tea they wanted to try today. Just then, some woman walked into the room. She asked if it was the young Master Hong and Lin. The girl exclaimed that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. She was the boss of Xu Yu's fragrant abode. Ling Sheng told her that it had been a year since they last met, and she was still as young and beautiful as ever. They explained that they had come for tea and would not disturb her. Xu Yu replied that the two of them were such nice conversationalists and asked for a chat to start with, and tea would be served soon. Brother Tian Nan mumbled that he had noticed something interesting while they were in the fragrant abode. Tea in the flavorful abode is certainly good, but not as good as her boss. Lan Shi noticed that Brother Tian Nan had a sharp mind and was able to quickly understand the cunning workings of this establishment. The brother replied that this sexy body is the queen's demeanor, a great rarity. Ling Sheng realized that his brother had a crush on Sister Yu. The kid continued that the girl's figure was amazing and he couldn't stop thinking about her now. The guy said it was rare to meet like this and suggested we find another place. Suddenly some car stopped near them. When it stopped, it made a whistling noise. Jisi got out of the car. She said that she seemed to have set a new record. Lin Mu got out of the car and told his friend that her driving was too fierce. He felt nauseous and dizzy. 
Lon Shir looked in their direction and wondered if Lin Mu was in front of him. He wondered if he was still alive. Ling Sheng asked Lan Shir if that beautiful girl was his friend. The kid replied that he didn't know and asked to move on. He decided to see how long Lin Mu's luck would last. Lin Mu in turn recognized young master Lan, who was eager for his death. He decided to make him pay for it sooner or later. Zushi asked the kid what he was stuck on and told him to move on. Lin Mu asked his friend if this was the place she was talking about. Apart from the serenity around here, there is nothing unusual. The girl laughed and replied that he didn't know that. The fragrant abode is the best place for tea in the whole eastern world. Lots of people come here because of this, and most of them don't even get a chance to try the tea here. Lin Mu was surprised. If it was as she claimed, he couldn't wait to see it. And here they were met by a girl pouring tea for a visitor. She said hello to the guests. Zixi inquired of her if her sister was here. The girl replied that here suggested going straight to the second floor. Lin Mu realized that Zixi was here often, and even the staff knew her. The girl explained that the boss of the fragrant abode was her best friend. The boss came out to meet her when she heard her voice. She asked why Zixi was visiting her today. The girl replied that she had brought a friend to introduce her. Lin Mu sensed that Sister Yu is also a cultivator, but from her pale face and weak steps, he believes that she has used too much chi recently. Zixi asked Sister Yu why she was so pale and introduced her brother-in-law to her. Yu asked her not to talk about it. His illness had been returning more and more often in recent days. She used all her chi to help him. Lin Mu said hello to Sister Yu and immediately introduced himself. The girl replied that he looked unusual and called Zixi a lucky girl. Zixi explained that they were just friends. She brought him to try the flower tea she had created. Sister Yu called her a bad girl since she only has eyes for her flower tea. Zixi replied that it's because her tea is the best in the world. Sister Yu asked the guests to sit down while she prepared tea. Zixi immediately thanked her friend. Lin Mu noticed that Sister Yu was an unusual person. He asked why she was stuck here in the fragrant abode. Zixi explained that she wasn't sure about it. When she met her, Sister Yu was already the boss of the fragrant abode. Lin Mu mumbled that she uses a lot of chi. He could guess that her husband's condition wasn't very good either. Zixi explained that she has been using chi to suppress his strange illness for the past few years. It looked like her chi would soon stop working. Lin Mu wondered what kind of disease it was. Is there no one in the world who can cure it? Zixi replied that if they could find the divine doctor Mu Renkin, they could cure. But the world is so huge, how could they even look for him? Lin Mu thought to himself, this is Teacher Zhou. Could a little radiance cure her husband's strange illness? Lin Mu began to tell his friend about who Mu Renkin was. That's when the kid flinched. He felt that someone had attacked Yu's sister. The two men approached Shu Yu and talked about finally getting their chance. She must have spent a lot of energy on her husband's injury. Shu Yu lying on the floor replied that if she hadn't expended her chi recently, the two of them wouldn't have been her rivals. One of the guys admitted he wasn't as strong as she was. But victory isn't just about strength. It's also about cunning. Just then, Zixi and Lin Mu ran into the room. They asked if she was all right. The girl asked them to leave quickly, not to come any closer under any circumstances. Zixi clenched her fists and asked how dare they hurt Sister Yu. She wouldn't let anyone leave. One of the guys mumbled that those were serious words in that case. No one was to leave and they would all stay here. One of them clenched his fists and exclaimed that he would attack first. Zixi noticed that this guy was too fast and she wouldn't be able to dodge. Suddenly, Lin Mu appeared in front of her. He grabbed his opponent's arm. The guy couldn't understand what was going on. Lin Mu asked how he could be so rude to the lady, after which he gave him a hold and threw him to the floor. Sister Yu noticed that Lin Mu's chi was very strong. She didn't expect the kid to be such a high-level master. He defeated this guy in one move. The other man clenched his fists, asking how dare he hurt his youngest. He would pay for this with his life. The man called the kid a dead man. He threw some needles at him. Nurse Yu told the kid to be careful as the needles have poison on them. Lin Mu wondered if that was all he had and called his tricks too petty. Yu was surprised that the kid was so young but had already learned how to control his chi to such an extent. Lin Mu returned all the needles back to him with his strength. Many needles flew into the man's face. He exclaimed that he must hurry and take the antidote. But why can't he open the bottle? The antidote bottle wouldn't open. Yu exclaimed that people like him didn't deserve to live in this world and he could go to hell. Falling to the floor, the man exclaimed that he would not let her go even after death. Zixi ran up to Sister Yu and asked if she was okay. The girl replied that she was fine, just a minor internal injury. She will recover after a few days of rest. Lin Mu asked Sister Yu who these two people were. The girl replied that they were Lian Chen's older and younger brothers. 
Zixi was very surprised by her answer. Yu began to explain that they held a grudge since Lian Cheng was the only one who had received true teachings from their teacher. They attacked while he was cultivating, causing his chiai to be in disarray, and he almost died from it. Zixi exclaimed that they were both very mean. They deserved to die. Yu replied that Lian Cheng had decided to forgive them since they were from the same sect, but they refused to let them go until now. Lin Mu told his sister that they had attacked her stealthily when they knew that she was now weakened. The girl replied that she was. Lian Chen's qi is becoming restless with each new day. She is no longer able to suppress it. Zixi asked Sister Yu if she had received any news about Dr. Mu Renqing. Lin Mu said that they didn't need to look for him anymore. Dr. Mu passed away more than ten years ago. GC asked me not to talk nonsense. Dr. Mu is just a hermit. They will definitely find him. Sister Yu exclaimed that she had suspected this for a long time since there had been no news from him for a long time. Zixi asked Sister Yu not to give up. Even if they can't find a doctor, there must be other ways to cure the cousin. Sister Yu thanked the girl for her kind words. Based on what she knows, only Dr. Mu's slight radiance can save Lian Chen. Lin Mu told Nurse Yu that just because Dr. Mu was dead didn't mean that his techniques were also lost. Lin Mu explained to Sister Yu that it just so happened that he was able to learn his secret techniques. If she wanted, he could take a look at her husband. He might be able to save him. Zushi told the kid that it's a matter of life and death and it's not a joke at all. Sister Yu asked him to save Lian Chen. She told Zixi that Lin Mu may be young, but he is very skillful and she believes his words. The girl opened a secret passage to the dungeon and asked to follow her. Zixi exclaimed that she didn't know there was an underground passage. Nurse Yu explained that she had arranged for Lian Chen to stay in a hidden room down here for convenience. The girl led the kid inside and showed her husband who was lying on the bed. He hadn't woken up since the last time she'd used Qi to heal him. The girl tearfully begged to save him. Lin Mu checked the man's pulse first. Zixi squeezed her hands and asked the kid how his condition was. Lin Mu closed his eyes and sighed heavily. He mumbled that his condition was worse than he thought. He wasn't sure if he could save him. Sister Yu began to plead tearfully to save Lian Chen. No matter the outcome, she hopes that he can at least try. Lin Mu asked to prepare a set of silver needles for him. Yu was surprised at what he needed the needles for. The kid explained that he would try to use the divine doctor's techniques to save him. Nurse Yu immediately went to get the needles. Lin Mu looked at the sick man and thought that this was their first meeting, but fate had brought them together. He would do his best to save him. The boy asked Zixi to go back upstairs. When asked why, he explained that he needed to undress the patient to find his acupuncture points. Sister Yu brought the needles and asked if this set of needles would fit. Lin Mu replied that it would. He asked the girl to get away from him when he did the acupuncture, so she wouldn't come any closer, so she wouldn't see him. The kid thought about the fact that this was the first time he'd ever used a low glow. As he approached the patient, he decided to take a chance. And now, everything around the patient glowed. Lin Mu tossed the needles as high as he could. Sister Yu saw the silver needles turn to silver light and float around Lian Chen's body. Lin Mu noticed that infusing qi into the needles made controlling them easier. Sister Yu noticed that he had incredible speed. Even she can't see the movements of the needles, let alone the average person. Lin Mu thought about the fact that doing acupuncture with such speed and precision required great concentration and controlling so many needles at once. It is also a test of your ability to control your qi. Sister Yu thought about what she had cultivated for many years, but she hadn't reached this kind of control yet. It's on a different level. Lin Mu began to use the celestial star cloud. Her husband's body immediately lit up. The girl noticed that this light was like stars in the sky. The room was very beautiful. Lin Mu sat in the lotus posture and said, It's done. He continued to meditate. Yu approached him and told him that his qi was unstable. She asked for permission to give him her qi. Lin Mu replied that he was fine and asked him to take better care of his husband. The girl immediately walked over to Lian Cheng and called his name. She noticed his face wasn't as pale as it used to be. His pulse, his trauma, all gone. Yu asked her husband to try to control her qi. Lian Chen asked the girl not to cry. Lin Mu told Nurse Yu that the treatment was successful and her husband would recover after a short rest. The girl exclaimed that it was unbelievable. She doesn't know how she can thank him. Lian Chen told his wife that he could accumulate qi again. Yu explained to her husband that the doctor had died and Lin Mu was the one who had saved him. The man looked at the kid and called him a young hero of the new generation. He asked me to help him up. After all, he should thank his savior. Lin Mu told Mr. Please and explained that his body was still weak and he'd better not get up. The man promised Lin Mu's brother when his body recovered to come and thank him in person. Zixi told Lin Mu that he had spent too much qi by curing Sister Yu's husband. 
Taking his friend, the girl mumbled that she was now worried about him. Lin Mu replied that he was fine. Saving Brother Chi is a good deed. He will recover in a couple of days. The kid's friend thanked him without letting go of his hand. But then suddenly someone shot straight at Lin Mu's chest. It was a sneak attack. They must have realized it was the perfect time to attack. Zixi exclaimed that they were sneaky bastards. She began to look around. The girl realized that to hit the kid from that distance it had to be a sniper. She should check his condition sooner rather than later and get him out of here immediately. But the bullet went through the shoulder blade and exited through the chest a millimeter from the heart. If Lin Mu didn't dodge in time, the bullet would have gone through his heart. Zixi mumbled that she stopped the bleeding through the acupuncture points and asked him to hold on as long as possible. The girl brought the kid to the city of the Eastern Sea, the city's first hospital. The patient was losing too much blood. The doctors were prepping the OR. Zixi asked Dr. Joe to save Lin Mu. The girl asked her not to worry. She promised to do her best to save the kid. And here it was, five hours later. Dr. Joe asked Lin Mu to hold on. She promised to save him. The operation continued. The patient's blood pressure and heart rate are normal. The surgery was successful. It was a great job. The staff member told the doctor that the surgery was successful because of her. Dr. Joe thanked him and mumbled that it was a team effort and everyone was trying. She still needs to follow up on the patient's condition. She asked the boys to go rest. The boy finally woke up. Dr. Joe wondered why he was so unconcerned, if it was another sneak attack. Lin Mu explained that it was an accident, and he had spent a lot of chi while practicing acupuncture to save someone. After that, he lost his guard and was attacked. Zixi's friend was attacked during cultivation, causing his chi to become unstable. He used acupuncture to heal his wounds, but he didn't think it was such a debilitating process. Dr. Joe asked what technique he used. The kid replied that he used the celestial star cloud of the small radiance. The girl exclaimed that it was high-level acupuncture. It looked like his mastery of low-level radiance would surprise her. Lin Mu replied that it was all thanks to Dr. Joe's instructions. That was why he was able to master it so quickly. The girl asked him not to be modest, for he could use this technique and help many more people than her. Her teacher in heaven must be happy to see that. Meanwhile, the Yan family was surprised that the kid was still alive. The son went into his father's office and asked him what was wrong, why he was so angry. Yan replied that they had just received the news that Lin Mu had been saved in the hospital. He had managed to escape death once again. Lan Shur was surprised that even the Black Throne assassins had failed. The employee informed the gentleman that the Black Throne had indicated that they wished to return 90% of the commission in order to abandon this mission. The boss was very surprised because he's not dead yet and they already want to back out. The man explained that the Black Throne has a rule. Whether successful or not, they only attack the target once. Yan exclaimed that this is ridiculous. They are the powerful Yan family. They can't handle some little brat. My son had an idea on how to take care of this brat. Let's go back to the city of the Eastern Sea, the first city hospital. Lin Mu had a visitor. He asked which ward the boy was in. It was his friend, the fat man. He was surprised that there were so many guards in the corridor. The guys explained that the young master was injured because they were careless. Who knew they would hire a sniper? The fatty realized that Huang Chao Gei had sent guards to protect Lin Mu's brother. One of the armed guys asked the other if he knew what kind of person this patient was, that the commissioner had sent them to guard him. An officer passing by asked why they cared. Following orders is a soldier's duty. He asked them to just follow orders and do their job. The boys immediately obeyed the captain and stopped asking questions. Fatty was shocked that even the special forces were here. Brother Lin's circle of acquaintances had grown too large. The kid's friend asked the fat man what had kept him so long on his way here. Better hurry up and get into the ward as soon as possible. The fat man asked the girl why the SWAT team was guarding Lin Mu's brother. Zhuan Rong explained that her godfather had sent them. They are the best soldiers on the East Sea. The fat man asked if she really had the troops for such a thing and who her godfather was. The girl replied that it was a secret. The friends gathered around Lin Mu. They asked him to guess who had come to visit him. The boy immediately answered that it was a fat man. The fat man exclaimed as he entered the room that he was very glad his friend was all right. He rushed here as soon as he got the call. Zixi mumbled that they had actually told him about it three hours ago, and she remembered that his house wasn't that far from here. Dr. Joe said that everything was fine. It was getting late and she asked her friends to let Lin Mu have a good rest. The fat man exclaimed that he had just arrived. Xuan Rong replied that he should be punished for being late. Lin Mu thanked the guy for his concern, but explained that he was really tired today. Zixi took the fatty by the shoulders and asked him to hurry up to let Brother Lin rest. The fat man said goodbye to give him a good rest. 
as he promised to come and see him tomorrow. Lin Mu smiled and asked them to leave sooner rather than later. When everyone left, the kid took a breath, glad that everyone had finally left him alone. He wanted to get to work on treating his wounds as soon as possible. Meanwhile, someone was already following Lin Mu. The hooded guy said that he finally had a chance and he wouldn't leave this time. Lin Mu sat in the lotus posture. He was thinking that he should hurry up and advance to the level of absolute defense. This would help him deal with the frequent hidden attacks. Then the boy sensed some danger. He moved his head away just in time and the throwing knife hit the headboard. He didn't have time to dodge. They don't even give him time to rest. Lin Mu asked his opponent to come out sooner rather than later. He could sense his presence. There was a hooded boy in the room. He mumbled that his wound was so serious, but the boy's movements were still agile. Lin Mu replied that he was good too. It had only been a few days and his skillet had increased significantly. The guy told Lin Mu that he was the first person to catch his throwing knives with his bare hands. Lin Mu explained that if it wasn't for his wounds, he wouldn't have even gotten close to him. The guy replied that he was right, but he was an assassin and couldn't let the moment pass while Lin Mu was injured. He began to attack and exclaimed that the kid was going to die tonight. Lin Mu replied that it wasn't a fact yet. Don't he have any other tricks? He asked the guy to attack. But his wound opened unexpectedly. The boy promised to ease his pain and asked him not to worry. Lin Mu realized that he couldn't let this continue, and it looked like he would have to call for help. He exclaimed that there was an intruder in the room. Just then, an extraction team broke through the door and asked them not to move as they would shoot. The boy tilted his head and mumbled that he knew it wasn't going to be easy. The men in uniform began firing. There was no command to drop their weapons. There was a command to not let him get away. The hooded guy felt the strong firepower. He decided to figure out how to retreat. The guys with guns asked Lin Mu if he was injured. The kid replied that he was fine, but that this guy was agile and they should be more careful. The hooded guy really started using his unusual tricks, fooling the soldiers with weapons in his hands. The guys realized there was an anesthetic on the knives. Lin Mu exclaimed that he didn't kill them. It seems he isn't that evil. The guy replied that he is a man of principles. He's tracking down a target and doesn't want to harm the innocent. So let him not even think about leaving here alive. He asked Lin Mu to stop resisting and began to attack the kid again. Lin Mu realized that he was unable to dodge this attack. In that case, he decided to fight to the very end, but one of the guy's knives stabbed him in the chest. The guy in the hood was asking him to surrender. Doesn't he want him to take the pain away? Lin Mu coughed and replied that it wasn't true and he was rejoicing early. The kid wondered what he meant. Then he felt that he could not move. He couldn't understand what was happening to him. He didn't see his attack, but how he was able to seal his acupuncture points. Lin Mu noticed that it looked like his plan had worked. He explained to the guy that he used the small radiance technique and channeled the last drops of chi into the needle. By hitting the main acupuncture point in his chest with it, he sealed all of his meridians. But another guy with a gun ran into the room and asked who he was. He asked me to put my hands up. Lin Mu asked the man not to shoot as he had some questions for him. The guy broke free from the captivity of the acupuncture and exclaimed that it wasn't enough to catch him like that. The man with the weapon stood in front of Lin Mu covering him and asked him to be careful. The guy told Lin Mu that he would let him go this time, but next time he'll take his life for sure. Then he left through the window, smashing it in with himself. Lin Mu told the uniformed guy not to chase him, let him leave. Then the man went over to his companions lying on the floor and feeling for a pulse, was glad to see that they were still breathing. Lin Mu explained that they were only knocked out from the anesthesia and asked them to hurry up and get a nurse. There were many glass shards on the floor. Lin Mu decided that his chi was too weak and he could only seal his outer meridians. He only opened them with his power, how things would turn out the next time they met. And so the next day came. Dr. Zhou came to change Mr. Lin's bandage. As she changed the bandage, the boy grimaced in pain. The girl immediately smiled and apologized to him. The men in uniform thanked the sister for her help. Lin Mu told the guys that they didn't have to stand here. He would call them if anything happened. But the guys responded that they had to be closer to him for protection. Let him just think they're not here. Three days later, two people were walking down a long hallway. The guys with guns in their hands outside the ward asked who they were and explained that this was a secure area. When the papers were shoved into their hands, the guys opened their mouths and were very surprised. The man explained that they wanted to talk to Lin Mu alone, and the two of them were free for now. The boys immediately obeyed the man. When he entered the room, he told the boy that he was recovering quickly. Lin Mu smiled and asked Mr. Lu what brought him here. The man called him a rascal and said that B.I. Bay had just left and he was already causing a lot of trouble. He's such a rascal. 
Lin Mu told Mr. Liu that he was a law-abiding citizen of this city, and the killer first started. The second man said hello to the kid. B.I. explained to him that this was old Zhang. He had told someone higher up about him, and he had come to visit him. Lin Mu was surprised that Lu Shouyan was serving him like this. He must be a very important person. Zhang tells the kid that they have big plans for him. He's here to ask if he can accept one special mission. Bei explained that if he wanted to help them, they could help solve his problems. Zhang supported his friend and said that not only would they help with the Yang family, but even if all the families in Huaxia joined forces, they wouldn't be able to harm him. Lin Mu felt that there was a lot of power concentrated in this man's hands. He asked old Zhang who he was. BEI replied to the kid that they couldn't reveal old Zhang's identity right now, but their meeting was decided by the highest authority in Huaxia. The old man laughed and mumbled that they were just a small group of people standing on top in Huaxia. Lin Mu asked, if he was a person with so much power, why did he need his help? He is just an ordinary person who knows a little bit of Kung Fu. Aren't there many people like him around? B.A. asked the kid not to ask questions he shouldn't ask. He just had to answer old Zhang's questions. The old man said, It's okay to doubt something because it's okay to doubt it. If it were him, he wouldn't have agreed so easily either. All forces are interconnected. It's complicated and it has a big effect. Some things are beyond their control, even if they have a lot of power in their hands. B.E. said that some cases are usually regulated by the Bao Long group. They control some cases on their behalf. Lin Mu wondered why it had to be him. There are many high-level masters, even in Bao Long's group. B.E. explained that all those in Bao Long's group are not clean hands. They can't fully trust them. Compared to them, it's easier for them to trust him. The old man said that the boy didn't have to answer him right now. He could contact Shoyan after he thought about it. Bei added for the kid to think about the offer, and they should get going. And by the way, he has Kung Fu teachings that Lin Mu could try to learn. Lin Mu wished old Zhang and Mr. Lu a good day. Dr. Zhou met the two men in the hallway, and she wondered if they were here to visit Lin Mu. Walking into the room, she asked the kid who the two that had just come out were. Lin Mu replied that it was some of his friends who heard that he was injured, and brought an elder to visit him. He asked why Dr. Zhou was looking for him. The girl explained that she had brought his tests, and judging by them, his body was different from the others. Lin Mu was curious and decided to take a look at the test results. Yu Zhan noticed that Lin Mu's bullet wounds had healed very quickly, and that was simply amazing. Lin Mu asked her about the medical bill in his name and without his knowledge. He thought it was inappropriate. The girl apologized for being a nosy doctor. She promised to consider his remark. Just then, Zixi burst into the room. She exclaimed that she had bad news. There's trouble in the fragrant abode. Sister Yu and her husband suddenly disappeared. The kid asked his friend to calm down and tell him what happened there. The girl began to explain that she had gone to the fragrant abode this morning. When she was outside, she couldn't understand why there was a crush. She asked people to let her through, rather. The girl who was pouring tea in the tea house was lying on the floor. One of the passers-by asked if she was okay and helped her up. Zixi approached her and inquired what was wrong. The girl explained that someone broke into the fragrant abode and kidnapped Sister Yu and her husband. Lin Mu was worried sick. There was a ringing sound and the boy picked up the phone. Answering the call, he was very excited. Zixi inquired who had called. Dr. Joe asked her not to say it was the kidnappers. Lin Mu replied that he did. The voice had been changed and he didn't know exactly who it was. One of the hooded guys asked the other guy if everything was ready. It was the guy who had attacked Lin Mu at the hospital. He came to the room where Sister Yu and her husband were tied to chairs by a guy in a hoodie. The guy who had attacked Lin Mu explained to the second guy that they had just knocked them out. The hooded guy then asked him not to hurt them as he needed Lin Mu's life. The kid asked him not to worry as there would be no failure this time. The hooded man mumbled that this was his last chance. The guy then replied that if he couldn't take Lin Mu's life this time, he would cut his own life short. The hooded guy mumbled that it was a good thing and he would expect good news from him. The kid who was attacking Lin Mu thought about the fact that he had been an assassin for over 20 years and had never failed. But he failed twice in killing this guy. That's a shame he'll wash away with his blood and only one of them can survive tonight. Lin Mu realized that the kidnapper had asked him to come to the appointed place and alone, so it was definitely a trap. Zixi asked him not to go alone. He had not yet recovered from his wounds. The girl asked for permission to go with him, but the boy flatly refused and asked them not to worry. He reassured his friends that he was fine. Plus, these kidnappers are probably a bunch of lowlifes and they're no match for him. Dr. Joe said it would be dark and he didn't know who would be there. They might ambush him. Lin Mu replied that he knew, but all he could do was follow the instructions. For now, rescue is the priority. 
Zixi asked him again to let her go with him to help him, but Lin Mu flatly refused. What if the kidnappers spot her and kill Sister Yu and her husband? Dr. Joe suggested making a plan, but the kid explained that now is not the time for plans, and he must hurry and save Sister Yu and her spouse. Then the girls finally agreed with him. After all, he was unwavering in his decision. Lin Mu picked up the flash drive and apologized for his temper. He promised that he would bring these people back safe and sound and asked them not to worry about him. And so that night, Miss stood on the edge of a high balcony. A man was telling her that it was late and time for bed. The girl replied to Uncle Xu that she didn't feel sleepy and he could go first. Uncle explained that it was a rather chilly night and asked permission to bring a cape. Just then, she saw Lin Mu passing by below. She wondered why he was here. The boy was thinking that as soon as the kidnappers showed up, he would spring into action. A familiar voice called out to him. He turned around and saw the guy he already knew. The guy told Lin Mu that he seemed to be a good friend since he came alone for their safety. Lin Mu was surprised why again he had appeared here. He asked to let them go since he was already here. The guy replied that he wasn't going to hurt them, as his target was him. He immediately commanded his men to release Sister Yu and her husband. He then brought the two of them out of their trance. He said that Lin Mu was here and they could leave. Nurse Yu asked the kid what he was doing here. He shouldn't come to rescue them. Her husband asked her not to worry about them. They came prepared and he can't win against them. He has done so much for them. They will pay that debt in their next life. The man was very surprised and asked the savior what he was waiting for. Why he was not leaving. Lin Mu told Brother Chi that he could go back home. This was a feud only between them that should be resolved one way or another. Sister Yu exclaimed that there was no way they would leave him behind. The kid explained to Yu's sister that the two of them would only be a distraction for him. Chi mumbled that he was right and they would only be in the way if they stayed here. He told his savior in parting that they would await his triumphant return in the fragrant abode. Lin Mu asked them not to worry, and remember to make him a good cup of tea. Lin Mu's opponent said, That's easy to say. After all, today they would see if he would leave or not. Lin Mu asked him to solve everything this night. The kid agreed and asked his men to step back as he would handle it himself. He said that all the bystanders were gone, and they could now hold back. It would be a duel to the death. Lin Mu asked before they started, for the kid to tell him his name. The guy apologized and replied that murderers can't tell their name to the victim. He prepared his sharp knives and began to attack. Lin Mu noticed that the boy was very fast and agile. In the last battle, he couldn't use Chi because of his wounds. This time, he's not going to get hit in the face. Lin Mu began to use his shield. The guy noticed that his Chi was very strong. He was excited to battle with such a trained fighter. He threatened to definitely kill him this time and it would help him reach new heights. Lin Mu replied that he didn't have a chance to kill him and called him dreamy. He thought about how the teachings Mr. Lu had given him contained techniques that he could use in a battle against him. Lin Mu began to use the dragon defeat technique. The guy noticed that Lin Mu's chi had become dragon-like. The kid began to apply the 18 palm dragon strike. Everything lit up around him with a golden bright light. He can't underestimate his opponent, but the guy won't be able to dodge this attack. He really didn't expect Lin Mu to know the 18 palms of the dragon, but fortunately, he came prepared. In the guy's hands was a syringe. It was steroids. He injected this syringe into his chest and said that he could increase his strength for a short time and let Lin Mu prepare to die. After which, the guy asked Lin Mu to attack him sooner rather than later. He asked for permission to show him what he was really capable of. Lin Mu exclaimed that he was willing to harm his body just to get his way. The guy replied that he didn't want to do it, but he had no choice. His future depends on him killing him today. Saying that, the guy started to attack Lin Mu. He started using the flower rain and the kid noticed he was faster than before. He asked not to waste energy as his flying daggers were useless against him. Lin Mu began to apply the dragon shield. The guy realized that he had managed to block all of his attacks. Looks like he can't rely on daggers alone. Lin Mu stood up to use the spirit dragon that attacked the guy, which was quite unexpected. Lin Mu exclaimed that his opponent had lost. The boy fell to the ground and began coughing. Scarlet drops of blood spurted from his lips. Lin Mu asked him to surrender. After all, his internal organs were damaged. The guy responded by asking him to do it. After all, he accepts his defeat. Lin Mu mumbled that if he could tell who was behind all this, he could save his life. The guy explained that it didn't matter anymore. He had failed and they wouldn't just let him go. Doesn't he realize who's behind this? Lin Mu asked if they were true. Why go so far to kill him? The guy coughed and replied that it must be frustrating to be a constant victim. Well, that's the truth. Lin Mu thanked him for telling him and asked if he had any last words. The guy started pulling something out from behind his sinus and asked him to pass on the flying dagger teachings to his younger sister after his death. 
The girl on the phone, that's his little sister. She's a student at the University of the Eastern Seaboard. Linmu realized that she was a student of the East Sea University. When the kid took the picture in his hands that he recognized Tan Bei Bei in it. The guy was very surprised that Lin Mu knew his little sister. Lin Mu realized that he was from the Tang sect. So why did he become a murderer? The guy replied that he didn't have time to tell him all that. Lin Mu asked him not to worry as he promised to pass this teaching on to B.I. Bay. The kid thanked Lin Mu and said that he should be careful in the future. Still, a lot of people wish he were dead. Lin Mu mumbled that he needed to get rid of the corpse. He was about to send his coordinates. An hour later, the kid thought about how every day would be even more dangerous from now on. Lin Mu returned to his home where his friends were already waiting for him. Sister Yu exclaimed with joy that he had already returned. Her husband asked the savior if he was all right. Zixi asked if the matter was settled. Lin Mu replied that he had settled it. Yu mumbled that Liang Cheng and she were very worried about him. What would happen if something happened to him because of them? Lin Mu told Sister Yu not to feel guilty. They were kidnapped because of him. He should apologize instead. Liang Cheng asked the kid how he defeated that assassin. Lin Mu explained that they had a one-on-one -on -one duel, and he won that duel. The man exclaimed that it was just incredible and he deserved his respect. Sister Yu wanted to leave already since it was over. They owed a dinner at the flavorful abode to thank everyone. Friends asked to be careful on the way home. One of his friends asked Lin Mu why he looked so depressed. The kid replied that life is so unpredictable. The killer turned out to be his girlfriend's brother. Ziki asked how things turned out the way they did. Who's behind all this? Lin Mu explained that his family was behind it. Zixi was very surprised at who it could be. The boy explained that even though he had moved on from the family's internal conflicts, they still wouldn't let him go. If things had gotten this far, he would not be merciful to them either. He also believes they are responsible for his parents' deaths. He must look into it. It's so late and someone called him. The boy wondered who it could be. The girl cried into the phone, wondering where Lin Mu was now. She wailed that she needed to see him. The house of the Luo family is in front of us. Lin Mu went to the door and rang the bell. He asked if Bing Yun was home. Why doesn't anyone answer the door? Has something happened? And so the girl came out after all, throwing herself into the boy's arms. Finally, he came in. Lin Mu asked the girl not to cry, but rather to go inside the house. Bing Yun began to explain that for the past few days, when she closes her eyes, she remembers being trapped in that car. She has nightmares and can't sleep. Lin Mu hugged her and told her not to be afraid. After all, it was an accident. She cried in his embrace, and she said it wasn't an accident. Someone messed up her car on purpose. He asked, wondering if it could have been the same people as last time. Bing Yun couldn't stop crying. She replied that she wasn't sure about it. Lin Mu asked her not to be afraid, as he would protect her. He realized that she was in the same situation as him, intimidated by her family. Bing Yun asked if he could stay the night here. She was very scared. The kid agreed since he didn't want to go anywhere anyway. He decided to keep her company. The girl immediately thanked Lin Mu. She said that she felt safe as long as he was around. Lin Mu asked her, From what he knows, is it true that Hao Yun Corporation started its rise during World War II? Bing Yun replied that when the war spread to Asia and China, they produced and sold weapons to supply the military to expand their business. Hao Yun Corporation bought up many large military enterprises to start developing weapons. This became the foundation of the Luo family. After years of research and development, their weapons are recognized around the world, and some of them are even labeled as must-have weapons by the Americans. It can be said that the Lowe family has penetrated the heart of America and supports the country's technological defense. So the Luo family is not only rich but also has a strong military backing. Lin Mu mumbled that it was no wonder that the Luo family had so many enemies. It was all because of business. The girl replied that that was exactly what it was. Her father had hired a bunch of elite bodyguards to protect her, but it still wasn't enough. Lin Mu told Bing Yun that as long as he was around, he wouldn't let her get hurt. The girl looking at him replied that she believed him. Just then, Lin Mu suddenly kissed her right on the lips. She thought about how it was just like when he had rescued her in the water, all so warm. After that, the kid started undressing her. The next morning, Lin Mu walked over to Bing Yun and noticed that she was still sleeping. The kid decided to let her rest a little longer. In the meantime, he began to make her a sumptuous breakfast. When the girl woke up, she couldn't understand where Lin Mu had gone. Then the smell hit her. It smelled so good. Lin Mu was just walking towards her with a tray containing breakfast. He told the girl that he had prepared it for her. She exclaimed that the food looked very appetizing. The girl said she was already full. But the boy asked her to eat more slowly because the food was still warm. He asked if she was going to the office today. Bing Yun replied that she was going. 
She works as a CEO and has a lot of work to do today. Lin Mu promised to escort her out since he was just free today. The girl was very excited about it. After all, it would be great. Lin Mu called her silly. As long as she is willing, he can see her off tomorrow. He asked her to go wash up and come out when she was ready. And now the huge tower of Hao Yu loomed before us. Bing Yun asked if he wanted to walk her some more. The boy replied that of course he did. The staff began to say hello to Mrs. Lo. Bing Yun introduced his friend Lin Mu to them and said that he could visit Hao Yu Tower anytime he wanted. The girl decided to show him her office and they began to go up in the elevator to a high floor. A retinal scan was required to gain access. After she did so, the system greeted Mrs. Bing Yun. Lin Mu exclaimed that her office looked absolutely gorgeous. The girl replied that it was indeed so. The view from here is very beautiful. She looks here when she is tired from work. At this time, a sniper was already watching them. He aimed his target directly at Bing Yun. A hooded man with a gun rig on the roof waited for confirmation of the order. Then the order to eliminate the target immediately sounded. And so, the deadly bullet flew forward with great speed. Lin Mu sensed the danger and ran up to Bing Yun with lightning speed. He asked her to be careful. After throwing the girl to the floor, she asked what was wrong. He picked her up and took her by the arm and started to lead her away. Bing Yun wondered if it was the assassin. They were sitting hidden behind a table. The kid replied that there was a sniper on the building across from them. He uses 50th caliber bullets that pierce bulletproof glass. Lin Mu mumbled that it was too dangerous here and asked him to hurriedly call the guards to take care of it. He advised he would ask them to have them send people to a neighboring building to check for suspicious individuals. The girl immediately listened to him and said she would give orders. Lin Mu thought about the fact that the assassin most likely left immediately after the failed mission. I wish Bing Yun's guards were able to catch him. Lin Mu asked the girl to hide here and not come out, and he would go after the killer. She asked him to be careful. Lin Mu replied that it wasn't him he wanted, so she didn't have to worry. At first the kid ran to the elevator but realized it was too slow. The stairs would be faster. Lin Mu decided to speed up. He can't let the assassin escape. He finally found him. Based on the trajectory of the bullet, the sniper must be on the roof of this building. But then the kid stopped and decided to use the fire escape. To avoid being seen by others, the killer will definitely run from here. In front of him, some man wearing sunglasses appeared on the stairs. Lin Mu asked him to stop and not try to escape. The man exclaimed that he seemed to have found it. He pulled out a gun and pointed it in the kid's direction. He promised to send him to hell. But then, Lin Mu suddenly disappeared somewhere. The man couldn't figure out where he had gone. Lin Mu had already knocked the man out. He couldn't understand why the guy didn't bring his sniper weapon with him. The kid opened the door that led out to the attic. In front of him, he saw a Barrett M82A1 sniper rifle. He called Bing Yun and said he caught the killer. The kid asked him to send his men here. Lin Mu walked into the building and told Bing Yun that he had returned. The girl told her boys they were free to go, and she asked the boy to be there to protect her. One of the guards told Miss Bing Yun that you shouldn't trust strangers so easily after everything that had happened. The girl exclaimed that if it wasn't for Lin Mu, they would be looking at her corpse right now. The boys mumbled that they'd let her down. Lin Mu asked the girl not to blame them. After all, people sometimes make mistakes. The guards noticed that this guy was very fast. Before he noticed, Lin Mu was already standing in front of Miss Yi. The girl asked the guards not to stand and wait, but rather to go check on the killer. They immediately obeyed and began to do her bidding. The boys told Mr. Lin that they were entrusting their young miss to them. They asked him to protect her at all costs. Lin Mu replied that he understood and they could go back to their work. The girl thanked the boy again, for he had saved her life again. Lin Mu asked her not to worry. This assassin was no match for him in close combat. It was bad enough that he couldn't extract any useful information from him. Three full-length panoramic windows taking aim is not difficult for a sniper. Bing Yun explained that this design takes into account aesthetics, light, and more. But they also took measures against such occurrences. All the windows were installed with bulletproof glass, but they did not expect that there were bullets that could penetrate them. Lin Mu mumbled that he was also puzzled by this. The assassin had used a Barrett rifle. Even 50th caliber bullets couldn't penetrate two layers of bulletproof glass. Sticking his finger in the bullet hole, the kid exclaimed that there was something strange here. Bing Yun inquired about what he had found. The kid explained that the edges were too smooth. It was different from a normal bullet hole. Bing Yun mumbled, This is really strange. These edges look like they were burned using high temperatures. Lin Mu added that it takes really high temperatures to break through bulletproof glass, even if warheads are used. The kind of footprints you want to leave, you can't. Bing Yun asked if he believed that superpowers existed. The kid wondered if she was talking about those powers from the movies. The girl replied that that was exactly what it was. 
There are people in the world capable of using them. Most are born with them, and when the powers are awakened, they gain incredible power. Everyone's powers are different, and there are also many ways to develop them. Lin Mu noticed that she was talking about it very confidently. Had she met people like that? Bing Yun replied that she had seen such people in Europe. They call themselves mutants. Lin Mu mumbled that it sounded interesting. Are there such people in Huaxia? Bing Yun isn't sure about this, but legends say that there are cultivators in Huaxia who use qi to gain strength. They shouldn't be underestimated. Lin Mu added that this meant that this bullet hole was made by an assassin with superpowers. The girl replied that it must be so, and she must tell her father about this evidence. And here we are back again in the city of the Eastern Sea. We're looking at the police department. Someone called to a man with glasses, asking him to come up quickly. The man couldn't understand who it was, who dared to call at such a time. Commissioner Shen received a call from Mr. Lo. A man asked him how he could help. When he heard about the village in the West, he promised to send to investigate it right away. Those guys were fearless, daring to attack the Lo family in broad daylight. They think the police are good for nothing. The commissioner gave the order to let everyone know that they are meeting in the meeting room. A huge tower of Hao Yu towered into the sky. Bing Yun told Lin Mu that she informed the police and they are helping the Luo family with the investigation. Lin Mu replied that he was worried that the police wouldn't be able to handle the mutants. Maybe he should go instead. The girl agreed but asked him to be careful. If anything went wrong, he had to come back at once. Lin Mu promised that he would do so, then turned around to leave. But Bing Yun suddenly called out to him. When he turned to the girl, she walked up to him and immediately kissed him. He felt a great passion in her. Bing Yun said that she would wait for his return. Meanwhile, the East Sea City, West Zone Ye Mu Village. It's a village. I wonder if there really could be mutants here. Lin Mu didn't see anything suspicious here yet. Outside, the children were playing in the street. The sister shouted to her brother to wait for him. They were playing catch-up. The boy noticed that there were only old people and children here. It looks like a normal village. He was walking forward and noticed something. It was strange that there weren't many people in the village. Why this diner was still open. There's something strange about this noodle shop. Lin Mu decided to take a look. He asked the boss if there was any food left. The man replied that of course there was and asked him to sit down. Lin Mu ordered a bowl of Yang Song noodles with a fried egg. And so his noodles were ready. The owners of the cafeteria wished the boy a pleasant appetite. Lin Mu noticed that the noodles were poorly cooked. Looks like his guesses were right. This noodle shop is not open for legitimate business. We need to find out more about this place. Lin Mu told the boss that he had left the money on the table. But the boss asked him to wait as he hadn't given him the change yet. The protagonist managed to dodge the knife, which ended up embedded in the table. The stranger couldn't believe that the young man had managed to dodge his attack, and his back was turned to him. Lin in turn backed up and inquired an unknown who they were. Taki didn't answer his question. Suddenly the woman swung at him with a knife. The young master once again managed to dodge the knife and continued to back away. Then, after waiting for the right moment, he stabbed her in the back with a lightning strike. Eventually, the woman did collapse unconscious to the ground. The man finally realized that this guy was extremely strong and he couldn't handle him. Mu asked why they attacked him since he just wanted a snack. The unknown man suddenly shouted, urging his associates to run away immediately. At this time, the ceiling literally rattled and the sounds of footsteps could be heard. Lin realized that there were actually more people upstairs and everything had been planned in advance. The stranger himself also hurriedly left the place in question, but the lad could not allow it. After all, he realized that the assailant intended to go to his boss to call for backup. Naturally, the protagonist blocked his escape routes and declared that he could not escape so easily. The unknown man in turn was dumbfounded by the young man's lightning speed. The young master didn't stand on ceremony and literally knocked him out with one punch. The assassin collapsed to the floor and Mu turned his attention to his wiped skin on his face. At this point, the teen realized that it was actually a disguise. He hurriedly checked his suspicions and pulled back the bandit's elasticized mask. Meanwhile, the others continued to run away, one of them asking the ringleader what they should do now. The boss urged everyone to hurry up and leave the location, as the special forces could be on their way. The guy swept up that he had stashed a few cars in advance for just such an occasion. They instantly went to the garage. However, as they got closer, a foreign sound was heard inside. A couple seconds later, someone from inside took out the gate along with the young man. Everyone freaked out because they thought the police had already caught up with them and their days were numbered. But upon discovering only one teenager in front of them, the gang leader urged everyone to calm down. Suddenly, the bandits took out their knives and slowly walked towards Lin. The boss ordered his goons to kill the boy. 
the young master was only too happy to stretch himself once again. The boldest rushed out first to attack Mu, who in turn calmly stood still. The guy got as close to the target as possible and rushed to stab him. In response, the young master only smiled, realizing that they were like a herd of sheep and it wouldn't be difficult to deal with them, as a result of which the brave bandit attacked him but never managed to hit him with his knife. At that moment, another bolder thug rushed to his aid. However, his lunge didn't bring the proper result either, for this was no ordinary teenager as they had thought at the beginning. The stalwart struck with his dagger, but Mu managed to jump up and the young man swiped the weapon through the air. He was astonished, for he had never seen a cultivator of this level before. It seemed as if the main character was amused and enjoying himself. While the bandit wielded the knife in sweat but never managed to do any damage, Mu couldn't understand why they weren't using their skills. The enraged thug still hoped for his own strength and tried to slash the teenager again, but the extremely agile and dodgy Lin was literally bullying the gang member. In addition, he had time to provoke the others, demonstrating his superiority, after which he took both attackers and lifted them off the ground. Everyone was shocked, then tossed them aside like floor rags, the kind of thing no one expected from a youngster. One of the defeated bandits began begging his patron to help them. The boss at this time was shocked by the guy's incredible strength and couldn't find an explanation for it. Someone in the gang assumed that the teenager was a cultivator. Mu continued to provoke them so that they all attacked together, adding that otherwise he would do it. But then they wouldn't have another chance, after which Lin decided to demonstrate his might to the fullest. Suddenly his hand burst into flames with fire, which naturally made a lasting impression on everyone. The ringleader realized that they should run away before he sizzled them, then extremely bravely urged everyone to run away while he tried to apprehend this guy. No one even thought of making a hero of themselves and everyone hurried to hide. The young master wondered with a smile on his face why they kept running away from him. At that moment, the leader of the gang and himself rushed off to the opposite side of the street and urged the boy to catch up with him. Moments later, he was overtaken by a fire dragon that was released by the protagonist. Mu smiled and stated that he was able to catch up with him, and running away was a bad enough idea. As a result, the breathless body of the arrogant bandit immediately collapsed to the ground. At this time, the gang continued to fearfully head toward illusory freedom. However, Lin's magic serpent was able to catch up with them as well. The thugs didn't realize what was happening. The dragon terrified the recent braves, their frightened faces speaking for themselves. Finally realizing that the teen had caught them after all, they stopped in front of several fire snakes. After which, the dragons began to fly through the bewildered gang, trying in vain to escape from Mu. After a few seconds, all the bandits assumed a horizontal position. But the teen was surprised to find that one of them was still able to stay on his feet. The wounded guy asked Lin Yu who he really was in a suppressed voice. The young man ignored him and remarked that only mutants were subject to such power. The bandit snatched the knife and mouthed that he was indeed one, though the organization forbids everyone from using the skill. Mu urged the cultivator to demonstrate his abilities to see his true power. The knife-wielding mutant instantly lunged towards the young master, naively believing that he could overpower him. The protagonist realized that it wasn't as strong, but it was drastically different from using chi. The bandit in turn declared that now the boy would see his true power. It's worth noting that he was actually moving very fast and throwing punches. That said, his movements are too primitive and could be counted. The thug himself realized that the cultivator in front of him was an extremely powerful cultivator. The mutant could use his abilities through his weapon, which was also unusual for a young man. At a certain point, the guy's punching speed increased several times. Lin decided to see if his power had increased along with his leap, and let himself be attacked. Blocking the mutant's blow, he actually had a hard time holding back his arm. Mu realized that his skills were quite good, and his strength with speed increased at the same time, seeing a teenager underestimate him and literally play him like a kitten. The bandit became enraged and hurriedly swooped down with a series of blows on Lin. The guy noticed that his strength and speed was no longer increasing, which meant he had reached his limit. As such, rushed to end the confrontation, the thug was still trying to hit the dodgy Mu as well. A couple seconds later, the mutant was overtaken by the young master's fire dragon. As a result, the big man collapsed to the ground, and the protagonist gained some understanding of such superhumans. Suddenly, he heard the SWAT commander begin to hand out instructions to his subordinates. Lin hurriedly fled the scene and left the bandits to them. At this point, a siren sounded throughout the township, and lawmen ordered no one to move. However, when they ran out from around the corner, they found that someone had already dealt with the gang. Shin couldn't figure out who knew about their plans and got ahead of them, then ordered Xiao to check the condition of the criminals. 
Van put his hand to the lad's neck and reported to the commissioner that they were alive and unconscious. Zhu Guang instantly called for them to be detained and taken to the police station for questioning. After a while, the young gentleman returned to Bin's office and greeted her. The girl in turn was genuinely happy to see Mu, her amorous gaze giving her away. Yun inquired if he was all right and where he had been missing for so long. Without answering anything, the protagonist suddenly took her in his arms and carried her into the room. The young lady was amused by such games. It seemed the young master also had overwhelming feelings for Bing. Meanwhile, all the gang members were taken to the police department, where they naturally tried to get confessions out of them about who they were working for. However, no one was willing to make contact and refused to name their patron. The investigator ordered a subordinate to bring a negotiator as they could not waste time. The mutant realized that now one man would leave and the other would stay in the room with him. It was his only chance. The cop hurried out of the interrogation room and the guy grinned. The investigator urged him to start talking because the negotiator would not be so kind to him. The cultivator broke the handcuffs with a lightning-fast movement and hurriedly attacked him. The police officer was shocked by the young man's strength and didn't know what to do. There was wild fear in his eyes. The bandit immediately began to strangle the representative of the law. He tried to get out of the grip, but the mutant's strength outmatched him several times over. As a result, the breathless body of the policeman collapsed to the ground. The criminal smirked caustically and said that they were completely useless in Huaxia. After all, if he didn't have the ability to defend himself, he wouldn't be able to work for others. The guy then used his ability and considered the investigator's appearance. Then he hastily put on his clothes and took on the appearance of a department employee. Thus, getting out of the station was no problem for him, as the disguise had done its job. At this time, the young master received a phone call from Bin, suggesting that they have dinner together. But Mu declined the tempting offer and said that he was extremely busy right now and they would meet after his urgent business. Yun had no choice but to agree and wait for his return. The young man promised to cook her an unforgettable dinner. At this moment, the mysterious master Sho walked up to him and greeted him. Lin wondered why he was looking for him and why the urgency not realizing what had happened. Liu replied that he was aware of his close relationship with Mrs. Lo and would like to ask one favor. The protagonist became wary and asked the next question. What exactly was the request? Yang asked the guy to protect the Luo family, figuring he wouldn't turn down something like this. The young man was extremely surprised at such a favor from the leader of the Dragon Defenders. Shaw let slip that their family was actually helping Americans. Mu knew about it, adding that Bao Lun's group was given a task regarding the movement of the Luo family's assets. After all, their return would favor the development of Hua Xia, but the Americans would try to prevent that from happening. Lin's mission was to safely return Luo Hua Chuan from headquarters in America. The teenager inquired as to when exactly he needed to start the task. Liu replied that he needed to leave right away and had his passport ready and the car would be here in five minutes. After which he held out the necessary documents, the young man was surprised and remarked that he needed to warn his loved ones about his departure. Yang stated that he would personally notify Mrs. Lo and his three roommates. Mu understood. Dinner with Bin was cancelled. After a certain amount of time, Lin arrived on an airplane at the New York airport. Naturally, he didn't like this idea. He never thought that one day he would end up in America. In addition, he didn't warn anyone personally, because when he returned, they would not be happy with such an act. One of the greeters suddenly called out a young master and called him by name. The guy said that he had been sent to pick up Mu. The man identified himself as Mr. Chuan's personal assistant, named Wang Ching, after which he urged the young man to follow him to his car to discuss the details. Wang thanked Lin for his assistance in bringing Mr. Hua back home. The protagonist confidently stated that he would do his best to protect Lo. Ching added that the better he performed and secured the task, the higher the reward from Yu Hao Corporation would be. The assistant reported that they were now on their way to Chuan's estate, which is in Manhattan. After a long time, they finally reached Hua's location. Where they were met by the butler, Wang motioned that he needed to be excused for business, and the servant would escort him to his room. The extremely gracious man in turn beckoned the young master to go inside the house. Meanwhile, Ching rushed to report to Zhang, who wondered if this student had arrived. Wang replied in the affirmative. The group leader, Bao Lun, asked him if the kid was definitely suitable for such a demanding job. The deputy sauntered over. He hadn't checked him out personally, but his first impression suggested that he was no ordinary young man. Chu assumed that if Shaw himself had recommended him, he was definitely strong, and he wanted to know how strong. The leader of the group made a point to give the teenager a checkup tomorrow morning. A perplexed Ching uttered that he wasn't very good at fighting, and so it wasn't really appropriate. The captain replied that he had been in charge of Mr. Lo's security for many years, 
and was perfect for the job. The assistant in turn had to agree to Zhang's demand. The next day, Lin went to the gym where he wanted to get some exercise. Suddenly Wang called out to him and greeted him. The guy reciprocated and asked if he was also here for training. The rather muscular assistant stated that he comes here every morning. Mu noticed the numerous scars all over Chin's body and assumed that he was an experienced fighter. The deputy was modest and mouthed that, for a real man, they were just scratches. After which the protagonist asked him for a tour to familiarize himself. Wang agreed but made a counter-proposal to spar with the young man. Lin wondered in surprise, wondering if he wanted to test his abilities. A couple minutes later the sparring began, where the young master left Chin no chance of winning. He literally knocked him out with one punch. The assistant did not expect such power from the student and fell to the floor. Mu immediately extended his hand to help him stand up and asked if he was sure everything was fine. Wang replied positively. The guy started apologizing to him for obviously overdoing it. The aide noted the teen's incredible skills and said he was impressed with his training. The young man offered to help him to his room. Ching politely declined and said that he just needed some rest. Lin in turn went to survey the vast area of the manor. Van sat there thinking about how the teenager was really tough and was able to overpower him with just one punch. At this moment, Jang came up to him and asked how their sparring had gone. The assistant swept up that this student was very strong and he couldn't even counterattack him. Captain Chu was extremely surprised by this result and couldn't believe that some kid had surpassed Ching. The aide stated that this is the first time he has met such an incredible fighter and his kung fu beyond what is possible. Zhang hurriedly gave him ointment for his wounds and apologized for the whole circus. It had been about half an hour, and the protagonist had finally made his way around the not insignificant area of the estate. The boy caught himself thinking that such a large house would not be easy to defend. At this time he was suddenly called by the butler's voice. The young gentleman asked what had happened and why he was looking for him. The attendant replied that Mr. Chuan would be leaving his office soon and needed Mu to be by his side, and he left the suit in the room. Lin thanked him and immediately went to change his clothes. A few minutes later, the cars and crew were ready, as Chu reported. Hua looked around at everyone and stated that in that case, they could check out. However, while heading towards the car, he suddenly remembered Wang and asked where Ching was. The young master in turn looked at Father Bing and wanted to understand what kind of person he was. Tian informed Mr. Chuan that the assistant had become unwell and would temporarily take over his duties. Lo looked around in surprise and declared that he was ready to hit the road. Zhang walked over to Mu and muttered that he needed to ride in the same car as Mr. Hua. Feng, who had replaced the assistant, kindly opened the back door of the car and beckoned the gentleman to sit down. Soon all the guards were placed in their cars and finally hit the road. However, Lin suddenly had a bad feeling about this trip. Tian told Luo that they got the news from Hua Xia. The documents are now on confirmation and will have to wait a couple more months. Chuan savvy that the next two months will be critical and all agencies need to be on alert. Moments later, a truck was speeding toward them at the intersection. As a result, he literally rammed the car carrying Hua's bodyguards, who instantly ran out of the car and went on the defensive. The armed bandits also hurriedly got out of the truck to finish what they had started. Eventually, a firefight ensued where the attackers had the advantage in numbers. They managed to squeeze the rest of the guards about what was going on. Mu got nervous. A frightened Tian reported that they had to turn around and head back to the manor as they were under attack. But just as they pulled away, a large garbage truck blocked their way. Lin realized that the situation really wasn't simple, and he had been sent to ensure Luo's safety for a reason. Feng rushed out of the ambush, but the last escape route was blocked by a third truck. Thus, they found themselves surrounded by bandits, and it seemed the situation was a stalemate. The young master urged Mr. Chuan to get out of the car immediately. Hua was surprised, and immediately sprang into action, but the seatbelt suddenly snapped. Lo stated that there was no way he could unbuckle it, thus hinting at the young man's help. Lin urged him not to panic and hurriedly used his abilities. The fire beam from his hand headed precisely for the belt and cut the fabric. After which, the worried protagonist stated that he would get Chuan out of here, but he needed to act quickly. Mu ran out of the car and took Hua in his arms, then called Tian after him as well. Feng ran towards them. Lin instantly urged everyone to move away from the car. A couple seconds later, a pile of metal pipes landed on top of her, destroying the auto. A frightened Tian asked Luo if he was okay. Chuan replied positively, adding that if it weren't for the new bodyguard, they'd be dead by now, and this trip had taken so long to prepare. At this point, the bandits opened fire on them, but failed to hit the businessman. Mu Lightning grabbed Hua's arm and dragged her behind him to safety. As it turned out, the mercenaries were on the roof of the building from where they started firing at them. Suddenly one of them noticed that there were two of them left, 
and the third had disappeared somewhere. Feng urged the young man to protect the Lord while they tried to deal with the bandits on the roof. Lin said he would do everything possible to prevent the situation from having a dire outcome. Meanwhile, Tian had climbed onto the roof of the building and was gradually getting closer to the mercenaries, who in turn reported, since the target has fled, they are proceeding to Plan B. The guy was able to sneak in unnoticed and immediately attacked one of them. He literally tackled the bandit with one punch, which was quite a surprise. The other assassins were shocked by the young man's abilities and began to look amongst themselves. In the meantime, the captain and his men had come to the rescue, which he informed Mu about. Jiang stated that they had dealt with the enemies on their part of the street and now needed to get Mr. Luo out of here. Hua asked if he was okay. Chu replied that they needed to get him back to the manor now. However, at that moment, the young master saw an unknown car approaching them. Lin realized that they had found them after all. This time, the bandits were armed with a machine gun, which made it much harder. The guy mouthed that they needed to act fast. Zhang ordered him to leave with Chuan, and he would try to hold off the mercenaries. Their ringleader called for immediate fire before the target slipped away again. The gang member instantly grabbed a huge machine gun and opened fire. Chu rushed to run in the opposite direction. Thus distracting them from Hua, bullets whistled behind his back. The captain knew he needed to disarm them as soon as possible. At this time, the young master grabbed Lo by the arm and led the way, looking for another hiding place. Turning around, he noticed Jiang's incredible movement speed. He clearly could not be underestimated. Chu actually avoided the barrage of fire for a long time. Even the goons couldn't figure out how he did it. Suddenly, they lost sight of him and assumed he was hiding behind one of the parked cars. The gang leader ordered his henchmen to attack the vehicle in question. As a result, the car exploded along with nearby cars all engulfed in flames. The naive thugs thought they'd finally gotten rid of the annoying guy. The boss ordered them to immediately set off in search of the original target. However, at this very moment, literally out of nowhere, Zhang appeared and attacked them. Literally with one punch he sent the ringleader horizontal. The other gang members were shocked and said they had killed him a couple minutes ago. Chu smirked and muttered that they could only dream of it. Then he began to deal with the thugs his lightning fast and extremely painful blows hitting right on target. One by one, the bandits flew off in different directions, the bewildered killers unable to resist such force. Soon the captain had interrupted all the mercenaries in the van. Their leader was watching the whole thing from the roof of the building. He was disappointed with this result. After all, they had failed the mission and couldn't even wound Chuan, let alone kill him. The unknown man muttered to himself that he needed to move on to Plan B and began nervously dialing someone's phone number. He reported that Lo's bodyguards were too strong and a group of mutants needed to be brought in. After a while, they successfully reached the manor, where Mu had another surprise waiting for them. The unknown boy saw Lin sprawled out on the lawn and thought it was his duty to convince him. At this moment, the young master was actually resting after his baptism of fire. Suddenly, a stranger approached him and called himself Luo Yuan. He stated that he had been looking for him for a very long time. The guy was extremely reluctant to ask the boy what had happened. The young man said that he had heard what a kung fu master he was and asked him to teach him a couple of techniques. The perplexed Mu asked who said that. The boy replied that his uncle stated, thanks to him he came home alive. After which, the kid bowed low to the protagonist and once again asked him to take him on as his apprentice. Lin did not know how to delicately refuse this fate, since the little one had asked him to do so. At this moment the child was called out by the voice of the captain, who urged him to leave his master alone. Wang also picked up on the fact that he had recently asked him to teach him martial arts, and now he was pestering Mu. Yuan asked him not to get angry. After all, he just wanted someone to teach him Kung Fu. Ching said that it requires hard work, because it is a serious business and requires a proper attitude. Zhang thanked Lin for his reaction and help in such a critical situation. The guy became coy that if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't have worked out at all. Chu pronounced that he may not have seen him in emergencies, but he's definitely not your average teenager. Suddenly, they were called out by Han, who was curious about who Zhang was crucifying himself so much in front of. Van and the captain rejoiced at Dean's presence, for they had not expected the department to send reinforcements in his person. The agent spelled out that the Lo family was in grave danger, and so the decision was made to send him here. Ching assumed that with the two best fighters of Bao Lun's group, Mr. Chuan should definitely return to the country without any obstacles. Chu was genuinely happy to work with his buddy again, and said they were now safe. But Han was quick to dispel his confidence, as the Americans had turned to the mutants for help, which meant they were in for a tough fight. They then held a meeting about their next course of action, where Hua was dissuaded in every way possible from returning to the country, especially in the majority opinion. Moving the business to Hua Xia was an extremely bad idea. 
but Lowe mumbled that if they stayed here, their business would eventually be taken over by local corporations. Therefore, it is necessary to return home to secure their years of labor and not give them away for nothing. One representative said that the Americans had offered them favorable terms, and to move the business to Hua Xia would put everyone in danger. Plus, he was almost killed yesterday, and the Americans involved shadowy organizations. But most importantly, the government does not want to get involved in these matters, so their survival here is jeopardized. However, Chuan was unwavering in his decision and said that they would return to Hua Xia anyway. Either they come back with it and stay in business, or they go out of business, and Hua will buy their share at double the price. The family was adamantly opposed to this decision and reminded him that he had no right to speak for the entire Lo family. Their debate was suddenly interrupted by Chuan's son. Chi brought the information his father had asked for. The head of the household thanked Feng and took the documents. Everyone tensed up, for they didn't understand what was going on. Hua said he was aware of their sins and handed out fascinating compromises to each of them, urging them to get out of the business. The relatives present were simply shocked to learn a lot about each other. It also emerged that the second brother had leaked all their investment plans to the government, which is what they started accusing him of. In response, he sadly mouthed that he had no other choice in the situation, and the losing bid for the high-speed rail project last year also turned out to be his doing. Most had only one question for him, why he betrayed his family. The businessman replied that they were not as clean as they seemed at first glance either, so no one has the right to blame him. One of the relatives said sadly that she would sell her shares and get out, and the contract would be sent to them later by her lawyer. Her brothers tried to talk her out of this decision, as they wanted to expand their business in New York. But the woman replied that she did not want to play such a dangerous game and wanted to go to live in Australia. One of the brothers also refused to return to Hua Xia and said his home is here. However, the fourth brother still stood by Chuan's side and said that he would not abandon him at such a crucial moment. Lo in turn thanked him for his understanding and gave him a menacing stare at the rest of the family. Eventually everyone left him and went out of business. His father muttered to Chi that it was a split in their family, adding that he doesn't know if he made the right choice or not, but he can't watch their years of labor being wiped out. Ving supported his father and said that he had absolutely made the right choice, and this was the only chance to save Hao Yu Corporation. Meanwhile, Van passed on information about the New York Mafia and the leader who had recently attacked them. Ching also gave him the keys to his car and a bank card with money in the account, adding that since Lin is new in town and no one knows him, he will be the one with the necessary information. Because the main target is naturally a mob boss, the guy got into the convertible and stated that he would act on the situation. After he left for another mission, the Luo family's assistant only looked at him. The young master on his way hurriedly familiarized himself with the dossier on the gang leader named Higgins, who is just today celebrating his 45th birthday. Mu intended to give him a present. But first, I stopped by the nearest ATM to withdraw some cash. The protagonist withdrew a few hundred dollars and began to ponder his next steps. Lin decided to go to the noisiest and most prestigious place, the Red Light District, where he was instantly taken in by girls of the oldest profession, offering him fun. Naturally, the young master hurriedly decided on his choice and approached one of the maidens. Mu in turn asked her to lead him to the most luxurious place here. Then he hurriedly made a preliminary payment for his services. The young lady was delighted when she saw the wad of money. The lady took him under her arm, and they set off for the nightclub. This night promised to be unrivaled. Bringing Rich Lin, the girl offered him a little drink to relax and lift his spirits, or proceed directly to the fun. But the young man didn't care about that. He kept looking around for the birthday boy Higgins. Suddenly he caught sight of several bodyguards guarding some sort of entrance. Meanwhile, the damsel had already managed to drink some alcohol and became more talkative. She informed Lin that the entire entertainment business was owned by the Manhattan Mafia. Mu played the role of an uninformed person and wondered if this didn't just happen in movies and he would like to take a look. The young lady called it quite amusing and remarked that she could not spend it there. The guy knew how to act in a situation like this and pulled out a lot more cash to sway her decision. Naturally, it worked. The damsel successfully guided the teenager into a closed club of the Mafia and told him that the establishment was inaccessible for ordinary people, then urged the young master to walk with her to another equally beautiful place. After a couple minutes, they came to a huge mansion, and the girl mouthed that the estate belonged to the mob leader Higgins, adding that this house is the most coveted place by many girls, and it is where he spends time with his women. Mu allegedly asked in between where he might be now. The drunk lady stated that he was definitely with his mistresses. The protagonist realized that his efforts were not in vain, and he would soon pay Higgins a visit. She hugged him, 
and suggested he find a more secluded spot. Lynn gladly agreed, whereupon they immediately went to the hotel, the Royal Crown of Manhattan, where they rented a swanky room and had a good time. The guy felt alive again, then making sure the girl was asleep, the young man quietly dressed and hurried out. On his own, he went to that very posh Higgins mansion. At this time, Mr. Chuan's second brother was resting in the company of a pretty maiden. He told her that his plan had failed and Hua was off the hook. The woman muttered that he shouldn't be in a hurry because the Luo family couldn't be defeated by a head-on collision and there was a need for cunning. The guy stated that was why he had devised the following plan. The lady urged him to be careful as there were no jokes with the family in question. The man ranted that the government had agreed to give him the Low family's Manhattan real estate and luck was on his side. However, his girlfriend was confused by this because it cannot be so simple and there is clearly some kind of trick. But the cocky brother Hua informed him that the government had engaged a group of mutants and everything would be fine. The girl had made the point that they were doing fine as it was and there was no reason for them to take such a risk over a couple companies. The guy said he wanted to move into a legitimate business for the sake of their future with her so he wouldn't put his life in danger anymore. The woman even wept because she naively believed that he wasn't lying and was really taking such a risk for her. He in turn kept singing beautifully in her ears that things would soon get better for them. At this moment, the young master at the back of the room clapped sarcastically and said that his narration was impressive, adding that it was not in vain that he had come here and listened to such a moving mob story. Mu also said that the mansion of the mafia leader should be guarded much better, since he had no trouble sneaking in. A dumbfounded Higgins asked who he was. Lin replied that it didn't matter. At that moment, the ringleader rushed to grab his gun and pointed it at the teenager, saying no punk kid has the right to break into his house and threaten him, after which he pulled the trigger and shot at the protagonist but missed the target. Instead, he broke an antique and very expensive vase, which he was incredibly disappointed about. Moo smiled and uttered that he was indeed ruthless and dared to shoot him. Higgins himself couldn't believe he had missed. He didn't understand how that was even possible. Lin swept it up. He actually shot accurately, but his speed was faster than the bullet. The shocked mob leader said he would shoot the youngster and pointed the gun at him again. However, the lightning-fast young man was suddenly a step away from him and grasped the muzzle of the gun, then instantly pointed it at the ceiling, so the next shot came at the wall. Moo confidently mouthed that he wouldn't kill him. The perplexed guy asked what he was going to do. Lin gave him a powerful punch and said that he hadn't thought how stupid he would be since he still didn't understand why he came here. Higgins sat down on the couch and made no further attempt to resist the young master. He urged the girl to run away from here immediately, which moved Moo. For even at such a moment he was thinking of his mistress. The woman in turn looked pitifully at her lover and did not want to leave the banquet. On the contrary, the maiden instantly became furious and swung her knife at Lin, which he had not expected. The teenage boy had implied that she had done it for nothing, since he hadn't originally planned to kill her and fired a fire beam at her. For a few more seconds, the young lady stood on her feet and only had time to take one last look at her lover. Then collapsing senseless on the floor, Higgins was furious and shouted furiously. He looked at the young man and nervously wondered who he really was. Moo ignored his question and stated that his luck had clearly turned away from him today, adding that there is always a price to pay for everything and tonight is no exception. The guy muttered that the guards had obviously heard the shots, which meant he wasn't getting out of here alive. Lin smilingly remarked that since he had found a way to get into the mansion, he would easily find a way out, after which he put his index finger out at him and said goodbye to the mob leader. A moment later, the young master's fiery beam rushed at Higgins. After a couple minutes, the bodyguards ran into the room and asked what happened, because they heard gunshots. The boss and his mistress were sitting on the couch. The bandits didn't understand what the matter was and why he was silent. Looking more closely, they found that their gazes were frozen, and in fact Higgins was dead. Naturally, the bodyguards raised the alarm and began requesting reinforcements. Meanwhile, Moo had already gotten lost in the crowd of people and realized that he was lucky because everything had gone so smoothly. The only problem was the mutants, which would definitely not be so easy to deal with. Heading further down the avenue in thought, suddenly Lin heard some sort of conflict. Someone's extremely arrogant and familiar female voice was yelling at someone. As it turned out, it was Xiao Yue who got into an incomprehensible story. Unknown people surrounded her. The girl asked what they wanted. One of them stated that their master was inviting her to have a good time, and she should accept. Du politely declined the invitation, and mouthed that she had a lot of things to do and needed to return home. The guy smiled and remarked that they would be happy to walk her home. Yue thanked them for their concern, and removing the guard's hand from her shoulder said she was able to walk home on her own. 
The young man stated that she was not going to her home today and she better be an obedient girl. A shocked Xiao wondered what they meant since she wasn't going anywhere. One of them muttered that their master had an extremely spacious house and she wouldn't regret it. At this point, the young master intervened and demanded that they release the young lady immediately, adding that if they didn't listen to him, there would be no more courtesy on his part. A surprised Du asked him what he was doing here and how he ended up here. The protagonist smirked and replied that it had been a long time since he and she had seen each other. The bodyguards in turn ordered Mu to stay out of other people's business, and off they went. Lin continued to stand his ground and demanded that they not cut off Xiao's path. The guys started laughing at him and saying that he must have been watching movies to be so brave. The teen removed the guard's hand from the maiden's shoulder and ordered them to get out of here while they had the chance. The dumbfounded bodyguard began to insult the young man and already wanted to teach him a lesson. At this time, however, his arm ached sharply and he crouched down on the ground in wild pain. The bewildered gang leader wondered what the kid had done to him since he had only touched his arm. Mu ignored him and took Du's hand, then led her away, urging her to ignore them. But the restless guy kept pushing and demanded they stop. Then he blocked their way and told them that they would not leave here so easily. A completely calm Lin put a hand on his shoulder and said in a businesslike manner that he was making a mistake. Because if he doesn't step aside, he's going to end up in a very bad way and go straight to the hospital. The young master then pushed him away and went off in an unknown direction with the girl. The insolent fellow's henchman asked him what they should do now. The young man stated that he had one lesson to teach, but not to kill. The guard instantly pulled out a silenced pistol and followed them, after which he pointed the scope at Mu's leg and muttered that he was about to say goodbye to his limb. However, after shooting Lin, he never achieved the desired result. As the protagonist literally disappeared, the bandit was shocked and could not believe his eyes. After all, such things can really only happen in movies, but not in real life. The lightning-fast guy was in front of his attacker a second later and grabbed him by the throat. He lifted him off the ground and mouthed that it was not manly to attack from the back. The guard instantly turned into a frightened child and began begging for mercy. Mu stated that everyone has to take responsibility for their actions and this situation is no exception. After which, Lin flung him to the side of the expensive car and he flew into the front door. Subsequently, a huge dent was left on the car. The gang leader found it hard to believe such a thing. He watched with bulging eyes and didn't realize who this teenager was. At this point, the young man looked at him menacingly and gave him one last warning. The frightened guy immediately said he understood and apologized. The young master urged Du to leave this place. As a result, they got into the car with Mu, and he asked where she was staying to give her a ride. Zhao awkwardly said that she lived in this neighborhood three streets away. Lin started the car and made a mental note that she should be careful not to get herself into a similar situation. The girl in turn thanked him and asked him what he was doing in New York. The guy replied that his friend had asked him to come over and help sort out the trouble. Du said he had changed a lot and was a completely different person. It seemed to Yue that he wasn't Mu at all, but some completely different personality which she mouthed. Lin stated that not too long ago he almost died and decided to start his life with a clean slate. The girl unexpectedly supported him in this and wished him luck in his new life. The next day, everyone was actively discussing the murder of a mob boss in Manhattan. The captain stated that Higgins was murdered last night in his own mansion. Wong was extremely surprised by this news and questioned Chu if he was definitely the one who was killed. Jiang confirmed his words. Dean noticed that the mafia leader's estate was very well guarded, but the guards found no trace of him, and it was unknown who it was. The captain said it didn't matter who exactly killed him. What mattered was that someone helped them solve the problem. Suddenly Han asked where Mu was yesterday. Ching replied that he sent him to familiarize the mafia forces. Chu asked if he really believed that Lin could have killed the bandit leader. Van couldn't believe the young man had done it. For no matter how powerful he was, it was impossible to pull off such a thing in Higgins' private mansion. Dean suggested that they not argue about it, but just ask him the question directly. Meanwhile, the young master was dozing as usual, lying on the lawn after his hard work. Zhang and Ching and Han suddenly interrupted his rest and called out to the guy. He understood what was wrong. The captain muttered that they had one very important question for him. The young man urged them not to be shy. Chu looked at him and wondered if he was the one who had dealt with the mob leader last night. Lin made a surprised face and replied that he'd taken a walk yesterday, but hadn't seen anything interesting, and he hadn't killed Higgins. Dean urged him not to act alone in the future, as it could jeopardize their plans. Jiang asked Han to calm down. After all, they had already figured out that he wasn't the one who did it. However, the guy stood his ground and stated that as long as the little guy was a member of Bao Lun's group, he was obligated to follow instructions. But the cocky Mu uttered that he had his own set of rules, and there was no need to speak to him in that tone. Wang urged Lin to calm down, 
After all, Dean was his immediate superior, after all. Han was also getting wound up and couldn't let him have a conversation like that. He confidently spelled out that he was the one who had killed Higgins. Finally, the young man confessed what he had done and said there was no point in hiding it any longer. Ching was shocked by the young master's confession and couldn't believe that he had single-handedly dealt with him. Dean suggested that he demonstrate his abilities so that they would have no doubt that he was able to overpower the mob leader. Mu smiled and accepted the challenge, as he was also curious to see what Baolun's group could do. Zhang didn't like the idea, and said that if they crippled each other, there would be no one to protect Mr. Hua. Lin replied that this was just normal harmless sparring, and nothing terrible would happen. Han in turn supported the youngster and implied that he would just show a master class to the teenager. Van still insisted that the protagonist should not mess with him, because Dean is very strong. However, the cocky guy stated that he knew his limit and had nothing to worry about. Ching was surprised and wondered if he hadn't fought him at full strength last time. They then stood opposite each other, and Han urged the young man to try and not disappoint him. The aide asked the captain to stop it as the consequences could have been dire, but Chu suddenly muttered that it was a great way to see the boy's abilities. Wong said with horror that they still didn't listen to them and started fighting. Dean urged the young master to see what he could do and learn while he lived. In fact, Mu was well aware that Han was quite a tough fighter. The agent blurred into a grin at the thought that this was going to be an exciting fight and rushed to attack the teenager. However, Lin really wasn't as simple as he might have thought at first glance. Dean continued to launch his lightning-fast attacks, but the young man managed to dodge the blows. He was literally astonished. Han hadn't expected the main character to be so bold. Even Captain Chu remarked that this boy's kung fu was truly impressive. A surprised Wang in turn inquired exactly how he realized this. Zhang urged him to pay attention to Mu's strikes because he relied on the power of his chai rather than brute force. Thus the opponent naively believes that his strikes are very weak, but they are actually extremely strong and heavy at this moment. Lin punched Dean. However, the agent managed to block his crushing attack, though it wasn't easy for him to do so. Chu stated that if his opponent wasn't Han, he would have broken every bone in his body by now. Meanwhile, an astonished Dean took stock of the fact that he had underestimated the young master. The guy confidently replied that this was just the beginning, and he still had something to surprise him. The agent looked at him menacingly, and pronounced that in that case he would not restrain himself. After which, he hurriedly delivered another powerful blow to the cocky Mu. Lin noticed that Han had indeed become much faster and stronger in combat. What amused him immensely was that he finally felt an opponent equal to his strength. With that, the duel became much more interesting. Ching and Zhang watched intently. Suddenly the young master was ablaze with fire, and still also spread out in a snide smile as he displayed his skills. Even the captain was shocked, and noticed that golden-colored chi was literally emanating from the guy's body. Dean agreed that the teen had proven to be quite coachable. At this moment, Mu instantly shortened his distance with the agent and rushed to strike. Han caught himself thinking that Lin had greatly increased his characteristics and had become faster. Finally, the main character attacked the arrogant Dean. Everyone was puzzled. Meanwhile, the guy collapsed to the ground, which was in no way expected from some student. He was well aware that if this continued, he would lose to the teenager. This meant that it was necessary to act even faster and attack the youngster continuously, which he began to do. Mu watched Han's exertions with amusement and was literally amused. At a certain moment, they clenched their fists together and subsequently, magical energy rushed out of them. Wang became nervous as they began to fight more aggressively and land crushing blows. They seemed to be willing to kill each other to win, and were constantly rushing into attacks. Streams of energy were still erupting as well, and most of the area was covered in golden light. Chu couldn't believe what was happening. After all, he and Dean were considered the best in the field of Kung Fu, because they have worked for 10 years to achieve these results and to stay at a high level. But Lin was only 20 years old, and he was incredibly strong at such a young age. Zhang assumed that his level was exceptional, and that was why he was learning so fast. However, combat experience is gained over time and after numerous battles. Van suggested that the captain stop the fight before it got out of hand. It was all the more evident how Han was holding on from the last of his strength and would soon lose. There is only one explanation for what is happening and the young man's inexplicable talent. He could be the reincarnation of a seasoned kung fu master. Chu felt uneasy at such thoughts. After all, that's really the only way to explain it. His experience and knowledge was inherited from a past life. At this time, the young master found a gap in the agent's defense and struck hard. That caused Dean to fall to the lawn and crawl backwards, Mu urging him to admit defeat, noting the guy's incredible strength, adding that he wouldn't be able to get the upper hand on him. 
but the stubborn Han was unwilling to give up. He declared that he would fight him to the last drop of blood, which amazed the others. The captain urged him to calm down and pronounced that he was a great fighter and he didn't need to prove it to anyone. Dean got to his feet and straightened his back, saying he hadn't had a fight like this in a long time. His face covered in bloated veins. Han nervously ordered Lin to attack him again. The guy saw the speed of his chi flow increased. He realized Ding was going to bring his full power to bear. Chu and Ching also realized that the inspection had escalated into a real massacre, and the agent went wah-wah. However, Zhang was convinced that even using this, he still wouldn't be able to defeat the young man. Han's eyes lit up and he announced the next round, for it was not his style to admit defeat. After which, he hurriedly attacked the young master, his movements becoming much sharper, and the strength had increased several times over. Mu could feel it with his hands, which he used to block the blows. He literally drove across the lawn in a ferocious attack by a distraught agent. Lin gushed that he hadn't expected such power from him and thought he had shown all his skills, then ignited his chi and declared that he had something to surprise him as well. There was no way the captain could understand where the teenager got that kind of energy from, or how he was doing it. An enraged Dean urged the protagonist to attack and said he wasn't afraid of him. The young man didn't stall for time and hurriedly satisfied Han's appetite. The guy understood that the boy had materialized chi, which he had not expected in any way. Wang asked Chu what that golden light emanating from the teenager was. Zhang replied, it was materialized energy. The agent was able to fend him off, but it was extremely hard as evidenced by his trembling fist. Dean seemed to be at the limit of his own abilities and struggled to stand on his feet. Mu also noticed that his body was literally shaking, and he wouldn't be able to hold on much longer. However, even at the end of his strength, he wasn't going to give up and kept urging the guy to show him all the trumps. Lin put out his hand in a businesslike manner and mouthed that he would overpower him with a single movement. This only angered Han, who hurriedly attacked the young master. But the prudent young man counterattacked and was able to overwhelm Dean's remaining forces. Chu's implication was that it was only a matter of time before the agent was defeated, and he wouldn't last long. While Mu continued to press on, even though it wasn't easy for him to fight Han, this was the first time Zhang had seen his friend in such a state, as he decided to use all of his chi to defeat the guy. Meanwhile, the agent threw himself back into the fight and said he wasn't ashamed to lose to a talented fighter like him. The captain realized that this was crossing all acceptable boundaries and could not go on like this. Lin also realized this, and pushing Dean away said that they needed to stop. Subsequently, a perplexed Han fell to the lawn and couldn't understand why the kid decided to stop fighting. Mu insisted that they were done with the sparring as it was escalating into a massacre. Chu was shocked at how easily the young master had stopped the agent's secret strike. Dean in turn got to his feet and confidently declared that he was fit to continue the battle. But the protagonist urged him to surrender because the consequences could be dire. Plus, they need to get back to the mission, and if he overstretches his body, he could end up in the hospital. However, Han continued to move towards him. Mu reiterated his demand. Dean clenched his teeth and turned his menacing gaze on the teenager. Chu and Ching couldn't understand what had happened and why they had suddenly stopped fighting. Suddenly, the agent said sadly that he was admitting defeat in this battle after which he collapsed to the ground and remarked that it was a fair fight. Lin walked over to him, and trying to comfort him mouthed that he hadn't really lost. A surprised Han raised his head and wondered why he was saying that. The young master replied that, after all, he had gained incomparable experience in this battle, then helped Dean up, who in turn agreed that he had indeed realized a lot after their duel. A perplexed Wang asked a pensive Chu who had won this fight. The captain stated that his friend lost because the young man didn't use all of his chi. In the meantime, the professor and Miss Picasso had arrived at the bandit leader's house, as reported by his servant. The gang leader ordered him to let them in immediately, and an old man and a woman entered the room. It was Dr. Hamill, and he greeted Lawrence and remarked that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. The young lady was also genuinely happy to see her old pal, and smiled sweetly at him. The head welcomed them, and stated that he had waited quite a long time for this meeting. The professor mumbled that the government had brought them up to speed, and they were ready to help him finish this mission. As such, he took 15 mutants with him and three of them are at level 4 as well as him. Lawrence was happy to hear this and confidently stated that they would definitely make it now. Miss Picasso asked him if everything was ready and when they were performing. The guy appreciated the serious approach to the matter and smilingly pronounced that they would start tomorrow at midnight. After that, he gave documents to his associates, which contained all the information about the enemies. Hamill opened the folder and was surprised for they would have to deal with Baolun's group. The girl asked the doctor if he was already familiar with the organization, 
The old man replied that they were extremely mysterious people and that his companion had dealt with them three years ago. After this clash, he and his men died. Bao Lun eliminated his gang. Lawrence stated that he was already aware of what had happened and his friend's group of mutants were nothing against them. The girl wondered why the government had decided to engage mutants specifically to confront them. The gang leader replied that the Lo family had secret research on the Americans and they were obliged to leave it behind. At this time, Hamill came across the unknown teenager's file and asked why Bao Lun had sent the rookie on a mission. Lawrence sighed heavily and mouthed that this guy wasn't such a rookie and should be handled with care, adding that they should not be afraid of them anyway because they will soon crush these insects. After all, God had given them the abilities to overcome such obstacles, after which he carelessly tore up the photo of Bao Lun's members. Five minutes before the mission was to begin, the doctor reflected on the fact that he had not previously realized the confrontation between humans and mutants. But everything has changed, because people are capable of many things, and even the man himself does not realize what he can do. At this point, it was Hua Xia who had unleashed the highest potential of a human being. Hamel closed his laptop and walked to the window. He couldn't wait for this fateful meeting. Suddenly, the wall clock struck midnight. The professor realized it was time. Meanwhile, in the Luo Manor, where Bao Lun was also preparing for a future clash. The young master was cultivating when Captain Zhang called out to him. Mu stated that he would be right there. Suddenly, he turned his attention to the armed bandits who had entered the grounds of the mansion. They tried to proceed quietly and stick to their original plan. At this point, Lawrence ordered his stalwart, Cloev, to rearrange his attention so that they would sneak in through the back door. The huge-sized man replied that the gentleman could not worry about it. He was glad to feel blood again for he hadn't had to get into a scuffle in a long time. When the guards saw the big man at the main entrance, they ordered him to leave the private property immediately. Naturally, Cloev didn't listen to them and continued to head towards the door in a completely calm manner. The bodyguard grabbed a gun and pointed it at the thug. He warned the guy that he would shoot if he came any closer. The mutant smiled and stated that he should fire a shot to convince himself of the uselessness of his weapon. A moment later, a gunshot rang out. Mr. Chuan shuddered, sitting in his office. Hua began to peer fearfully out of the window to see what had happened and who was shooting. Lo was well aware that the government had sent another group of mutants after his head. Suddenly, he heard Mu's voice urging him to calm down and assuring him that he would solve the problem. Chuan in turn was surprised that Lin was using voice transmission. The businessman urged his subordinates to put their best foot forward and eliminate the threat. Meanwhile, the dumbfounded guard couldn't believe that the big guy really wasn't in danger of getting shot. The smiling Cloev seemed to be covered in steel and took the hint that such toys were useless against him. The bodyguard called for backup in a trembling voice and said there was a monster on the premises. At this point, a thug barreled through the main entrance and shouted that the show was just beginning. The soldiers, on the other hand, hurriedly advanced to the back entrance. They had been given the command to kill everyone and leave no one alive. Dean mouthed that the mutants had finally arrived and they should teach them a lesson, and Mu would guard Hua. Wang ran up to them in a hurry, and reported that the main entrance and the back entrance had been attacked at the same time. The captain smiled and said it was time to have a little fun with these scum. At this time, another group of bandits attacked the garden, where a gunfight with the guards ensued, who reported the attack and tried to hold positions, which was hard enough to do. Several bodyguards were killed. The mutant forces clearly outnumbered Lowe's guards. Cloev in turn was genuinely enjoying what was happening, but trouble came from when they weren't expecting it. Baolun's bodyguards were running out of ammunition. Another pointed out that their ammunition wasn't eternal either, and there was no telling who would last longer. Meanwhile, the big man was bored because there was no worthy opponent for him, and at that moment he was called by Dean. Verzila inquired if he was an elite fighter who would challenge him. Unclenching his fists, Han stated that he was extremely curious to see the mutant's abilities. The goofy clove gave his name and said he would be the guy's last opponent. The agent realized that the monster was indeed very dangerous, especially the metal type. Dean in turn urged him to cut to the chase and talk less. The big man instantly went on the attack. It was so heavy that it literally left behind dents in the ground, then unleashed a crushing blow at Han. The master barely contained it and fell backward. The mighty Cloev's strength was truly incredible. The bulky man felt his advantage in the battle. Subsequently, he began to push more, the agent initially underestimating the steel giant. Suddenly, he threw himself into the battle and pronounced that tonight would decide everything. Dean immediately threw a punch at the stalwart, causing him to leave a dent in his iron body. Cloev stepped back. Han businesslike stated that he would feel Baolun's power to the fullest extent possible. The mighty mutant agreed that the guy was different from those he'd met before. 
The agent also noted the monster's steely body and muttered that this was the first time he was meeting such an opponent. Suddenly, a woman appeared on the battlefield. The guards looked among themselves in surprise and disgust and laughed at her, which naturally Picasso didn't like, and she headed in their direction, after which she urged them to attack together, as singly they had no chance of success. Baolun's members demanded that she not be so arrogant and surrender herself. However, the damsel was of a different opinion and said that humans have always been characterized by their stupidity. Then instantly she screamed. The sound was too loud and piercing. The guards' eardrums seemed about to burst. They clutched their heads and begged her to stop yelling. A couple seconds later, most of them collapsed breathlessly to the ground. The sonic attack was truly merciless. Suddenly Picasso turned around and saw an unknown man in front of her. It was Captain Chu who sarcastically pointed out that sound wave was an extremely unusual skill. Without thinking long, the young lady used her superpowers again. The confident Zhang immediately nullified the woman's sonic attack. She was shocked, not realizing how he managed to do it and how many more trump cards he had up his sleeve. The captain smiled and stated that he used Qi to fence the area. Accordingly, her techniques wouldn't work on him. At this time, Lawrence intervened. He urged her to back off and said he would personally take care of him. The leader of the bandits called himself the King of Carnage and greeted Zhang. Chu remarked that he was overly arrogant for coming up with nicknames like that. After that, he hurriedly struck him, but the guy immediately turned into a black mist and moved to the side. The bewildered Lawrence could not understand how this was possible, for he had certainly hit it. The thug in turn grinned and hurriedly reported that he had missed. The captain realized that this skill helped him move quickly. The gang leader also realized that the cultivator was quickly able to figure out his trick, which he ranted about, claiming that he possessed dark power, but Chu was not afraid of his abilities and continued to boldly rush into battle, pondering how to deal with shadow magic and what to do in this case. Also, Lawrence could move silently, which made the task much more difficult, which means you need to attack before the black smoke appears, which he hastened to do. The so-called King of Carnage backpedaled. Zhang muttered that there was definitely nowhere to hide from him this time. The guy was still able to dodge another blow, but he also realized that he wasn't going to be easy to defeat. Leader Bao Lun continued to attack, preventing Lawrence from using his dark power. Chu intended to find weak points, as luck might not always be on his side. The mutant leader began to pull back again and assumed a defensive stance, saying that he was the first person who was able to find an approach to his fighting style. Zhang glared at him menacingly and remarked that he had clearly underestimated the power of Bao Lun's group. Suddenly, he disappeared into the black smoke again, and the cloud began to move swiftly towards him. Thus, Zhang had no way to hit the overconfident Lawrence. Moreover, the captain's chi began to suddenly leave. Consequently, he was losing his strength. The mutant leader laughed and stated that all of his energy would soon be absorbed by dark matter. Chu didn't know what to do and started looking for a solution, because at this rate, he really could die. Meanwhile, Han continued to confront the metal thug. Kloev mouthed that he had pretty good skills, but there would be no more indulgences, adding that even his kung fu wouldn't help as it was useless against iron armor. Dean noticed that the big man's power had increased significantly, and he was having a hard time matching it. At this moment, the giant became even bigger than just shocked Agent Bao Lun. He continued to laugh at Han, realizing that he would definitely defeat him now, after which, the huge mutant slowly headed towards the perplexed cultivator. The guy didn't understand how his abilities worked, or how the thug had gotten even bigger. A moment later, a steel fist struck the master, but Dean managed to block the blow. It was painful enough, though. Kloev, in turn, was surprised that the man had stood his ground. Han pretended to be unafraid of the iron monster's attacks. In reality, he was at his limit. The mutant grinned madly and stated that he hadn't used all of his power. He then rushed to unleash mighty blows at the weakened cultivator once again. This time, he was able to break through the agent's block and thus inflict significant damage. The captain noticed that his friend was suddenly starting to lose the battle with the bulky man. Lawrence urged him not to get distracted, as the consequences could be extremely dire. At this moment, the monster lord dissolved into black smoke again. Chu began to look around, but still unable to locate him. Zhang gradually stepped back and kept his fists at the ready. The mutant's voice from out of nowhere implored that he was really good, since he was able to last this long while being caught in an illusion. A couple seconds later, the gang leader attacked the captain from behind. The guy flew off to the side. Feeling the blood, Lawrence hurriedly finished off the Baolun leader and continued to strike. As a result, Chu immediately collapsed to the ground and began to crawl backwards. The mutants also had the advantage in confronting the estate guards. Another monster appeared on the battlefield, wielding its blades. He actively used his abilities and literally scattered Luo's men around. 
Picasso in turn did not stand idly by and continued to torment everyone with a piercing scream. After a while, the bodyguards realized they couldn't handle them. They looked pitifully at their slain colleagues and hurriedly retreated. Meanwhile, the protagonist decided to help his comrades, realizing that they would not last long, which meant it was a good time to show up and teach the demons a lesson. Mu instantly rushed outside, where he saw the injured Dean and Zhang, and shouted to them that he would not stand by. However, they were against this decision of Lin's because the monsters are really very strong, and Hua can't be left unattended, at which point Chloe came up to them and declared that they were all going to die, adding that he'd better run away before it's too late, because he might as well mess up that pretty face. But the cocky young master muttered that he would not allow harm to come to the Luo family. The steel thug laughed and muttered that he couldn't handle them alone. Mu asked the captain and Han to go to Mr. Chuan while he dealt with the mutants. Chu urged him to be extremely careful. Lin fixed his menacing gaze on the monsters and said he would easily kill them. The young man instantly burst into flames and asked who would be the first to try his luck. A surprised Cloev asked the young master what that strange aura around him was. Lawrence urged him to back off as it could have been another trap. However, the protagonist declared that no one would leave tonight and headed towards the mutants. Naturally, Mu took advantage of the skills and put his palm forward. A moment later, several fire dragons burst free from his hand. The terrified bandits were shocked by the teen's strength and asked what it was. At this moment, the magical snakes literally flew into the crowd of soldiers and neutralized them. Picasso immediately used a sonic attack, but this technique had no effect on Lin. The fire dragons also casually and easily crossed her protective barrier. The girl in turn was shocked and did not understand how this could have happened. Subsequently, one of the snakes literally pierced the maiden's body and she collapsed to the ground, after which the flaming beast moved towards the huge steel verso. Cloev attempted to strike the magical entity, which did not end in success, because the young master's dragon was not afraid of physical attacks. Suddenly there was an explosion. The iron giant instantly flew aside. The leader of the bandits became nervous and asked if his subordinate was all right. But the thug declared that he was fine and fit to continue fighting. Dean and the captain were shocked by Mu's incredible strength, which was on full display. Lin, meanwhile, started provoking the mutants and saying that they couldn't handle him. Lawrence ordered his top man to go to the house and eliminate the target while he detained the boy, which the protagonist strongly doubted, as well as the rest of Bao Lun's members. The ringleader stated that the dark force would absorb the teen's magical energy as well as himself. Zhang urged the guy to beware of the mutant black mist as it really absorbs Qi. Mu realized that he should figure out a way to outwit and eliminate the monster before it took all the power from him. At this time, Chu ordered all the remaining guards to protect Mr. Chuan. Cloev in turn urged them to step aside to keep themselves alive, but they did not listen to him and were defeated in an unequal battle. The steel giant began to scatter the bodyguards ferociously. Verzilla was truly enjoying his crushing power and proceeded to brutally beat Mr. Lo's guards one by one. Han and the captain watched with horror and overwhelming anger. Suddenly, Dean urged Chu to take Mr. Hua and leave, while he would try to hold off the mutants. Zhang wanted to dissuade him from this venture. After all, he could die here. The brave agent proudly declared that it didn't matter, and the most important thing was to save Mr. Chuan. At that moment, Cloev swiftly headed towards Han, who once again demanded that Chu retreat with Luo. Meanwhile, Lawrence enveloped the young man in his darkness and mouthed that he had fallen into an illusion and would now be unable to resist it. Mu urged him not to hide and to fight him in a fair fight face to face. Naturally, the mutant leader did not listen to him and attacked from the back, but Lin managed to dodge the blow. The young master smiled and said that he was the one who had fallen into his trap. The thug leader was shocked and didn't understand how the guy managed to dodge the attack. At this time, Cloev grabbed Dean and began beating him, saying that an ordinary person would not be able to handle him. Suddenly, Lawrence emerged from the black cloud, his eyes filled with fear. After a couple seconds, he lost consciousness and collapsed to the ground. All the mutants were terrified. Even the steel-armored stalwart stopped fighting Han and called out to his patron in surprise. But he didn't answer him. It was a real surprise to him that the overlord couldn't handle the kid. At this moment, Mu snatched Dean out of Cloev's hands with a lightning-fast movement. He then carried him to the side and leaned him against the fence and asked if he was okay. The agent replied in a squeezed voice that he was fine. The maddened giant threw himself into the attack and declared that he would kill this teenager. Lin immediately ignited his hand with fire and prepared for a clash. The enraged steel hulk hurriedly struck the young master. As a result, the young man stopped his fist with his magical palm. For several seconds, he continued to hold back the giant's strength. Suddenly, Cloev felt a wild pain in the bones all over his body and loosened his grip. Mu has noticed that it has the ability to increase muscle, 
but it does not affect the bones, which is his weakness. The big man stated that this power was given to him by God, adding that he had one last transformation left, and he had forced himself to resort to it. Suddenly, his body began to fill with even more steel muscles. Lin realized that he had used this skill to unleash a wave attack. That means that the protagonist had to use all his strength to overcome the giant. Consequently, hastened to discover the seven major acupuncture points in his body. Kloev shouted menacingly that the boy's kung fu would no longer be able to harm him. After that, he concentrated all of his chi on the next strike, which he aimed at the bully's arm again. This time, the iron golem felt a much greater pain in his bones, as if he had been electrocuted. The mutant realized that this youngster's magic could break all of his bones, all over his body. Subsequently, he grabbed his right hand and ripped it off after a second. The limb immediately went limp and began to turn into some sort of rag. Kloev was shocked. All the bones had literally disappeared and no longer resembled a mighty arm in any way. The defeated stalwart wondered what the guy used to do such a thing. Mu replied that it was a technique from Huaxia, and it was called Bone Dissolving Punch. The mutant muttered out of his last breath that he hadn't expected him to have such incredible strength, then collapsed into the resulting ashes beneath him, for his arm had simply crumbled. At this point, Lawrence came to his senses and declared that he would help the giant escape. The black cloud once again rushed towards Lin. He didn't expect the shadow power to recover so quickly. The bandit leader muttered that they would meet again soon, before grabbing his defeated subordinates and rushing off into the heights. The young master didn't think they would run away, for usually such self-confident creatures go all the way. The captain immediately ran up to the protagonist and asked if he was okay. Mu replied that he was fine and needed to see Han urgently. Zhang rushed to his friend, but Dean declared that he was more alive than anyone else and would definitely see tomorrow. The agent asked where Mr. Chuan was. Chu said they had taken him to a safe place. After helping him stand up and taking him under his arm, Han remarked that he hadn't expected such power from mutants, and if it wasn't for the teenager, they would all be finished today. Zhang agreed with him, adding that the fire dragon technique was long lost and required strong yan energy. But Lin had somehow found her and would now become a legendary fighter. Also, the bone dissolving skill is pretty good as it made the steel thug bid farewell to his arm. This ability can dissolve all the bones inside and utilizes yin energy, adding that these techniques are just a link in a huge chain of martial art techniques. Chu urged his buddy to use qi to recover his body, and the medics should be on their way. Dean started regenerating health to heal his wounds and wondered how this guy knew so many ancient skills. The captain replied that he didn't know himself, but the fact of who recommended him spoke for itself. A bewildered Han muttered that Sho looked like a normal person. Zhang swept up that Lu really wasn't that strong, but he was a descendant of a family from Feng Meng village. The agent wondered if he was referring to the legendary Lu family. The captain stated that he did, for only he could find such a master. Meanwhile, Lawrence hurriedly took Kloev to the American Mutant Research Institute. We're interested in the condition of the bulky man and the professor. Hamill sighed heavily, then said, It's a miracle that the steel giant survived, considering such serious injuries. The leader of their organization swept up that they were winning, until this teenager showed up and unexpectedly fought back. The doctor queried if one boy could overpower them all. Miss Picasso confirmed her patron's words. Hamill summarized that in such a case they did face huge problems. At that moment, hooked up to a life support machine, Kloev suddenly started twitching and screaming in pain. The professor immediately injected him with a painkiller. The scarred big man calmed down a bit. Concerned, Lawrence asked the doctor what was happening to him. Hamill sadly pronounced that his condition was deteriorating, and Kloev needed to be moved urgently. At this time, the young master was in Luo Manor and was talking to Mr. Chuan. Mu asked him what went wrong with his family's return to Hua Xia and why it took so long. The gentleman replied that the main problem is with the approval of the documents, and he has no power to influence the situation, adding that it wasn't originally supposed to be such a long-term process, but someone in the government prevented them from moving. Lin recommended him to hurry back to Hua Xia as they were weakened after the battle. He then asked Mr. Lo for the name of the person responsible for approving the documents to speak to him. However, Mr. Chuan was strongly against such methods, for it was extremely dangerous. The protagonist smiled and stated that he had one effective way to speed up the process. Hua finally agreed to give him the documents and said that if he influenced the decision of three people in the government, the problem would be solved. Mu took the necessary papers and replied that he would meet with them as soon as possible, after which I purchased an extremely fascinating device on the New York black market. This was the macromolecular mask with which Lin wanted to solve the problem of document approval, intending to use their own methods to get what's theirs and take them out. 
The young man put the mask on to test it out and knocked on Chin's room. Wong opened the door and came in bewildered. Mu in turn smiled and greeted him. It looked exactly like him. The aide didn't realize what it was. Ching grabbed his gun and pointed it at the guy, wondering who he was and why he looked like a mirror image. The young master declared that he was Lin, and this was the effect of the macromolecular mask. Van couldn't understand how he had changed his appearance to look like him. The teenager had noticed that this disguise was necessary for the mission and asked for the necessary documents to be prepared. The assistant handed the phone with the right information to him and wished him luck. Guy thanked him for his help, because with these documents it will really be easier for him to cope with the task. Already on the street, Ching caught up with the young man and muttered that with his strength, he didn't need to do such a thing. The main character made the point that violence doesn't always solve problems and sometimes you just have to go tricky, after which Mu soared into the air and urged him, expecting good news soon. A few minutes later, the young master had already arrived at the American embassy, where Mr. Bronk wanted to take his subordinate out to a restaurant, but Lucy turned him down. The exasperated businessman realized that no one would keep him company tonight. Suddenly, Mu wondered if he really liked blondes that much. The man counter-questioned who he was. Lin leaned back in his chair and said in a business-like manner that he wanted to talk regarding the documents regarding the Luo family's relocation to Huaxia. Bronk began to say that the paperwork was under review and as soon as it was approved, they would be notified. The teenager urged him to address the issue today, as Lo's family has always been good to him. The official again started to excuse himself and said that the documents had to go through many instances for approval, especially his word alone is not enough. The guy rushed to accuse the businessman of fraud. Bronk in turn continued to guffaw and pretend he didn't know what he was talking about. Mu asked him what he would choose in the face of danger, himself or his country. The indignant old man nervously muttered that he had no right to threaten him. Lin took an ashtray from the table from him and stated that now would be a good time to make up his mind, after which he literally crumpled it into a ball-shaped lump and implied that his choice would determine whether he survived or not. Then the young master defiantly held out his deformed ashtray and called again for a choice. Finally, Bronk admitted that he had received instructions from above to delay the documents and could not influence the situation. But Mu said he was not interested in the details, because the Luo family has always abided by the law and does not deserve to be treated like this. Lin decided to speed things up and showed a picture of his family on his phone. He asked if the gentleman recognized these people. The man got nervous and asked to be given some time to solve a paperwork problem. The protagonist asked exactly how much time he needed. Bronx said two hours would be enough. At the stipulated time, the young man called the Low Estate, where he was confirmed that his departure papers were ready. Mu thanked the old man for his cooperation and wished him a good weekend with his family after which he hurriedly left the official's office. He had never thought it would be so easy. Sitting down in his car, he began searching his phone for the next contender, which turned out to be Boris, who was the head of the tax office in New York. The young master arrived at his family's mansion late in the evening as they were celebrating their daughter's birthday. He easily jumped the fence and thus entered the estate. However, he still didn't find any guards in the vicinity, which was strange enough. Lynn carefully climbed onto the balcony and tried to look out the window, beyond which the celebration was in full swing. He heard Boris wishing his daughter Vanessa a happy birthday. The guy cautiously peeked through the window and saw Xiao Yue, which was a real surprise. He couldn't figure out what she was doing here. Meanwhile, they had a huge cake brought to them. The protagonist assumed that the girl behind Du is the target's daughter. Suddenly, he heard someone coming from down the street and ducked down, but he could still be seen. It was a security guard walking around the perimeter with a dog. Suddenly, it barked loudly as if it saw someone. The bodyguard in turn tried to calm the dog, but he kept barking. Mu at this time had already managed to sneak inside the mansion through the window. He remained unnoticed. But walking further down the corridor and rounding a corner, Lin came across two guards. They stated that no one was allowed to enter here. The young master ignored the servant's demand and rushed towards them. After a couple seconds, he successfully neutralized the threat and knocked quietly on the door. Boris shouted nervously that he was very busy and couldn't be disturbed right now. At that moment, the door swung open and two wounded bodyguards literally flew into the room. Mu casually walked in after the guards and blurred into a smile to greet the businessman. The dumbfounded official asked who he was and what he wanted. Lin observed that he was quite straightforward and a businessman could be seen at once. Adding that he wants the Low family's relocation papers to come ready, Boris started singing the old song about Chuan being notified of this decision without fail. The guy muttered that he might well refuse to cooperate, but the consequences would be dire. The outraged businessman jumped up from his seat and said he had no right to talk to him like that. 
The young man smiled and said he knew about his daughter and her birthday today. Boris instantly changed his face and asked to leave Vanessa out of it. As soon as the man finished speaking, the protagonist suddenly disappeared somewhere. He realized that his daughter was now in danger and needed to be rescued from this insolent man. Meanwhile, Mu had already approached the birthday girl and asked her to step back for a word. After a short period of time, the guests discovered that she had disappeared somewhere with an unknown man. Zhao Yue, the stranger's voice, seemed very familiar. She tried to remember where she could have heard it. At this time, Boris was going to call the police to engage them in the search for his daughter. Suddenly, Lin and Vanessa were in his office. The girl asked her father what was going on. The young handyman suggested that he'd better not call the police and settle the matter now. Naturally, the official agreed to any conditions, as long as he did not harm his daughter. The guy smiled and touched his fingers to the young lady's neck. Her eyes closed abruptly. A shocked Boris tried to call out to her, but Vanessa just stood still. The teenager had swept up that she was asleep at the moment and was in no danger. The businessman began to beg him to let his daughter go, in return for signing all the necessary documents, which he eventually did. After a while, Vanessa finally woke up. The damsel inquired what had happened and why she was sleeping in his office. Boris reassured his daughter and hurried her to get up to go downstairs to the guests. Meanwhile, the protagonist was already on the outskirts of Manhattan, near the Upperton estate. Where to Moo's surprise? Only the maintenance staff was in the house, and there were no guards, which was quite strange because dignitaries were always surrounded by bodyguards. Lin assumed that something might have happened to him since there was no one in the entire mansion, or he might not have lived here at all, or he might have been a high-ranking master and foreseen everything. One by one, the young master went around all the rooms, but never met anyone. Also, all the rooms had the same interior without exception, which also struck him as odd. Suddenly, a certain noise sounded from somewhere above. Mu hurriedly climbed the stairs, where Upperton was busy working out and pounding the punching bag in his not-so-large gym. It was worth noting that his punches were extremely strong, Lin realized. He was a mutant, which I told him, because he didn't expect that the man who was in charge of the Quality Control Bureau would turn out to be a monster. The surprised guy asked who he was that he had such information. Mu replied that he was a representative of the Luo family and had come to speak with Mr. Apperton. The young man wiped the sweat from his face and stated that Bronk had told him about him, which meant that solving the problem would be much easier. He suggested that Lin Yu should fight a fair fight, and if the young master won, the documents would be signed. The protagonist smilingly mouthed that he would gladly exchange a few punches with him. Upperton swept up that it was an honor to fight him, for he had single-handedly defeated the mutants, after which he urged him to make a real massacre and rushed to the attack. Mu dodged the blow and swept up that he was quite strong and skilled in martial arts. That only emboldened Upperton, who once again rushed in to throw devastating punches. Lin blocked all of the mutants' exertions, but realized that its strength was as strong as the monsters attacking the Hua Manor. Meanwhile, the guy kept piling on him, and the teenager successfully dodged his attacks. Then blurring into an acerbic smile, called upon the demon to taste his power. The young master hurriedly demonstrated his skills in Kung Fu, but Upperton easily stood up to his pressure and kept up the pace. The protagonist was extremely surprised as his strength only increased. The mutant muttered that he hadn't had an opponent this strong in a long time. Mu started to provoke the guy, saying that he never saw his true strength. This naturally enraged his opponent, and Upperton again unleashed a hail of his powerful blows. Lin still also skillfully dodged his bulky fists and counterattacked. Suddenly, however, the young man stopped throwing straight punches and used sidekicks, which brought the necessary result, as he was able to break through the teenager's defense and hit him in the face. Mu swept his strength to control the position of his joints and muscles. Lin really didn't expect the mutant to be so agile and strong. Upperton in turn urged him to talk less and keep sparring. After once again hitting the target accurately, he felt his advantage in the battle. As such, hurriedly finishing off the young master, the guy continued to take a defensive stance. It didn't help him, however, as Upperton was able to punch him again. This caused the dazed protagonist to fall to the floor. He didn't realize how the monster could be so strong. Mu got to his feet and stated that it was clearly not worth using normal combat techniques against him. The perplexed guy wondered how he was able to stand up, still looking so confident. Lin smiled and replied that he was using chi to protect his body, besides blocking his blows. But his kung fu is really very strong and he did a good job. Upperton asked what chi was. The young master stated that this was a type of power that was acquired through cultivation. The young man couldn't wait to test which would prove stronger, his chi or the mutant's might. Mu's hand suddenly ignited and he launched a lightning strike at the cocky opponent. Afterward of which Upperton literally collapsed to the floor, he had not expected such a turn. 
The monster wondered how he was suddenly so fast and was able to overpower him. Lin had reported in a businesslike manner that he had only used a third of his chi power in the previous strike. Upperton finally agreed that the mutant's power was inferior to his incredible strength, after which he nervously asked what he wanted besides signing the Low family's documents. The protagonist said that's really the only request and he'd be happy if he would speed up the process. After a while in Chuan's mansion, a joyful Wang hurriedly told the master the good news. The latest document was successfully signed and they can now move their assets. Lo stated that the teen has really done a tremendous job, then asked Ching to urge everyone to gather immediately as they were returning to Huaxia. After a certain amount of time, they successfully landed at the East Sea Airport. Mu slowly walked down the ramp and thought about the fact that he was finally home. At this moment, Mr. Hua saw his daughter and shouted her name joyfully. Concerned, Bin rushed over to her father. She was genuinely happy to see him. Yun couldn't hold back her tears and mouthed that she was very worried about him. Chuan hugged her and stated that she was safe now and everything would be fine. Seeing Lin, the girl smiled and thanked him for helping her father. The young master remarked that it was a credit to each of them and pointed at Bao Lun's group. Afterward, the protagonist said he needed to leave for a while. Luo thanked Bao Lun and the boy for returning home safely and added that if the young man needed help, he was at his service. Mr. Hua then said goodbye to the team members as well. Everyone wished him good luck in a friendly manner. Captain Zhang muttered that they needed to report back on their work. And they headed towards Lu Shou. Mu greeted the master and said that the mission was over. Yan was happy to hear this and stated that he wasn't wrong about this young cultivator, adding that he defeated a huge number of mutants and brought glory to the East Sea Division. Lin became humble and said that he was just lucky and there was a moment when he was on the cusp of death. Liu stated that he had been informed of his exploits and he had indeed turned out to be incredibly strong. Dean in turn interjected into the conversation and mouthed that it was because of this young man that they had completed the mission. Sho swept up that they needed to rest now, and all the expenses he was taking care of. Also, Chu and Han should stay in the East Sea, after which he once again thanked the Baolun group in the renewed composition for the work done. Jang suggested Dean to go to the tea abode after all it's a famous tea house. Yang meanwhile asked Mu to follow him. The guy was surprised and followed Liu. A few minutes later, they arrived at the outskirts of East Sea City. Lin asked why they had come here, assuming another dignitary needed security. But Shaw said there really aren't that many such important individuals around. They walked further into the master's manor, where a smiling servant greeted him. One of the servants was ordered by Yan to immediately call everyone and gather them in the main room. The protagonist noticed that all of them were not weak cultivators. Once inside the mansion, Lu alerted old Jang to bring Mu to him. The old man in turn broke out into a smile and said hello to the teenager adding that he really did an incredible job this time and dealt with the mutants. Suddenly, all the servants began to gather in the courtyard of the manor. Lin didn't understand what was happening. Suddenly, the men lined up in a line, and one of them shouted that they were awaiting orders. Old Zhang cast a glance at them and said that they should start soon. Ian went to the center and said that the leadership had decided to create another group for special missions. It will bear the name Eye of the Tiger and mark the transition from dark times to a bright future. Also, Everyone here will be listed as the first group, Dragon Eye, and Mu will become the leader of this group. The guy was shocked by his new position. Shaw added that from now on, they were obliged to obey Captain Lin's orders without question. The young man in turn thanked him for such a responsible appointment. Liu welcomed the newly minted leader of the group and gave him full latitude. However, one of the acolytes asked how they had selected a captain for the group. Ian realized that not everyone agreed with this choice and stated, this teenager's abilities are beyond the realm of possibility. But the cultivator once again muttered that Mu hadn't even had a single sparring session with them. Sho smiled and urged Lin to demonstrate his skills so that all the question would fall away by itself. The young master said he understood their resentment, and so he would show his skills. Moments later, the main character ignited with magical fire and asked everyone to watch him closely. Some had already realized that this chi had embraced his body and was serving as a shield. After which... The teenager released his fire dragons towards the minions. Thus, most of them collapsed to the ground. They were shocked by the young man's skills. Some didn't even have time to realize what had happened, while others instantly realized Mu's strength. Lin swept up that greeting from their new captain. No one else seemed to have any questions. The bewildered cultivator inquired what this amazing technique was. The other, however, knew the technique and replied that it was an extremely effective skill. Dragon Defeat the young master in turn complimented the lad on his knowledge and confirmed his version. At this moment, Old Zhang declared that this was an astounding technique, for with just one move, Lin knocked everyone down. Ian asked the others if there were any dissenters to the new captain's appointment, 
and who wanted to challenge him to a sparring session. There was a sepulchral silence in response. Naturally, everyone realized the full power of the teenager. Mu stated that he would soon lead them all to glory and the completion of their many quests. The cultivators all shouted his name as one and agreed to obey the master. Lin added that everyone would individually make a plan to improve their cultivation and mastery of their qi. Also, the guy was quick to schedule a 7 a.m. training session for tomorrow, which he informed all the fighters about. The martial artists shouted that they would bring glory to their country. The young man smiled and ordered everyone to disperse. At this moment, old man Zhang swept up that the new captain's strength and character matched his expectations, and he feels confident knowing that there will be such a leader at the head of the group. The young master replied that he would do his best to accomplish the goal. Afterward, Mu and the leader of the Dragon Defenders went to the house to drink tea. Lin asked Lu if he knew a blacksmith who could make a special cold weapon. A surprised Shaw asked exactly what type of gun he needed. The protagonist pronounced that ideally he wanted a copper sword or something similar. Ian replied that he actually had such a person and would be able to help him with the blade, whereupon Lu gave him the address of the location of Ao's pawn shop, to which the lad hurriedly went. As he approached the bench, he began to look around to make sure he had come to the right place. An unknown fellow came out of the door of the store and greeted the young craftsman, whereupon inquired as to what he needed to redeem or mortgage. The teenager replied that he was looking for the owner of this store named Hui. The man introduced himself as Ao Sin and asked what the matter was. Mu said he was recommended by Mr. Shaw. Since he is looking for a copper sword and wanted to know if they had one and if they could sell it, the owner breathed a sigh of relief and said he had the copper blade and it was a family heirloom. He then began to tell the story of the descendants of Ujri Zizi and the blacksmith who created the weapon in question. Upon learning that he was a relative of the Ji family, Lin's face changed and became more polite. Shin stated that he was not as gifted at blacksmithing as his ancestors and only had a pawn shop, after which he extremely kindly invited the guy to visit his store to pick up the blade. Hui clarified in order to take the sword in question, he needs to fulfill one condition. The young foreman inquired about what it was all about and what exactly needed to be done. Bringing Mu to the wooden blocks, he said that it required the tool itself to carve a hundred marks in the wood in one breath. Also, the marks should be the same distance apart and perfectly symmetrical, and only then would the brass sword become his, then asked to see an example where indeed this was perfectly executed. Lin realized that to conjure such a thing in one breath would require incredible speed and control. Wu Xing muttered that if he refused, it wouldn't be a big deal after all, no one had ever done it in the past hundred years. However, the cultivator decided to try his luck and asked Mr. Hui to bring him a blade. The pawn shop owner was curious to see the cocky young man in business, naively believing that he wouldn't succeed. You went to fetch the copper piece. A couple minutes later, he brought the protagonist the coveted blade in a beautiful box. He then presented the copper treasure to the young craftsman and asked him to appreciate the tool. Mu was shocked, for the sword was created from a mystic steel heart, which he hastened to inform Shin of, the man literally changed in his face. Hui was shocked by the teenager's knowledge and asked how he knew about it. Lin didn't understand how such a thing was possible, as such materials didn't exist in the mortal world. Guy asked him to tell about the ancestors who found these materials and forged this sword. Wu oh has picked up on the fact that according to family records, this material came from heaven to earth. The young man could actually believe it, as the blade's aura was unusual. Xing urged him to take an implement called Chiu Hong and try his luck. The young master drew his sword and it suddenly bent. It was different from any blade Lin had ever seen. It had a shiny surface and flexibility. The guy ignited his chi, and the sword abruptly straightened. Thus, the teenager's energy flowed unimpeded straight into the weapon. Wake was surprised and urged the protagonist to test it on a block of wood. Mu, in turn, made a lightning attack and chopped the tree, then stepped aside. He proudly announced that he was finished and asked Mr. Ao to check the work. The puzzled pawn shop owner walked over to the wooden surface and scrutinized it. Finding that the teenager had failed after all, Shin wasn't too upset. He then turned to Lin and reported that he had failed at the task after all. Then the guy smiled and asked him to check the back of the block. Wei walked around the wooden structure and fell into shock. The entire wall was in identical markings. After counting a hundred cuts, Yu said that it was unbelievable, because he had actually completed the trial in one move. The young master wondered if that meant the copper blade belonged to him. Shin reluctantly muttered that the young man had passed the test and was worthy of the weapon in question then congratulated the protagonist for acquiring Chiu Hong as it is an unusual weapon. Mu decided to make a request to Mr. Hui and asked if he could help him in one matter. Wu replied that he would do his best. Lin said he needed a special belt to hide such a treasure. 
The man pronounced that his skills were not at a high level, but he would like to try. The young master thanked Xing and remarked that money was not a problem, and he was free to name any price. The shopkeeper replied that he would make it as a gift, for he had finally found a worthy master for Chiu Hong. They conditioned themselves to call when the product was ready and said goodbye, after which Mu came to the rocky area to test the strength of the copper blade and began to literally chop huge rocks into small pieces. The result was incredible. The guy never thought to find such a treasure in the mortal world. This was a real find. After a while, the protagonist met with Qian, who wondered why he was in such a hurry to leave for New York. Yao also said she knew of his facilitation of the Luo family's move to Hua Xia, and even about the group of mutants he defeated, the girl was aware of, Mu wondered. The guy's point is that her family is incredible, as even classified information is available to her. The girl stated that Yao is actually an ancient clan, and they even have people in Baolun. Lin realized where she got her awareness of the events that had happened. Suddenly, the protagonist handed her a list of herbs and said he needed to gather them. After reading the herbs, she wondered why he needed these plants, especially so rare. The young master replied that he was going to make a pill with magical properties. An interested Qian asked what kind of capsule he wanted to create. Mu smiled and mouthed that he was keeping it a secret for the moment, and when he did, he would be sure to tell her. The young lady agreed to help him and said that her alchemists would get these herbs and she would call him when everything was ready. Lin thanked her for her cooperation and asked how the movie shooting was going. The actress offered him to go with her for a couple of days in the capital where the filming will take place. The excited teen responded positively and remarked that he had always wanted to be there. Suddenly the businesswoman said she had to run to the studio and they would definitely call later. The young man offered her a ride but Yao declined and said he shouldn't worry about it, after which Mu decided to also send a list of the necessary herbs to Ji Lan and Zi Yun. After returning home, the protagonist hurriedly began practicing the 13th movement of Tai Chi. He wondered if such a simple movement could make a difference. However, during the training session, he felt he had made a mistake somewhere. After all, the materials that Master Lu had kindly provided him could not be wrong. A perplexed Lin decided to take another look at the manual to see where he had stumbled. The teen headed to his room and hurriedly replayed the video lesson. In the manual, aside from the explanations and various cultivation levels, there were only these 13 movements. Unexpectedly, the young master still discovered something interesting. He understood that an ordinary practitioner would not have been able to recognize the hidden meaning of the manual, and after all, he had already thought that he would find nothing and that this was a useless guide. Mu suggested that the creator was already at the golden core stage, after which, Lin once again hurriedly returned to training and finally mastered the technique. This way, his qi could flow unhindered throughout his body. Practicing the movements really proved to be beneficial. Suddenly, he was called out by Zi's voice. The girl inquired about the movement, which is very similar to Tai Chi but somehow feels completely different. The protagonist smiled and mouthed that he practiced this particular technique. Zi stated that the technique referred to meditation, but Mu was quick to convince her otherwise. Lin swept up, to learn the whole concept of Tai Chi, she needs to open a hundred acupuncture points on her body. The extremely surprised damsel wondered if he had already gone through and studied all this. The guy replied that he hadn't learned everything and was now giving himself more to training to increase his cultivation level. Involved Z asked her to teach the technique and practice together. The young man decided to teach Xi the basic movements so that she could conduct Qi throughout her body. Suddenly she asked if he was worried that someone might steal the techniques. The young master replied that a person not versed in martial arts would not be able to figure out these moves. Moments later, they began to learn Tai Chi techniques together and improve their Kung Fu. After a long time, morning came. Our heroes continued to practice hard. Mu urged her to watch her breathing and stated that she should do everything easily and effortlessly. Lin observed that the girl was indeed gifted and a quick learner, which was the key to success. At that moment, his phone rang and the guy picked it up. On the other end of the line was Mr. Ao. Hui gave the glad tidings that his belt under Chiu Hong was ready. The young man promised to pick him up soon. Afterward, he notified Si that he needed to leave on business and encouraged her to continue practicing. Then rushed Sin to the pawn shop. A few minutes later, the teenager picked up his belt and thanked O.W. for his work. The protagonist hastily put on his belt and slipped his blade, which fit him perfectly. Mu once again thanked Hui and stated that the belt would help him a lot in his future fights adding that he is truly a good blacksmith and a true descendant of his ancestors. Shin replied that their meeting had been fateful, and he had nothing more to regret in his life. The next day, Lin went to the Dragon Eyes training base. The guy gave his advice to the cultivators and said the most important thing is persistence and hard work. 
He also came to the conclusion that all the fighters needed new names, which he informed them of, adding that their codenames are their personal names. It is their responsibility to remember that from now on. At the same time, five team leaders will be appointed to take part in the test selection. All cultivators, without exception, respected and obeyed their captain accordingly. Meanwhile, late evening came and Z continued to practice hard. The approaching Mu urged her to start where they'd left off last time, after which they moved to Xian Renji Lu's movement and got into a fighting stance. Qian Kun Pan Chiu's second movement was slightly different from the first. The third movement of Mei Ren Jing, which they hurriedly studied, was also not insignificant. After practicing again all night long, Lin urged her to go to sleep. After all, her body needed rest, and after five minutes the girl assumed a horizontal position and fell asleep in no time. The boy looked at her and pondered the fact that he, too, wished he could live an ordinary life. However, he needed to leave with Chan, and after a certain amount of time, they were on their way to the airport. Yao noticed the young man's tired look and asked if he hadn't gotten enough sleep. Mu admitted that he really hadn't slept well. After all, with his new position, he is required to train cultivators during the day and practice with CI at night. After a few minutes, they reached the airport where they met the director, who in turn welcomed the young people and encouraged them to hit the road. On the airplane, Lin warned Qian that he wanted to get some sleep while they arrived. The protagonist closed his eyes and thought he could finally get some sleep, in which he was greatly mistaken, for a shot suddenly sounded from the cockpit. Naturally, the sleep disappeared instantly, and the young man opened his eyes. Yao wondered what was wrong. Mu urged her to keep her voice down because someone was trying to hijack the plane. The perplexed actress asked where he got that from. Lin replied that he heard gunshots from the direction of the business class adding that the bandits would be here soon and she'd better pretend to be asleep. At that moment, an armed criminal in a balaclava suddenly walked in and ordered everyone to wake up. The unidentified man assured the passengers that he would not harm any of them and was just looking for one person. And if they are obedient, they will let everyone go free when they land and no one will get hurt. A disgruntled rumble swept through the cabin. The bandit pointed the gun at Director Yao and called for a clear and concise answer. The man in turn became frantic and stammering replied that he understood. The gang member stated that whoever starts playing superhero will taste a bullet in their head, and they better heed the advice. Suddenly, the young master was behind the bandit's back and asked if his gun was real. The dumbfounded criminal wondered how he had moved so quickly and stealthily behind his back. He then pointed the muzzle of the gun at the protagonist's head and urged him to sit back down so as not to mess up the cabin. Mu raised his hands in the air and said that usually in situations like this, they use prop weapons and he was just curious. Only Qian was completely calm and didn't panic, for she knew that Lin could handle him. The guy continued to play the victim and spouted off that he was supposedly a fan and knew it was a limited edition gun. The robber remarked that he never thought he'd meet a firearms enthusiast here. The young master continued to gag him while playing his addictive game. However, the bandit reminded him where his place was and ordered him to return immediately. Mu pretended to return to his chair, and the criminal lost his guard and turned his back to him which was his fatal mistake, because Lin immediately attacked him from behind. As a result, the gang member collapsed to the floor while losing consciousness. The shocked principal was against such methods and stated that all they had to do was sit silently in their seats and they would have been released. The young man replied, he shouldn't be so naive because obviously he lied and then he would have killed everyone. Unexpectedly, the film crew supported the young master, something that came as a shock to the director. Still, he pulled himself together and asked the guy what they should do next. Mu placed the sleeping bandit on a chair and ordered him to keep an eye on him, and he would take care of the rest personally. Lin also disguised himself in the clothes of a criminal to infiltrate the evil lair. The main character grabbed a gun and started waving it around vigorously, demanding that everyone stay in their seats. Qian swept up that he really is an incredible player and they will definitely make it work out. The teenager continued to get into character and went to the front of the plane. After the guy left... The perplexed principal asked Yao who this person was that he reacted so calmly to the bandits. The girl assumed that he used to be in some organization as his skills are at the level of a professional. The manager remarked that he had only seen such things in movies and never thought to see them in real life. He sincerely hoped that the cocky Mu would do well since the teenager was still so young. Meanwhile, Lin had reached the nose of the airplane where the rest of the gang was. One of the bandits asked if there were any problems with the passengers. The young man replied that everything was fine and quickly calmed everyone down. While the other urged Mrs. Wen to cooperate in getting her father to return their property and free the men. But the damsel reported that she is not in touch with him. The robber claimed, he sends her money every month and she talks about him like that. 
The young lady replied that it was his direct responsibility. Also, her mother was bedridden, and they had no other way of earning money. At one point, the criminal even began to sympathize with her, for to have such a heartless father is a horror, after which he suddenly asked her for her cell phone and held out his hand. Wen calmly handed him the cell phone, and the guy thanked her for her cooperation. The gang member then briefly rummaged through her phone and finally found her father's contact. He instantly pulled out his phone device and did some sort of shenanigans. A couple seconds later, the bandit dialed Director Wen's number and put it on speakerphone. The man picked up the phone and asked rather cheekily why she was calling him. Instead of the daughter, the offender responded, stating that she wished to speak to him about an important matter. His father's incredulous voice asked who he was and what he wanted from him. The guy began to explain to him that he had appropriated someone else's property and arrested his fellow man. Wen surprisingly agreed to go along with the kidnapper's terms and asked what it would take to get him to let his daughter go. The ringleader stated that he just needed to return the stolen goods and let his men go, and only then would the girl be safe. However, the director chimed in that he had no power in the department and it wouldn't be done that easily, but the leader of the criminal gang informed him that it was his headache, or else he would be picking his little girl to pieces. Chi Ming replied that he needed time to return the goods and figure out how to free his associates. The bandit menacingly declared that he had only 30 minutes at his disposal, and at the end of that time his daughter would be dead. At that time, the specialist detected a signal coming from the airplane, which was reported to Chi. It was produced from his daughter's satellite phone, from an East Sea Airlines plane recently flown to the capital. At the end of the conversation with the director, the ringleader ordered one of the gang members to change his route and make an emergency landing. The young master volunteered to personally go to the pilots and urge a route change. The leader of the group said he didn't care who did it and rushed the teen. Mu hurriedly went to first class and told the passengers about everything, where he encountered frightened looks from people. Lin urged them not to be nervous and told them that the kidnappers intended to change their route, and he was going to say hello to the pilots, adding that they all need to just stay where they are and not take any action. He then headed for the cockpit, where he ordered the pilots to listen to him carefully. They in turn started talking like bandits and asking if the cabin was fun now. The dumbfounded protagonist realizes that the pilots are actually in league with the terrorists. Another asked if everything was taken care of and if they were sticking to the plan. Mu replied that everything was under control and he was here to remind about the reroute and emergency landing. The pilots started discussing this point amongst themselves and still agreed to change the original setup slightly. As soon as they announced the route change and turned on autopilot, Lin instantly dealt a strong blow to one of the pilots and he lost consciousness. A couple seconds later, the second one suffered the same fate. He didn't even have time to do anything. The guy then dragged them into the cabin and asked the passengers to keep an eye on them. The shocked principal asked why he did it, since there was now no one to fly the airplane. The teen rushed to tie them up and muttered that they were also terrorists, adding that the plane was on autopilot mode and he needed to deal with the rest of the bandits. Mu then went to the robbers and told them that the pilots had changed the route to a new landing point. Suddenly, the young master used his powers and neutralized the criminal. The ringleader of the group was watching and asked indignantly what he was doing. Lin walked right up to him and did the same trick, causing the guy to lose consciousness. The frightened damsel inquired in a trembling voice who he really was. Without explaining anything, the young man urged her to call her father and tell him the plane was safe. Moments later, the principal's phone rang and he hurriedly picked it up. His daughter informed him that everything was already fine. Min replied that he would contact the international airport right away and ask for immediate assistance. Meanwhile, an airline employee apologized to Mr. Mishima for the inconvenience. The old man stated that there was no cause for concern and he would definitely save people. He then went to the command and control center and immediately contacted the pilots of the airplane. Instead of specialists, however, there was a young handyman who answered the dispatcher and waited for further instructions. Mishima urged the guy to follow his instructions to successfully land the plane. Mu muttered that he would change the route according to his instructions. After a while, Lin really started to get the hang of flying the airplane, which was reported to him by the dispatcher. He reported that the plane would arrive in Kyoto in 40 minutes and would begin its descent within the next two minutes. People in the town were shocked to see the plane so low and knew something was wrong. Forty minutes later, the teen requested a landing and said the wind speed and angle were appropriate for the conditions. Meanwhile, firefighters were already on standby and announced that the plane was coming in for a landing. The young man informed the passengers of the emergency landing and ordered them to buckle up. The plane was literally just a few meters off the ground. It seemed like it would soon be over. Amazingly, the protagonist was still able to land the metal bird. The young master thanked Mishima for his guidance and stated that the airplane had landed successfully. 
the command center staff began to genuinely cheer and say that they had made it after all. Firefighters in turn hurried to work on freeing the passengers. People breathed a sigh of relief and calmly walked down the gangway. They were enjoying life again. Police officers began to remove all the criminals from the cabin. Reporters also arrived and could not miss the chance to film the detention. Mishima at this time came out to the landing strip said he needed to have a word with Mr. Mu. Mrs. Wen looked around, but still did not find her savior. In fact, the protagonist went to the Silton Hotel, where Yao was waiting for him. Qian wondered why he stole that gun. Because if word got out about it, he wouldn't be in trouble. The guy stated that it was a limited edition pistol, and he couldn't part with such a treasure so easily.